Good afternoon and a very warm and blustery welcome to day two here at the uh, Palace Hotel at the Isle of Man for the uh, conclusion of the IPA professional grand final event. Uh, if you were with us yesterday, you would have seen uh, a quite sublime performance, a last match uh, from, from last night's session. Liam Dunster, the pro number one and world champion, laying down a marker uh, for the title that he hopefully will claim tonight. I'm joined by our resident expert, Mark Pickworth. Mark, just reflect back on that performance from Liam Dunster last night. Um, faultless unplayable that is probably the best two words we can uh, say that about the world champion and the, the number one IPA professional player it was absolutely superb and, and a brilliant ending to a, a great first day's action yeah and anyone thought uh, who may have been thinking that Liam's form was just wavering a little bit over the last couple of events they've been firmly silenced yeah absolutely I mean we, we, we even said on the uh, on the commentary that he's not really had the best year yes he's won the, the big one the world championships but to Liam Dunster's standards he's going to be very critical of what he's achieved this year but he's back and uh, he's really up for winning this grand prize and some really be useful ranking points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's so far ahead in the rankings at the <laughs> yeah. moment. He probably doesn't need them. He might donate them to us. You never know. <laughs> um, so we're we're down to the last 16 stage, and we're going to um, be following this event throughout the day to the conclusion tonight and the final, probably around nine, half past nine-ish, uh, where we will crown our grand final champion, and we can see how the draw is shaping up. And at the top of the tree there, you can see Liam Dunster. You know, continuing on with the form. Uh, that he's been showing 7-2 up against uh, JJ Fall. Um, just talk us through some of the other other scores there. Around. Yeah, I mean, just talking about that first match at JJ Fall, he was 1-0 down in that as well. I know it's not really a big lead, but uh, JJ has been ahead in that match, but now all of a sudden he's one frame away from going out. Luke, the Battle of the Welsh Boys, Luke Sanchez against Corey Reese, that will probably that could easily go to a, a one the frame last match decider and five four Corey Reese. Remember he won the last uh, professional event at the last tour, so he's in pretty good form. The local man, David Adenall, unfortunately, he's been eliminated from the competition. Who we saw? Craig Marsh, he played not great stuff yesterday, but sometimes you need to start slow and you say, it's all about how you finish and eight five against David Adenall, that's him into the uh, next round. The next match up is going to be Mark Ball, great Craig Brown, which we're going to talk about. Clint Ianson against Andy Crowsdale. We saw Andy Crowsdale yesterday against Simon Ward. It was a little bit shaky towards the end, but he got over the line and uh, he played pretty well, Andy Crowsdale. He was, he was rolling back the years, etc. But he's going to have a tough game there against Clint Ianson, who's been quiet for the last two, maybe three tours. Uh, they had a great start to the season, but now he's uh, quite down a bit. He's going to want to get back into this winner's circle quietly, quite soon. Uh, and just at the bottom of the draw there, Wade Morley against Mark Farnsworth. And Mark Farnsworth, as we you know, were talking about yesterday, the form player of the last 12, 18 months, won numerous titles and um, the number two seed. And it, he, is it shaping up for a Dunster Farnsworth final? Well, the way that he played yesterday, winning his first match against Jason Hill, eight frames to nil, uh, that probably could well happen because Mark Farnsworth is also hitting some brilliant form. We saw him in the, the final. Mark probably doesn't want to be reminded of the, the final at the last tour in Newcastle, but Mark Farnsworth was also unplayable. He really was, and uh, with a great performance. So I wouldn't be surprised if them two, but there is some players that are still in that draw that could really um, you know, cause a bit of an upset. If you want to call on pen and paper, it's an upset, but it's not an upset to us because we know what the these players are capable of. Yeah, and one of those players coming up right now, Mark Boyle from Scotland, one of the best players in the world. Uh, we know how good he is. Uh, just tell all the people who may, you know, maybe new to to IPA, to black ball, you know, about Mark Boyle and his calibre. Well, there's not really much more we can say about Mark. We've said it pretty much throughout the years that we've known him, etc. And uh, he's he's just growing and growing as a, a really great player. He he will be one of the best players if he's not already. He's already won a tour event this season, so there's no reason he can't go on to win this tour. This one, he's he's won multiple tours across the UK throughout this season as well. So he's no stranger to winning. He really isn't. Yes, he has some. He's had some difficult situations in his life over the, the past year or two, etc. But he's he seems to be getting on the right track. It's great to see him back. Great mm. to see him enjoying the game. And uh, Mark Boyle, he's going to be a tough one to beat. He really is. But he's going to have a tough match against Craig Brown. North East, you know, he got to the semi-finals of the World Championships. This could be a great one. I know Craig Brown had a bit of a tougher game than what Mark did yesterday, winning 8-7, etc. But 
this could be a cracker. Well, I'm sure it will be. It's Mark Boyle against Craig Brown for a place in the quarterfinals of the IPA Professional Grand Finals. So the referee's ready, the players are ready. It's over to the commentary box and Dan Fairway. Good afternoon everybody and here we are for the second day here at the Isle of Man and what a crack of a match we've got already, Mark Ball against Craig Brown. I'm joined by, well he's pretty much my regular sidekick this weekend, Andy Richardson back in the commentary box. Are you looking forward to day two, especially after what you saw on day one? Yeah I really am, had a great day yesterday, uh, great match up this. Yeah, no doubt, Andy. You've been uh, watching a bit of the uh, the IPA matches along the year, etc. And uh, no doubt, you've been seeing a, quite a bit of Mark Boyle. These Scottish boys are—I uh, well, don't like to say the word machines, but they seem to play like machines. Don't they? I mean, you, you, we were talking, weren't we, towards the end of the match last night against Liam Dunster? I don't want to go too on about much about Liam Dunster, but you was absolutely mesmerised by his performance. Wasn't you? I really was, yeah. It made the game look so simple. Such great pattern play. Very little movement of the cue ball. Never really seems to get in trouble. And when he needs to pull out a big shot, boy, does he pull him out. Yeah, he certainly does. And uh, Mark Boyle, they, they're, they're like practice partners, Boyle and Dunster. I mean, oh, that must be some something to watch, isn't it? When they're just messing around on a table, if you can call it that. But I guarantee each of them will want to be winning so but Mark Boyle I mean against Craig Brown though Craig Brown's had a not a great tour this year he's done okay um, but he had a, a brilliant world championships back in February got to the semi-finals and lost by the odd frame to Gareth Hibbert in which was probably one of the best semi-finals we've seen in the world championships to be honest at a brilliant standard so Craig, he'll be wanting to try and build on that. But we all know what Mark Boyle's capable of. Very attacking he is, really is. Really goes for his shots, doesn't like to see his opponent on the table too much. But this is still a tricky finish, Andy. It's got its difficulties. Yeah, the two balls just below the black. He's got problems. In his good shape here. I don't think that was a bad flick on the red there, because it would have probably been a bit wider than that. I think he's has he got any option but only to bump it out? I think he's got to bump it out, it's just you don't want to lose the cue ball. This is one of them shots though, we're in the first frame, you know, it's uh, very hard to get your touch straight away, so we'll just see how Mark's feeling. He's elected something else there, I'm not... Decided to leave the double. I mean, there's not a lot of room for that double, is there? Would you say there was? I would think you'd have to hit it at a little bit of pace. Then he's just got a Mr Black. I don't think he's got all the pocket as a double, do you? He must be confident of it. He left it. Well, the position will be natural. Big shot. First frame. Mark Boyle. Is he up to the task? far away Andy it really wasn't so we've got a chance for Craig Brown I don't think he was expecting a chance do you no I don't I mean there was always that chance he was at, you know getting back to the table especially with them two yellows they weren't perfect but your first frame you, you do try and loosen your arm a little bit and uh, I think that's what Mark Boyle's tried to do 
And you can't blame Craig there for, for playing a safe. So important, the first frame, as we said before. The first and the last always seems to be the, the hardest ones to win. They really are, but I think we're going to be seeing this played at pace. He just needs to make contact to this yellow, and who knows where it could go. He's attempting to uh, kick it into the bottom pocket. Oh, what a great effort that is. That is an effort. That was well controlled off the top cushion. I thought he might have played with a bit more pace, but whew, good effort. Craig Brown now, I can't see any more containing safety shots here. I think he's got to possibly take these on now. Well, well he's elected to play one more. There's no wrong with that. See, I thought he might have just played that part and got his, his harder ball out, but I suppose there was no natural um, ball afterwards to be on, was there? No, and it's the start of the match as well. Uh, you've got to take that into account. Not to feel his way into it. Not taking any undue risks. Yeah, so he's putting Mark Ball under a better pressure here. Watch this one. This one could swerve off this cushion. Oh, he's hit it. The great escape. Yeah. Oh, he's unlucky there. Yeah, it's a bit more insurance for Craig Brown, putting that yellow there. Uh, we're definitely probably going to see another containing shot. I don't think uh, Craig Brown's going to be pushing out the boat at the moment. Just take his time and develop his balls. So what's Mark lining up here? Is he looking at a, a yellow off the angles into the big bag? into the, the middle po the big back of the, mid the middle pocket where the black is. Wow. <coughs> if this comes off, this is some sort of Houdini trick, is it? I think that's what he's lining up. I can see what you're saying. Oh, dear. No. There's no Houdini about that. That's the end of the frame. It's a, a bit of a sad way of it, how, how that one ended, but Craig Brown just dug in deep there and just made Mark Boyle play his shots and he's got the reward, he's taken the opening frame. Yeah, he played the percentage game. So first blood, Craig Brown. It's a good start for him. It looked to all intents and purposes as if Mark Boyle was going to take the first frame. We thought he'd possibly run out there. Yeah, I mean, when he, when he was looking like running out, do you think he probably should have tried to bump that yellow out instead of playing the double? I know it turned out to be the bad decision in the end, but because he did clear up. People these days are confident to double. If you're confident to double in a ball, you, it's the ball you take. Um, the problem, as I said, when you try and bump a ball out is you never really know exactly where the cue ball and the object ball are going to land. So he didn't feel he wanted to take the risk. Felt confident to the double. Hit it at pace, which I think he had to do, and he just missed it, didn't he? Yeah, it went far away. So, a cup break here from Craig Brown. Both of these players will be cup breaking, no doubt, throughout this match. Unless the Higgs starts landed up like that most times for Craig, he might change his break throughout. But I know one player that won't be changing his cup break, that'll be Mark Boyle. He must be the best in the world at the power he gets on that cup break, because it is definitely not easy to do that. So does he look at taking the red off the red in the middle here, Mark, you think? I mean, it will open the frame, but obviously he's still got that red that's clustered in that three yellows there. That's not easy. I'm not sure how much he can see of it if it goes. Or does he take Fark the other corner? I mean, he could play the one over the pocket and bump into that cluster of three. Yeah, I think he leaves the one over the middle, but doesn't he? It all depends on what angle he's got. I don't think he, he, he can. Yeah, this other corner. Well, I'm assuming him going for that. We're, we're not gonna. Is he going to be quite attacking here again? I mean, sooner or later, he's going to have to uh, rein it in a bit if it, he's not going to clear his chances up. That tells me he's got one thing on his mind. He wants to be clearing them up. 
but how does he get into that ball that's in the uh, the little cluster there? I think he tried to leave himself a bit more angle here so he could get down. Can he do it here? He's trying something. Is that coming out? Oh, is he on that red? That looks mighty tight if he is. And it's oh, very close to his work. Is he on anything? Is it a total snooker? I don't know. Can you tell I don't, from that? I don't think he can see the ball to the middle. Is there a gap? Or can he? Maybe the edge? Oh, there you go. Well, from the camera angle, we couldn't tell. No, we really couldn't. It looked like he was tight against that yellow. Well, either way, Mark Boyle's still at the table, but he's still got that red. I mean, it has opened up a little bit. I don't think there's a, enough gap to pull it into the left-hand corner. But he's going to have to open it up soon. But he doesn't look like he's got the angle on this shot, Andy, does he? No, he doesn't. Oh, is he just, he's just asked if that red was just off the cushion. So is he trickling this? Just playing safe. Yeah. Don't want that to drop. And it hasn't dropped. Nice containing shot there from Mark Boyle. And, uh, he has reined it in a little bit there. Didn't really push out the boat towards the end. But I think he was he was really going for it, weren't he? Yeah, he was, uh, he was definitely trying to finish. He needed to bump that ball out. As he said, he had no angle. Played the right shot, in my opinion. Taking the pocket. Got total control of that corner. Yeah, and he's going to get a chance there. With that ball over the pocket, he's going to have a chance of bumping that ball out at some point. It's just about how Craig leaves him now. I mean, can Craig get the ball over to the right-hand side behind these two yellows near the balk line? If he does, that could put Mark in a bit of trouble again. Is he stunning this off the side cushion and getting up near the black? No, just keeping it nicely contained. He's trying to leave some distance and made sure that he didn't leave an angle so he could break the red out. Well, I think he can see the red. That's, he can, uh, he can that's see the red, up. definitely. You know, the red that's tied up. Are we going to see Mark just bump it out and just push one of his yellows to the side cushion? Because I think that's the, probably the shot, is it? I don't know how much you can see of the other red that's in the open. Oh, that's the one he's going for. Oh, what power that is. I didn't even see that shot on Andy, did you? <laughs> I don't know where he's pulled that from, but he has. And it's turned out well. It's the only problem when you let your opponent come back to the table. These players, are, as you've already said, Andy, the level has just gone through the roof and keep continuing to, ra to rise. And uh, playing shots like that, that's the reason. Not got the right angle here either, though, has he? Can he get there? Is that where he, that's where he wants to be? Again, he doesn't look like he's got a good angle on this red. Needs to avoid the two yellows oh, next to his bridge hand. Not, not really great queuing either. Could do a hit in the black here, yeah, that'll do him. <laughs> At least he's got a shot. Yeah, and that's the angle that I thought he had. Um, I don't know if Mark was trying to uh, create an angle that wasn't there to try and come through the two yellows, as you said, but he'll take that. Difficult black along the rail. And he's 1 0 down here. There's a little bit of pressure on this. He hasn't got his fr first frame yet, but he has now. One frame apiece, another great clearance there. Mark Boyer would be happy to get a frame on the board. I mean, he's been very attacking in the opening stages of this match. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't understand Craig's shot just playing it off the two cushions. Thought he might have tried to stun it across and try and get near the black because it might have left uh, Mark a, a bit more uh, of a difficult shot. He was maybe attempting to put the cue ball onto the bottom rail. Obviously, leaving distance, he thought, might have been an element of safety, but... I mean, that weren't an easy clearance there from Mark Boyle, especially the screw back to, you know, cannon into the black. You know, whether he played it or not, he's got the frame on the board. Craig, really, you've got to say, probably should have been winning that frame. He was in control of that. Frame three. Mark Boyle. 
break, score tight. Time running. So well known for the cut break, obviously, Mark, from what you're saying. Yep, he is. And uh, the power he generates on this cut break is, is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it just crunches him. Some people don't hit the head on ball as hard as that. Look at those reds. Yeah, they look very good indeed. He's got a choice of reds here. Straight away, well, you can't see any problem here. And if Mark Boyle's cut break starts to work, Craig Brown could be in a bit of trouble. I mean, does he take the one in the top of the, uh, near the bolt line first? So he keeps all his balls together, but they are, they are pretty tightly clust clustered, aren't they? So I'm not surprised he's taking this one because that opens up a couple more balls, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's the right shot. I know sometimes players, and you'll know yourself, Andy, you, you, you don't like to keep going upstairs and downstairs, do you? No, definitely not. But I don't think he had any choice there. Now, these, are, these have all got pockets. I mean, he'll probably leave that one on the ball line, possibly till last now. I don't think we're going to see the cue ball move more than six inches. Gotta be a little bit careful. I mean that ball just on the, the far cushion there that's going towards the middle pocket. It it doesn't look like it creates a great angle. I mean I suppose you'd wanna be behind it so you could go up up table to play the one at the ball line. I don't think you wanna be leaving it into the centre to get up there. So I mean there's no reason why I mean I mean, from that camera angle there, I mean, the overhead didn't really tell a story. You expect him to be behind this one, Andy? Out towards the middle. It wow. Just about perfect there, I think. Yeah, just got to be a bit careful. I think he'd have liked to have been a little bit straighter on it, but I d can't see it causing Mark Boyle a problem. He's got a great cue action, though, Mark Boyle. He really... I expect him to be clearing these up. Yeah, is it? I like that. Simple stun off Simple. the rail. Simple. There's a few yellow balls blocking this black ball, but again, I don't think it's going to cause Mark Ball a problem. Is he playing this with a bit of running side just to hold it in? He doesn't have to do a lot with the cue ball again. And it's simple stuff, Andy. That's what the best players do, they make it look simple. I mean, I just think I was probably just looking for a problem there for Mark Boyle, but uh, it didn't happen, and he's uh, now leading two frames to one. I think he'll be pleased with the, the outcome of the first fr three frames, possibly, sat in his chair. He'll, you know, obviously, he'd like to be 3 0 up like we all would, but. Uh, 2-1. Fair reflection of how the game I, started? I, I would say so, yes. And uh, I must say that was a fantastic break for a cut break to generate that much power. Yeah, and this uh, just towards the end there, when, when he took that opening ball, it just opened them all up and it was just ABC stuff. It really was. 2-1. Mark Boyle's here.
Extension cool. Extension cool. Well, there's uh, Craig Brown there breaking off. And, uh, it's a dry break. Hot Boyle is back to the table. I mean, that's the last thing you want to be doing, especially when Mark Boyle is just broken, cleared, and then all of a sudden he's back to the table. It's the worst thing that could have happened for Greg Brown, a dry break. But the layout of these, are they, do they look, what do they look like to you, Andy, first glance? I'm just trying to decide what colour I'd go for, to be honest with you. I mean, he has got a, uh, an easier pot on the reds, there's no doubt about that. He had a pot on yellows, but... So I elected to set reds. The two most difficult balls, obviously, is behind them now. I, I can't see any problem here. He draws this back. Plays another long one into the opposite corner. And uh, he, he's, he's pretty much straight on. And I suppose the only problem is the black ball. Just getting the position. I mean, the ideal ball to get position on the black would be the one he's closest to now which goes into the right centre. That'll be the most natural one. I mean, when he's played this one, he's going to have a choice of balls into, into either corner pocket, so it's just about which one creates the best angle for him here. Well, he's made his mind up straight away. This is obviously his, his A plan. Has he overcooked that a little bit? I think Possibly so. Got into that a little bit too much. If anything, Mark Boyle probably rushed that a little bit to how he, his normal pace of a game is. Does he play the red into the corner and just stun onto the yellow? Yeah, I think that's probably the best way. And uh, I mean, well, again, we're probably looking for problems there, Andy, but Mark Boyle is just going to keep it very, very simple, like he already has in the in this match. And he, he doesn't need to push out the boat in any way, shape or form with any spectacular shot. It's just roll, 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 is it? It's from here. Red middle, red opposite middle. Ford's great position on the black. And that is the worst scenario for Craig Brown because it will be Mark Boyle to break next. And we, we've already seen him crunch his previous break. This could be 4-1 in no time at all. It's black then to take a two-frame lead. And it's there in the heart of the pocket. The Scotsman, Mark Boyle, 3-1 ahead. And uh, it's looking like not great times here for Greg Brown because he's going to be sat in that chair a little bit longer. I mean, just have a look at this dry break again. I mean, it's a cut break. He doesn't get nowhere near the power that Mark Boyle gets on. He really don't. There's not too many balls that threaten the pocket there. But once again, once he opened that ball up there, and it just opened the frame up, and it, was, it just made it look very, very simple. So it's Mark Boyle to break, leading 3-1. And if he can keep the break going as he has done. Time running. This is looking ominous. I mean, we're, we're just in awe of this break, aren't we, Andy? I mean, this power. <laughs> you, you absolutely cringe, don't you? Because you, you think the ball's coming off the table. Black ball's down. It's a re -rack. It's so easy to lose the cue ball when you when you hit the side like that. Yeah, because it, as soon as that ball comes off the base, it could be bouncing and it could go anywhere. I mean, yeah, we have seen Mark Boyle come off the table before off that cut break, but <laughs> not that many times. So black down off the break, re-rack, try again. No 
So, another look at Mark Ball's break. There's the ball down again, and this. Oh, just that little cluster there. Top right and corner's not great either. First glance, Andy. They could be a little bit untidy, but do you, do you see a problem? The reds don't look bad. They look okay, they look potable. But that, that means you'll have to be ultra attacking. And we know what Mark Ball's like. It's looking like he's going to need the middle pockets here. Yeah. Two reds at the bottom of the table. Well, in fact, the two clusters of two are both hampered into the corners. I think all the reds could be played into the middle pockets, couldn't they? Apart from the one over the hole. Apart from the one over the <laughs> corner pocket, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you absolutely nailed that, Andy. Is that what he's looking for? Is he just going to draw this back? I mean, does that red at the that's next to that yellow? He is a lot opting for the middles. How does he get up table, though? Can he get enough angle on that one? That looks tricky from that angle. Is he canning into it? Could go wrong. You, you feel like... He, he doesn't need to hit this full ball because he could be stuck to the red. It's one of them where you need to just be off a full ball, don't you? Played that well. Very Played well, yeah, very, very well. well. Has he got an angle to get back up table? There's a gap behind the yellows, but it's not a natural angle. What does he do here? Does he... God, I'm not sure. Can he get round? Is there, a, is there an angle round the back there so it goes up towards the bolt line? Because I suppose that's the, the obvious position. He's drawing this back. Just caught the bump, but it still favourable. But it's the way he's controlled it, just to get above the middle pocket to, to play at a great pace. That is a tremendous shot. In A1 position, but he's under shot clock pressure. He's got extension. I'm not sure why he's not using it. I think he's used his extension, yeah. So that's uh, a surprise there. All oh, right, I do apologise. It doesn't show you that on your screens, but he has used his extension. That's why he was uh, panicking around a little bit. But Mark Boyle, great chance. I mean, it definitely goes into the middle. Goes in the corner as well. Heart of the pocket. This has not been a, an easy clearance, has it, Andy? Far from it. How many out of ten do you think you, you should clear that up? You're not asking me. You mean me clear it up? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, listen, that was a difficult clearance. He was hampered from the word go. And that's a fantastic clearance. Yeah, and that's what these top players do, Andy. They just clear up, well, chances that we, we're looking at, like, just probably playing a containing shot, etc. But that's why these are the boys are at the top. Mark Boyle, he's on a mission here. It just makes you wonder, you know, after we saw Liam Dunst to play that, you know, unplayable performance last night. Do you think any of these other players are watching what he did on the table and uh, think, thinking to themselves, oh, hey, oh, we we need to be raising the game here. Do you think it just raises that level an, an inch more, possibly? It very possibly does, yeah. But they all know they need to be at the top of the game if they're going to come out victorious this weekend. The level's so high. You've got to con just concentrate on your own game. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. But that was some performance last night, wasn't it? Is he going to change his break? He said, I said it at the start. He's changed his break. I don't know why he doesn't use the head-on break. I know he's a bit lucky that the... Uh, but he does create more power on the head-on break. But again, it's the same outcome. It's, it's, it's dry. 
It's a frustrating thing as a player, it really is. Try breaks. I mean, yeah. He didn't really get his timing right on that, did he? No, he sort of topped the white ball. Didn't time it properly. Yeah, he generated more power, but the, there wasn't the, the timing. And once again, Mark Boyle at the table. Looking at yellows, obviously. And we know he's in the attacking mood. He's got one thing on his mind, and that's by keeping Craig Brown in his chair. And immediately, looking he's been looking to clear his problems. Just cleaning the table there for us. Obviously, a little bit of dust or something on there. But I think, is, is he going to try and bump this out? I think it's the perfect shot for him to bump it out. Yeah, and that's what he tried to do. He, he, said, he, he was pointing his finger there. And really, now, this is another dot to dot clearance. It is. It's in fine form. He hasn't got the uh, the greatest angle on the one in the corner, so that's why he's, he's, he's probably just rerouting slightly. Um, I mean, we're not sure why he's taken that one on, or I mean, does I don't think the yellow goes into the opposite corner, the one on the ball line. I mean, he's uh, has he just played to play on the one in the centre? I'm not sure. Only what ball or no? Either way, he's just going about his work. Is he short of pace again? Because he's still got that yellow on the ball line, and I think it's only got one, two pockets, maybe, maybe three. Does he take the yellow into the middle? Yellow into the opposite middle? Leave himself an angle to get back down for the black? Yeah, maybe the one on the ball line is going to be his last ball. ball. Yeah, yeah, it's probably not, not really the the A plan that he had. Oh, that's what he's got to do now. All about this angle. That's fine. Just wants to land low on the final yellow. Just off the ball line. I mean, another, another inch or two there. And I think he might have been struggling for an angle. Just having to use a tracer side. Oh, I'm not sure about this one, Andy. I know we always seem to be looking for problems as commentators. But I wouldn't say he's perfect here. Can he pinch an angle? Q power. Fantastic shot. Well, we keep mentioning it. These top players keep producing the goods at the right times. And Mark Boyle is continuing to do that. This black to open up a four-frame lead. There it is, no mistake at all. And this is a worrying time for Craig Brown. Because guess what? It's Mark Boyle to break next. And we all know what he's doing at the moment on his cup break. It's phenomenal. What can you say to this at the moment? You just keep mesmerising the screen, Andy. <laughs> you yeah, know, that's I'm a great next performance. <laughs> it's a joy to watch. And he's in the zone there. You can see him sat in the chair. Absolutely focused. The spin didn't seem to take there from the rail. Skidded a bit. Just left it? him a tiny angle, but what a great shot. Stunned the ball just below the reds. Left himself on the black. Quality. Yeah, Mark Boyle seems to have all the shots. And this break... Can you see Craig Brown ever getting back to the table? It's uh, this break. I mean, I've seen you cringe at his break. <laughs> you, think, you think it's going through the screen? It's so difficult to hit the side of the pack with the control that he does at that pace. Oh, I mean, there is a cluster of balls on the right-hand side. But they're not all one colour set. Well, they're all one colour set, and they're not a mixture. I mean... <laughs> I suppose it's got to be reds, but has he got an opening shot on a red? He's got, has he got the long straight red, if he has to? 
I mean, that'll be going away from his work a little bit, but there is a ball over the, uh, the one he's close to now that can get him back down there. I don't think he's got any choice. Just screw back out. Oh. oh. Surprising miss there. Yeah, that's probably the worst shot we've seen from Mark Boyle. I was expecting him to have to queue like, like that, like a dream. And he hasn't. So he's giving him a chance. Yep, because it's an open table. And it's a chance he's got to take. If he's going to get back into this match, you feel he's got to try and take this clearance out. Extension call. Be going reds again, obviously. Feel this is a chance that Craig's got to take. Great developing shot there straight away. Just to develop that red over the middle pocket. But he's got uh, that ball there next to that yellow on this bottom cushion here. That's a little bit tricky, and uh, you're going to need the right angle on that to avoid any uh, collisions into them yellows. So he's going down table. his last ball here what do you think that well I mean he could just drop that one into the middle he'd like to leave that as his second to last ball it's just about how he does that I mean I mean I thought he'd have played the one in the uh, the bottom right corner first and then the one into the right centre leaving the one on the left centre and possibly getting the, getting onto the black from there but I'm not sure that's on there He's leaving the one to the right centre last. Unless you can get on it here. I don't think you can. This angle needs to be perfect now. That's the thing. And has he got all the pocket to play with? I, I think he has. I believe he has. I think he's got the full pocket. But he just needs to make sure he gets the right angle. It's not bad. Just glamps past next to that yellow, do you think? Is that the best way? Just slide. Yeah. There you go. Don't have to do anything there. And it, he'll feel better after this clearance. And he'll be pleased with that one. I mean, that was a chance there. We didn't expect Mark Boyle to miss the way that he started off in this match. 5-2. Sounds a lot better than 6-1. And it's going to be Craig Brown to break. And uh, he's not got a ball off the break yet. So what do you do if you're Craig Brown? Do you go back to the side break? You've seen your opponent side break with such authority, but if you're not confident, you generate more power through the, the head ball as a rule. Yeah, I mean, for me, we uh, you, you go head ball again for me, for Craig Brown. I think he's got more chance of generating power on the head ball than he has on the cut break. But the only him that knows, I mean, We'll probably might see a little bit of frustration here if Craig doesn't get a ball off this one, this break because it can stop the momentum. You know when you've won a frame, you need a ball off the break, don't you? He needs to control this cue ball. Head break, head ball break. He hasn't controlled it. There you see, and you heard the emotion. Frustration. Yeah, I think maybe he's he's, he's so tight on that break, and he's. Maybe that little shout out there, it might just release some of that tension. I knew I'd see some emotion from Craig Brown. Really, where's his heart on the sleeve? So, free shot. One bad red on the table. Not perfect, but they all got pockets now. I mean, again, you could choose either colour set here. It wouldn't be a problem for Mark Boyle. So he's left a path for his most difficult <laughs> ball, if there is a difficult ball. Oh, well, it's an inch or two off the cushion. I don't think it's nothing's difficult no. for these top boys. 
Craig Brown. That momentum from winning that last frame just completely stopped with his break. Where's the cue ball? Oh, that was another strange shot there from Mark Boyle. Didn't get the uh, the cue action he wanted no. on it, or the cue ball control he wanted on it. And it looks like he's been extremely fortunate because I believe that red that is behind oh goes my. between the black and yellow long. And if you sat in Craig Brown's chair, which is right behind the shot, that'll be going through his mind as well. That'll Maybe. hurt. He's overcooked that one a bit as well. Is Mark Boyle feeling a little bit? I mean, he could play the red off the yellow into the uh, into the pocket, but that runs risk to try and hold the cue ball. Or does he play it into the corner to try and keep on the one in the, uh, the same corner? This is a decision he's got to make. He's using his extension now. This is an important shot here for Mark Boyle because he can keep the pressure on Craig Brown here, but he needs to be clearing these up. If he doesn't, Craig Brown's back in this match. That cue ball's doing some miles, and again, that's a nice little flick. Wow, Craig Brown, he's bound to be nodding in his chair. He really is. Be interesting to see uh, some of the faces at the the end of this frame. Because I think Craig Brown might feel a bit hard done to here, but it's all down to his dry breaks. Oh, that's the heart of the pocket. The heart of the pocket, and now a straight black for six two. Things are getting worse for Craig Brown. Mark Boyle is one more frame closer to getting into the next round. Yeah, well, tough for him to take that, I think, for Craig. I think he'd be the first to admit he struggled with his break, as you say. But to see your opponent losing the cue ball and sort of dropping on things. Yeah, especially when he's already showed that frustration with the break that's going against him, if you want to call it that. And uh, Tough times, and he's going to have to sit in his seat a little while longer. We know what's coming up next. Mark Boyle break. So once again, breaking from the side. Just watch this cue ball. I mean, he, he hits these so hard. He elevates his cue a little bit as well, doesn't he? Oh. But he hasn't got a ball this time, I don't think. He hasn't. He's dry. But look at these. They're not. They're not nice, are they, Andy? Far from. <laughs> I think he'll be happy to be back at the table, to be honest with you. I think he will be, but, I mean, some of the chances that Mark Boyle's had off his break have been absolute dreams, but this one's far from a dream. I mean, where do you start with this lot, Andy? Help. Yeah, but there you go. That's his first bit of help there. He gets a 30-second shot extension. Sometimes that ain't long enough to try and work these ones out, Andy. No. You could have an hour and you're still <laughs> be struggling, I think. I mean, once we know with these black ball rules, one shot, you can open it all up, but oh, where do you start? I'm saying maybe reds, and the only reason for that is because he's got reds to get that two ball cluster out of the bottom. But then he's got obviously the problem that he's hampering over now. He's not perfect here. Not sure what he's tried to do there. I don't think this is helping anything, taking these two balls out at the bottom first. I mean, he's already used his extension. He's going to have to make his mind up here. He feels like it's just a bit of a developing shot containing. Nothing wrong with that. The only problem with that is develop the yellows. You know, the yellows, it's, uh, that now goes as a plant into the corner. Now, can Mark develop his yellow and leave it safe somehow? It's going to be tough to do that. Just 
a little containing shot from Mark. Nothing really too extravagant. 6-2 ahead, remember. Doesn't need to be uh, pushing the boat out yet. So we might see a bit of cat and mouse here, Andy. Yeah, it's a bit untidy near that middle pocket. Two yellows, obviously planting there. If the opportunity arises. Yeah, for me, for me, this is an important frame for Craig Brown. And he needs to get this one on the board. That's not a bad shot. I don't think... Can he, can he squeeze a yellow past in that middle pocket? I'm, Looks tight. Does he need to? Probably not. And does that yellow drift down into the bottom right corner? Does it go through the gap? Or is he going for the one in the middle? He's gone for the one in the middle. Not come out perfect at all, has it? No, he was hoping to kick that red away, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He's not on anything now, I don't think. Nothing easy anyway. Things for sure here. He's going to be trying to leave Craig Brown nothing. But he has left him a shot. But you've got to say, Craig Brown's confidence has probably been hit a severe blow with the way that his break's been going. Got one rail to kick across and try and take the pocket. That's a oh, foul shot. That's careless. That is careless. Careless there from Craig Brown. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm just bewildered by that shot. I, I know there's there was like reward at the end of it, but he didn't. He was not committed to it at all. Was it? He was quite negative. Do you think that the way he's played that? Yeah, it, it just it, it obviously needed to make a cushion, didn't it? If he'd taken the pocket, he'd have felt that he he put himself in a stronger position. Didn't hit it with no authority. This, this, I don't think this is going to come out for Mark Ball either. Oh, that's not bad. I thought it was just going to rest on that red, and uh, it hasn't. And it, it is a chance. Obviously, the yellow that's near the black, that's his tough option. I mean, he, he has got an option of taking it now. But does he need to just yet? Probably not. But can he get anything else? He can get the one in the centre. I think he takes it now, yeah. It's yeah, he does take it now. These Scottish players, they love putting that clock right to the last second and uh, they just never seem flustered, Andy, do they? No, it's great time management. <laughs> it is. You know, there'll be players rushing around, panicking and all of a sudden, well, they just play the same stroke every time, don't they? So this cue ball is going to be travelling. Wants to miss the red. Didn't mean to hit the red there. It's not a bad flick again, again though. Again, no. And if you Craig Brown, if he's on that yellow, <laughs> the one that's further towards the middle of the table, he, you've got to say he's pretty perfect then. Back ball still needs a bit of you know, careful navigation, etc. But shouldn't be any problem. No problem at all. That's inch perfect. Probably too perfect, to be honest, Andy. Yeah, I think he's landed dead straight, but once again. Because the cue ball's smaller, he has got a slight angling effect, hasn't he? Yes, that's right. OK, this time management coming back into it, look. Yeah, he's got the cue ball just off enough. So, it's all about the last yellow, position to the black. I did say, Andy, this was a very important frame here for Craig Brown. It was definitely more important for Craig than it was for Mark. We're probably going to see Mark Boyle taking this one. Oh, we're not. Just tried to force that. Tried to pinch an angle that probably weren't there. Craig Brown's out of his seat very quickly indeed. <coughs> it's a must get finish, is this? Must get. And not only a must get finish, he's got to be getting 
his break working to have any chance in this match. Because it will be him to break next. Isn't it? He's under a bit of shot clock pressure already. And as you said, some people, they really panic with a clock. It's difficult. Yeah, and uh, we've probably seen some of that just then. That's just, uh, if you want to call it poor time management, that's what it probably is. The opposite to what Mark Boyle's been showing us this afternoon. And he just appears to speed it up a little bit here. I think he's trying to get himself going. Get some confidence. Yeah, there's no wrong with that. No, it's a good thing to do. Might just send a bit of a message out to Mark Ball just to say, all right, Mark, Craig, I'm here. That's it. That's the way to say it, isn't it? He's got to get his brake working, Andy, hasn't he? I'm not sure how he does that. Yeah, he's going to stay hitting the front ball. He's just got to, he's got to control the cue ball. He went straight in the middle last time. He topped it the previous break. If he can hit a good break and clear... He's got chances. Well, I think he'd like a little bit more angle on this, but, you know, Craig's just got to believe in himself, believe in his ability. I mean, he's pinched a bit of an angle to come down to the, uh, the centre pocket, which is no wrong with that. And he's down quickly. Craig Brown, the frame that he absolutely really needed. He's got it. 6-3, only three behind now. But this break is crucial at this stage of the match, isn't it, Andy? It's imperative that he gets the ball down and stays at the table. 6-3, I mean, you would have thought the scoreline was flattering 6-3 for him. Yeah, he's definitely picked up some frames from uh, the error from Mark Boyle. And that was a good clearance. Picked his pace up, looked more confident, wasn't trying to overthink anything. He's sending out a message, but I mean, I think we'll probably see, you know, if he doesn't pot a ball off this break, we're going to see a possibly a bit more frustration from him because it's all down to momentum. So, just why the uh, players just nick up, nip off for a comfort break. Uh, I suppose I could give you some uh, latest scores, etc. I'll have a quick look at them though but Andy for this match do you think Mark Boyle's got it in the bag at the moment I mean an uncharacteristic miss obviously in the last frame but he's looking so solid the break is, is another world such an authoritative break and his pattern play he, he just makes the game look so easy when he's flowing yeah, it does, and there, look, that's our last 16 at the moment. Some some scores in there already. Liam Dunster safely through 8-2. No problems at all, JJ4. Corey Reese won this event at Newcastle. 8-6 against Luce Andrews. Luce Andrews has been in a, a bit of fine form in the tour this year. We already mentioned Craig Marsh. Andy Crowsdale, 4-2 ahead there against Clint Irons. We we saw Andy Crowsdale play yesterday. Yeah, he played, he played right. some solid stuff. Yeah, he did. Bowling back the years, would you say? Yeah. John McAllister, former world champion. 6-1 ahead against Dan Davey, you know, our very own commentator. He played some not bad stuff yesterday, Dan Davey. 6 nil up against uh, Curtis Lee. And then uh, just come through that in the end. I think it was 8-3 uh, in the end. But John McAllister seems to be one-way traffic there. That's our next TV game there. Gareth Hibbert against Dean Shields. That's a repeat of last year's uh, tour final. Right. And Gareth Hibbert won that by the odd frame. And then Wade Borley against Mark Farnsworth. The number two seed, Mark Farnsworth. Is it going to be a Dunster Farnsworth final? You could expect that in the main grand final, couldn't you, Andy Richardson? What a final that would be. <coughs> but there's a long way to go. Yeah, there certainly is. I mean, that, that's just a pro event that's going off. The amateur event, that's getting close to its, uh, getting close to the final. That's in the semi-final stages. I'll look at them scores on the next break off and I'll tell you some of them some of the players that have been playing since 9 o'clock this morning there's been no rest for these pool players the ladies they're in action they're going to be down to a quarter final at the end of today's play they're playing rounds one well they've played rounds one they've got two three and four to play today but it's all happening out there they're open that starts today it's all happening Andy Richardson here they are the man 
But back to this match. This match is far from over. He needs a ball off the break. Has he finally got one? He has got one. He's got a cheer. He's put his arms up in the air. Craig Brown. Oh, God, again, he's got a couple of difficulties. Hit them much better, didn't it? He, he did. It sounded better, didn't it? it the ball, much better, yeah, yeah, much better. And he put his arms up in the air saying, finally, and that's what he needed, but these aren't easy. That black and that red, I'm not sure what options he's got there. Does, if he did elect reds, I mean, they're horrible. <laughs> First glance, Andy, what do you think? Well, he's called his extension, so he's just having a little think. Awkward yellow, awkward red. As you say, the black and red. I think the red does pass to the corner. As a former player, Andy, what do you think you do here? Do you try and slow the game down a bit, or do you try out and get some momentum? I don't think you can slow the down. You can't slow the game down against somebody like Mark. He, he's, you'd be giving him too many opportunities. I think you, the chance you've got is that you try and gain some momentum. I totally agree, Andy. I really do. It's a definitely momentum game. This. I think all, all the negative play in pool and that, it's it's long gone, isn't it? And uh, these boys, these boys at the very, very top. Craig Brown, he's got to think, you know, he got to the last four of the World Championships. He's got to believe in himself. And I think sometimes that was a bit doubt, doubtful in his own mind and uh, it's just a bit of belief. But that's not bad. Finally got a bit of a rub of the green. He'll be happy with that. So he's kicked out his bad yellow. And all his yellows are in the open now. It's just that black ball. Where does that go, Andy? Is it going to have to be kicked out? There's a couple of balls near it. So if that is the case, I'm sure we'll get the opportunity. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to find out all about his angles that he leaves now. I mean, I think for this here, this is a, a crucial shot, this one. Because he's, he's obviously uh, in the top part of the table. He's going to have to drift down table. So it's all about leaving the right angle. And there is balls in the way here that can uh, cause a problem. Just played it nice and easy. I like that, keeping it simple. But that black still looks like a problem ball. He's only got one option of a, a pot here. I don't think he's on anything else. Just this one into the right centre. What can he do with this? I don't. I don't think it's the time to go into the black now, do you, Andy? No. I know he's got an angle. No guaranteed position on your next ball, have you? That's the. I know he's got. An, he's got an angle too, but I don't think it's the right shot. He, well, he decides it is the right shot, and he's played it to perfection. Who are we to criticise Gray Brown? He's looking better now, though, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah, he's gained some confidence. He's opened that black up. He's just checked there off the bottom rail. He's Leaves the yellow into the other middle. Seems to be queuing a little bit better. That you know, timing with that check and that, that, that all them shots can go wrong, especially when you you're under a bit of pressure and things aren't going to plan. But it seems like he's turned the corner. I like that. Played with confidence. Could it, a lot of players would just drop that in. He's playing on and off the cushion. This is better stuff from Craig Brown. Well, at 6-4, we've got a match on. We have. And Mark Boyle, he's going to be sat in his chair there, just hoping that he's uh, going to continue with the run that he's had at the moment. But we've seen a few kinks in the way that Mark Boyle's played at the, you know, the middle stage of this match. But, you know, credit to Craig Brown. He's hung in there and he's 6-4. And he's probably now deserved to be at 6-4. You know, we'll, we'll say he didn't deserve to be at 5-2, 5-3, etc. And I think at 6-4, I think he possibly now deserves to be at that scoreline. Yeah, I think that was a good good finish. Considering the uh, the way the rest of the match had been going. <coughs> a referee there, Darren Maidman, trying to wet the balls up nice and tightly again for this. Well, as we've been saying... Throughout this match, a crunching Mark Boyle break. Not sure how these balls stand up to these power these boys give to him. Another crunching break. And what's bad news for Craig Brown is, is that a ball's gone down, but we've got a couple of clusters. 
not straightforward. Um, first glance, Andy. Obviously, the black's in a horrific position. But is that the ball that you, you get it out with that yellow? Is that the right ball? Extension, extension. Or is that the one? I think that's probably more the one if the, the yellow does go. I think the way that he's queued that up, it possibly does. This is a crucial, crucial stage now, this match. Because you, you feel if Mark Boyle doesn't clear up here, it gives Craig Brown an opportunity with the momentum that uh, Craig's showing. This could go within one frame. There, there's some pressure here on Mark. So he's taking yellows. Yeah, I think uh, there's no re you know, I suppose the reason for that is that red and black that's together. I think he's tried to get the black out early, has he? Is that what we're seeing? Or, But I don't think he's on the yellow that he was looking at, the one over the middle pocket. Is he rerouting here? Are we seeing Mark Boyle just playing a couple of loose shots in these last few frames? I wouldn't say he's in A1 position here. No, I don't think he's landed where he wanted to be. That's for sure. Oh, he's trying Look to do that. something. Is that going to run enough? Is he on the yellow to the centre to dislodge the blackout? If he is, there's no guaranteed position. But it, it would be an opportunity. But is he on the one into the right centre? I don't, if, if not, he's not on anything. I don't think he's on anything, Andy. I don't think he's going to attempt to swerve that either. He's coming off the cushion. Containing shot, is it? He's tried to make it. He has tried to make it and, and has dropped. made it. Yeah, great shot there from Craig Brown. And he just can't get back to the table, Craig. I mean, that was a great shot there from Mark. I mean, he had to produce something there, but... He's been far from perfect in this frame and he, he's still trying to create balls happening. Where's that yellow going to go when he does play this yellow off the red? He's, uh, yes, the black's going to come out, but is that yellow going to stick to that red? He's got to play this at pace, has he? Called it. I didn't see that coming out of there, Andy. No. And this is getting more and more difficult. Craig Brown, if you're sat in your seat now, you're going to start chalking up, aren't you? He's going to have to come back to the table here, Craig Brown. He must do. But, I mean, it's not going to be an easy table he's going to come back to. But it's going to be an opportunity that he didn't think he'd possibly have in it when he was 6-2 down. Well, what a great opportunity it's now going to turn out to be. Another loose cue ball from Mark Boyle. He's feeling it out there, isn't he? Is he is feeling it, he is. Oh, Craig Brown. Mark Boyle is gifting you opportunities. You've got to take these with both hands. We, uh, you've already called it, Andy. We've got a match on our hands here. If he takes these out and then gets his break working, the game's level. We never saw that one coming, did we? Level game. And yeah, good shot there. Beautiful shot. He's and left the yellow on the rail. Brilliant shot. He's thinking clearly out there. Greg Brown, he's not going away. He's just he's starting to believe he really is, isn't he? He is. So I think at one time he thought he himself he was dead and buried and it was over. But it just proves that this pressure out there happens to all the top boys. Mark Boyle was no exception. Hope you're all enjoying the action so far. This game is heating up here at the Isle of Man. And the second days of action. Now, I think the only problem ball here, that one on that, you know, that one near the middle pocket on the far cushion. I mean, you can drop it into that middle pocket there, Andy, but you've got to be directly behind it. Do you think he's going to try and bump it out? I don't think he needs to. Not where that yellow is, do you? You no. don't need to. Keep it simple. We've been saying it all along, Andy, haven't we? So Just need to take extra care. 
He's got to hold himself together here. This is a huge frame. Huge frame. And he's up to the channel so far. Again, just needs to hold himself together. Just needs to all them hours and months and years of practice, Andy. This is where these are the finishes uh, you, you've been, you know, dreaming of taking. And uh, when you play against these top boys, you have to take these ones out. Craig Brown, he knows how to do this. And now he's in prime position. Played took, that well. Took him a while to get in prime position, but he's in it now. And now he's looking like going within one frame. <coughs> one of Scotland's finest players, Mark Boyle. We have got a match on our hands here. Been well deserved as well. Craig Brown is hung in there. I don't know what he's been hanging on, but it must have been a thread. And this boy is back. One of North East's finest players. I mean, the, the players that come from the North East. Uh, I mean, we're always going about the Scottish and the Welsh contingent, but uh, basically. And the, but the North East boys, oh, there's loads of them. And he's perfect. All the North East boys that are supporting Craig Brown at home watching this. They'll be happy with the way that he's come back in this match. And it's 6-5. He's back in this one. 6-5 and his break. just see there just at the way that that Craig Brown won that last frame and uh, wow, what a terrific comeback we've got on here Andy Richardson it really is what a turnaround this break is it going to continue to keep working Andy oh he's crunched them oh is it oh Craig Brown it's right <sighs> what can you do he's hit them very well hasn't he can't do much more can you no but as Craig Brown now, I know he's still going to be frustrated about getting a dry break, but he's, six, he's only 6'5 six down now. He's going to feel a little bit better in himself, do you think? Most definitely. Mark Boyle, you, you've got to say, he's probably the one under a bit more pressure out of the two players with what we've seen in the recent frames. So this clearance for Mark Boyle is huge for him. I mean, there's, I mean, the problem we've got here, we've got, you know, one of each colour set blocked by the other one. So whichever one he takes, he, he is going to have a difficult um, get out, really, hasn't, isn't he? You know, yeah. both the ones on these bottom cushions. So, but he's under shot clock pressure. He's going to try and get this one out, is he? Yeah, I think so. Try and move it early. No, the yellow balls, that's what he's on, but what's he on next? It's not ideal. He was hoping to move the yellow out and uh, take the white further up table. Oh, I think, has he only got a plant on now? This is, oh, he's trying to contain his shot. Okay, um, that's not the greatest containing shot in the world. I mean, Mark Boyle's just looking at that and thinking, what's happened there? I, I mean, I'm not sure what's happened there. I don't know one thing for certain, uh, Craig Brown's in no trouble here at all. He's even left Craig Brown a possibility of a pot, possibly. But there's no need now. The pressure's on Mark Ball here. I mean, does Craig try and hide this cue ball behind the one in the top left-hand corner? It's not an easy shot. But is it one? If he gets right, he could be uh, winning this frame. Or does he go all-out attack? A big decision here to be made. Because if he doesn't get this shot right, he's let Mark back, back to the table and... Uh, this is a delicate shot. Is he got the pace right? Too hard. By about three or four inches as well. He's let Mark back in. And this is the chance that Mark Boyle has probably been waiting for. But we've seen him, well, we haven't seen him clear up for a while. Remember, 6-2 ahead he was. 
6-5 is a different stage of this game now. Again, we're probably looking at Mark Boyle. He's got to try and hold himself together here to, to stop this mini comeback from Craig Brown. If Craig Brown would have got that shot right behind that, Mark Boyle would have been under all sorts of pressure. I mean, it is an easy get out, but it's what I did left Craig afterwards. Cue ball. Did he try to Where's the me? cue ball? Oh dear. It's no man's land. Oh my lord. A sign of frustration there. Tell you something. Well, if one player is under pressure, it's Mark Boyle at the moment. And he don't look to be under he wasn't flustered in any way, shape or form the early part of this match. He looked in well, as you said, in the zone. He's got to somehow, Andy, get back into that zone. Because playing another loose shot like this one, he's struggling a little bit. Because Greg Brown, let me tell you, he's going to be attacking here. Because the momentum's with Greg here. He's not going to play any containing shots, I'm sure. He's going to really pull the, uh, all the strings out to try and get this clearance done and dusted. He really needs to send a message to the Mark Boyle corner. He's looking to get this bad ball out, bottom of the table. Big shot. Blocked by the yellow. Well, that's not a bad option. Still got the problem in this uh, bottom right hand corner. I mean, what does he do? I mean. <laughs> I don't think he goes up table now. I mean, that's the easiest pot. Um, I don't think he's got any option, actually, looking at the angle. He's got left that one in the centre. He has got to go up table. So, this is a key positional shot. And it, I think he can only get on one ball. That's the ball that he's on now. I think that's the only one that went into that bottom left-hand corner. So, but the only problem is Craig Brown is putting all these red balls and he still hasn't got the right angle to get his problem ball out. Don't think he's got the angle here, has he, Andy? Or has he? He's Doesn't appear to from the overhead. So now he definitely has some sort of angle. Well, I think you've got to try and do it now, have you? But there's just there's no guarantees here. Big, big shot, big moments in this match. Can Craig Brown pull it off? He's trying. He's trying. It's not bad, Andy Richardson, is it? Can he get onto his last red ball? Is he straight enough to roll that through? He would love to be straight on this. Just be a case of topping through to the middle of the table. But has he got an angle? Is he running away from it? I think he's going to be, at the very worst, leaving. Leaving. Oh, pressure. Pressure at the finest, isn't it? It really is. So... Mark Boyle back to the table for the third time in this frame. You feel like he's got to take these out, but he's under a bit of pressure. I don't quite remember the last time he, he's, he's took a clearance out, Andy. I really can't. So, long yellow. He's in prime position now. He is in prime position, and this, these, these finishes, this is exactly what Mark Boyle wanted. Looking for all the world like it was going to be six apiece. Yeah. 
It really was. And now Mark Boyle's looking like he's going to go one frame away. You feel like that was a very good chance there for Craig Byrne, especially when he, he, he got the nudge out where it just like it was going to happen, wasn't it? He'll be pleased with that one. Mark Boyle, seven frame, one frame away now. Wow, I'm not sure how Mark Boyle's got to got into that frame there. It didn't seem like he was going to win that one either. I mean, that dry break there from Craig. It's, it's told a bit of a story of this match. But he's kept in there. Is that a credit to Craig there. That cue ball there, the when it drifted to that corner. Poor shot from Mark Boyle again. He's definitely been unsettled by something Mark has it and it makes you wonder if it's just like the, the comeback from Craig or he's feeling a little bit uncomfortable in himself or etc. I know it's the first game of the day again for him, at, you know, but you know, these guys that played yesterday, they should be up for this now. That score line on there is incorrect, 6-6. Six, six. It is 7-5 to Mark Boyle. We'll get that corrected very soon. Don't worry about that. We know the score here in the commentary box. We've been keeping a very close eye on it here, haven't we, Andy? And there yeah. you go. Look, someone's listened to the, the commentators. And 7-5 it is. I mean, I think even even the players would have seen the 6-all uh, six, six score line. I mean, he should have been 6-all, to be honest, Andy. He had a great chance, didn't he? He did. So, once again... Back to break. Mark Boyle's back to breaking well, but there's a little bit of a cluster. On the corner, two balls together. They're, they're a bit of an issue, but there is balls around it to get it out. I mean, early stage of this match, Andy, these are bread and butter for Mark Boyle, aren't they? Yeah. But we have seen a few kinks in the Mark Boyle's game, and... Uh, I mean, we're going to expect him to clear this up because he's Mark Boyle. But can he do it? Can he see this match out? He needs to at this opportunity, though. Difficulty being the two balls, obviously. Down near the black. Both hampering each other. Couple of balls on the rail, similar situation. He's going for reds. I like that shot. Very, very clever shot. Developed the other red as well. I mean, it was, it was just so natural for that to happen, but uh, it still needed a lot of control about it. I mean, he's still got this problem, red ball. Oh, he's leaving himself the perfect angle now to... I mean, I expect him to move the yellow out. I mean, would you can into the red or the yellow here, Andy, would you? As a player... That's the yellow half ball. Guaranteed in the one in the top corner, aren't you? There we are. OK, not perfect. And uh, that'll be a tough pot down the uh, the cushion. I don't think he's going to take that on because I think it's a bit too difficult. So he is rerouting a little bit here. <coughs> Things can still go wrong, can't they? Yeah, it's uh, it needs the right angle on the ball into the middle if that's the way he's going. Yeah, he's going to keep it as simple as possible, isn't he? Looks pretty good to me, that. Not wrong with that one. Very, very simple indeed for Mark Boyle. Are we going to see this match closed out? So, 7-5, perfect angle into the middle, and we have a red down the rail, and it'd be an 8-5 victory for Mark Boyle, he just needs to take this ball, and you'd fancy him to... So needs this black. The white obviously will be travelling. 
but you'd expect him to get this. Just composing himself. So here we go. And there it is. Black in the corner for an 8-5 victory. And yep, hard work I think there at times. But that break, so impressive. Such a massive advantage when you can break like that consistently. <laughs> but it wasn't an easy ride. Quite dominant early on. And then he made a few errors. And there you see the two players just discussing. Yeah. And it's nice to see the players discussing the match afterwards. I don't know if they're saying that they think the ball was sliding. But he's through. Mark Boyle lives to fight another day. At one point, it was looking very possible that there could be six apiece. And that great match. 8-5, I think, is a fair result. At one point, it was looking like it would be a steamroller. So, we're going to hand you over to Mark in the studio. We'll be speaking to Mark Boyle. Here we go. Thanks, Andy. And, uh, wow, what an incredible match there from uh, Mark Boyle and Craig Brown. And here's our winner, Mark Boyle. Did you feel like you were going to actually win that game in the end? No. My head went, even though it was about 6-2 was or 6-3 six, six up, my head went because I played a few shots and the cue ball wasn't doing what I thought it would do, you know, but I just had to grind it out a wee bit at the end. Yeah, we definitely saw you grinding out and definitely, you know, at 6-2, you know, we were talking in commentary, you, you was pretty much in the zone at that stage and uh, there was something that just rattled you and it, was it just down to your cue ball control, something with you was overdoing, etc. What was it? Do you want my honest opinion? Yes, please. The table. The table, mm -hmm. okay. It's, it's not a new cloth, it's not a, not a new cushion, so it's it's playing a bit different to, totally to different, what you're, totally you're used to, yeah, etc. Uh, I, I was talking about it when I was winning, eh? I, I thought you'd rather moan about it when you win rather than look like sore grapes if you get beat. I just it was just alien out there. If, if I had to do anything with the white, it was a guesswork. Well, at the start of that match, though, Mark, you played some really great stuff, and uh, you know some of the stuff that we saw from Liam Dunster last night. We'll we'll see yeah. you repeating some of that. And yeah. did you feel very good at the start of that match? Yeah, I felt I feel I felt brilliant coming into it this week, you know, and that's what kind of held me together at the end there. Because as long as I don't have to do anything with the white, I felt I, I wouldn't miss. But the minute I started to think about the white, I was the I was taking my mate, I missed a couple with just thinking about the white rather than the pot. You know where it's other way about, you know what the cue ball's going to do, but it just felt felt different out there, that's all I'll say. Yeah, I mean, you got me shouting in the old commentary box, etc., because, yeah. uh, you know, there was a lot of emotion out there and uh, there was a lot of tension as well, I, I, I seem to think there was. And, uh, was you know, a, a little bit about your opponent, Craig Brown, he just never give up, no, did he? No, he doesn't. You, you, know, you know how good Craig is, he, he'll, he'll never give up, you know. And he... He done well to get back into it, you know. Even though I made a couple of mistakes, but he had three, four dry breaks at the start, so that kind of gave me like the easy frames to, to get going, you know. So to Craig for for to get into that game, it, it just shows you he will, he will never give up. And for you now, obviously into the next round, which I'm, I'm sure you're delighted with. I mean, yeah. what what are you going to do now for you, you know, your little bit of time that you've got before you on again? Just go grab a bite to eat. Take the wee man for a bite and then just uh, chill until uh, I don't know what time the next game is. I'm sure you'll find. I think it's around four o'clock in time. That's fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, grab sure a wee bite to eat and just maybe watch a couple of games. You know, just uh, just pass the time. Yeah, and I think you've got to take some positives out of that game because you did mm -hmm. play some great stuff. And mm -hmm. that I know, um, obviously, you weren't too happy with the table, etc. But it's just about how you overcome that because the table's yeah, not going to change. It's just about how you, you know, you you know, get back to how you normally play. Uh, you could just go through the motions, eh? It's, it's like. It does, it does throw you right off, I'll, I'll be open and honest, it does, but you've just got to, you know it's the same for both players and you've just got to grind it out, you, you've just got to, it's like 
we just got to battle away, you know. But uh, still here, still here to punch, still punching, as they say. Yeah, you certainly are. Well, I'm going to let you get off yeah. and uh, get ready for your next match. Well played and good luck for your next round. And uh, no doubt we'll be seeing you again at some point so. this weekend. Never know. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Well, there's Mark Boyle. He's uh, safely through to the next round. Not really the, uh, the best performance uh, towards the end there, but he played some brilliant stuff, and uh, no doubt we're going to see a lot more of that. But our next matchup is going to be Gareth Hibbert against Dean Shields. That is a repeat of last year's final, the Open, and uh, his, how good is that one? Dean Shields is going to want some revenge on Gareth Hibbert. So it looks like the players are just about ready. The referee isn't too far from being ready now. Ben Taylor for end tape. So I'm going to hand over to you, to Andy Richardson, who's going to talk about possibly some of the last 16 matches, uh, about what are currently going off in the arena at the moment. And uh, over to you, Andy, and uh, hopefully this is going to be another great match-up. Thanks, Mark. Yep, really looking forward to it. Gareth Hibbert, Dean Shields, race to eight. So both players preparing for the lag. Sorry, they already have lagged. Just been informed that one of the players has taken a comfort break. So just be a couple of minutes. Another great match in prospect, this one. Know more about Gareth, obviously, more my age group. Fantastic player, but I know Dean Shields by reputation. Also another great, great player. Hoping for a good match. Fantastic venue as well, this is. So here we go. Dean's back from his comfort break. And they are in fact lagging. Got there in the end. Not a bad lag there either, Andy. And, uh, I have been corrected. This wasn't a repeat of the final. Both these players got to the final in the Isle of Man last year, but they didn't play each other. So I have been corrected, and uh, apologies for that information. But I know they both uh, did very well here at the Isle of Man, and uh, one of these players is going to be knocked out after this match. And, uh, who is it going to be? These these two won the World Doubles together back in 2015. And uh, Dean Shields, he, he had the uh, nickname given to him, Shootout, because he potted the winning Shootout Black uh, when it went to sudden death. And I think it was 8-7 in that final, I, I believe. Um, I know I've been getting the statistics wrong, but I know it, it, was, a, it was a brilliant doubles final, etc. Um, but uh, Gareth Hibbert, I mean, you know Gareth Hibbert over the years. I do. How, do, how does Gareth Hibbert play to this level? Uh, you know, because he's no spring chicken anymore. No. What's he made of? He must be nearly as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's so difficult to concentrate when you, as you get older. I think that's the biggest difficulty. You still have the technique, but it's it's holding concentration for long periods of time under pressure. But yeah. boy, does he do it! Yeah, he does. And uh, I mean, Dean Shields, he's had a. a little bit of a quiet year, not really the year he was expecting or what he thought he might have got, but he played some brilliant stuff, Dean Shield. He, he, I, I do think he's one of the best jurists in the tour at the moment. And I know we've got some great cue actions in, in our tour, etc., but Dean's right up there with the very best. And he, he's absolutely creamed that break. First glance here, Andy. Well... He's no traffic, always a positive. He's on the yellows. And I didn't know whether he might take the ball into the middle, being behind it, but elected to play into the corner. Black on the rail, obviously more difficult than in the open table. But these balls are all on. And at this level, you'd be expecting him to run them out. Cool. Yeah, well, he feels this is the uh, the most important shot at the moment. 
these are the ones he has to get. I mean, I'm expecting this to be a bit of a dish fest, to be honest. These players, they know each other's game throughout. It won't be any different. But they'll all be wanting to get one over on each other. I know that's for certain. Didn't want to be hampered by the black there. We saw him sigh there as the cue ball came to rest. So, he's going a different way. He elected to play the ball over the corner, which gives him the angle he was looking for previously. Now, does this yellow pass the red? Overhead, I'd say yes. From the other perspective, it looks tight. Yeah, it does. I think he's coming into this. He's coming into it. Doesn't want to slide off it, and that's what he's done. That could always be. Always a off. risk, yeah, always a risk. Has he got a double on? It looks tight, that, that uh, gap through between the two reds. I don't think it's on. Or is it? <laughs> Even if it is, he hasn't got all the pocket. Where does the yellow go that he's closest to now? I don't think that glances by into the centre either. I think it's a double only. I don't know what he's trying to do. Like he's tried to double it long. Yeah, that was an incredibly tough shot. And that was a chance there from Dean Shields to set this match off. So, first look at Gareth Hibbert. Elected to play safe. Promoted his own ball. <coughs> and he's in big trouble here, is Dean. Tried to break the ball out, previous visit. Always a risk. A referee there, Ben Taylor for end take. Yeah, looking to see if it's a total snooker, and that's confirming it now. So that just means that all Dean has to do is touch the yellow, and after he's touched the object ball, he doesn't have to strike a cushion. Again, though, it's a little bit loose. Yeah, another sign of frustration, but he was snookered. He was just trying to contain, keep him safe. I think he tried to glance that. I mean, this is a tricky little shot here for Gareth, but... It was risk-free, wasn't it? That was the thing. Yeah, it was. Sat on top of the yellow. And no no pressure at all. And uh, now this is a, a good opportunity for Gareth Hibbert where this frame should have been over three or four shots ago. Did he try and get the black out here? I think he tried to. He did. Where's the cue ball gone? He did try and move it. Okay, that was a, a little bit risk-free. Yes, he could have been covering the red that he'd have been on next, etc. But he's got another opportunity at this. He's got to say he's a little bit fortunate, but he was going into an area where there was red balls. Okay, this is this isn't perfect. It's a bit hampered queuing. Plays them ever so well. Just punches them in and comes on and off the cushion. It's a very compact cue action. Yeah, this is a man that's had back-to-back 147s -back in a match. <laughs> yeah. See, it tells you a story, doesn't it? That's a, a phenomenal achievement. I bet there's only so many players that have done that in their careers. So Dean's only hope here is that he doesn't get good on the black. pretty good to me need <laughs> I can't see Gareth Hibbert making any problems for himself here that is in the pocket and it's one frame to nil for Gareth Hibbert perfect start for Gareth Dean Shields could kind of feel that he'll probably be a little bit disappointed there it's a frame it's gone begging you can't say it was particularly an error he was trying to run in dislodge a ball you're always taking a chance you're hoping to land in a certain area. And unfortunately for, for Dean, it didn't come off this time. 
Yeah, first frame. Sometimes it, you know you can get forgiven for that one. Um, but, you know, if he continues to not clear up, he will get punished from Gareth Tibbet. As we know, Gareth Tibbet is also one of the top players in the world. He's won pretty much everything in the game. Gareth Tibbet has. Frame two. Gareth Tibbet to break. Leading one frame to nil. Time running. First so. look. He's got one of the biggest breaks as well, Gareth Tibbet has. Oof. <sighs> Absolutely crunched them. How was a ball not dropped there? I mean, yes, the cue ball was a little bit close to the corner pocket, which sometimes it is for Gareth. But it's dry. I feel like Dean's possibly got to get this frame because he's had a chance in the first frame. You don't want to get let Gareth get make a little bit of a lead, you know, because so, what could happen here is, uh, you know, he loses this frame, dry break next, Gareth clears up, and all of a sudden he's 3 0 down, and uh, he'll be under some pressure then. Agreed, yeah, and I think it is very important that he, he, he gets his confidence together. He, he just looked very anxious. It, it, they weren't mistakes that he'd made. He just didn't get the rub of the green when he was trying to get position. But he looked frustrated. Just needs to compose himself. He's taking yellows. He didn't want to be there. No, he didn't. He's got some more awkward cue into 10 2. And, uh, He's going to leave himself uh, at, like a, a mid-range pot again, but he needs to make sure he pots this one first. He needs to keep very steady on his cue action. Oh. Just never cue through that, and uh, these are worrying times for Dean Shields because he hasn't settled yet. And uh, I know one thing for certain, Gareth here, but he won't be feeling sorry for him. These top boys, they don't feel sorry for you when you miss. They really don't. They are devastating. And Gareth's expression never changes. When I watch him, I can never tell if he's in front or behind. No. So one difficult red. Well, I suppose you could say two. They're slightly awkward, but the one at the bottom of the table... Surrounded by those yellows. Yes, it goes in the corner. But he needs to navigate those yellows. Oh. And has he gone down? Yep. Oh, I don't think he's no. not quite on but the But he's still prime. He he's still okay. I mean, like you say, Andy, he needs to be absolutely perfect there. I mean, does he, does he try again to get on it? It's a delicate shot if he does. So what does he do with that last red? Is he just going to feed himself with a centre shot or is he going to try and drift down into the gap? I think the gap's risky. He was trying the gap. But he's missed the ball. One a very unexpected miss there from Gareth Hibbert. And Dean Shields is back to the table. I'm not sure what he's got on here. I don't think he can get through to the one that's just off the bottom cushion. Or can he? I don't think so. Obviously going to drift one of them into the uh, corners. I mean, if he does pot this, he's going to have a chance then. He has potted it. Potted it clean. It's not too bad. Would have liked to have been a bit straighter, obviously, but good pot under pressure. And I think now, is he... I suppose he's going to have to cannon into a ball here to try and make something happen, or... Does one of them yellows pass somewhere? Oh, he's played this nice. Played this very nice indeed. What a great shot from Dean Shields. The arc that he got on the ball there to create an angle that no one would have seen. Brilliant shot. It's still not easy, this. Yeah, that red is causing him problems. 
I suppose the black is as well. Close to his work. So, long yellow. I mean, I suppose he's got a big pocket up there as well, but no, Dean. He'll want to pot this clean. I don't think he'll go for a big pocket. He might prove me wrong in a minute, but he'll play it clean. Exactly what I thought he would. He's a good enough player to do that. He's bridging over the red, but you'd expect him to get this. Yeah, he'll feel a little bit better about himself now. This black to level this match up, one frame each. It's probably a fair reflection on this match so far. Been some errors though so far from yeah, both I think players. Yeah, Dean, Dean, uh, Dean will be over the moon there to get one, to get back to level. Signs of frustration early doors, but he got his chance in that rack. Yeah, it's going to be Dean Shields to break and then this next one, but again that miss there, he just doesn't, doesn't seem comfortable. But hopefully now winning that frame will settle him down a bit. That miss there from Gareth. I didn't expect that one. I don't think he did. That was a good shot. It was, and then that one. Very arced it. Very good. And that is it. One frame apiece. Another frame look three. at the Dean Shields Dean break. Shields Struck him well last time. Scores a tie. One frame all. Time running. So, no cup breaks in this match. Certainly not up to this point. Good connection. Very good break. Shows he's chewing very straight, but no reward. Once again, it's dry. Yellows for me here. Yellows for me as well. Not simple. Not, uh, not like the greatest split, but you know, we've already seen Gareth miss an easy ball or two. And, uh, well, this is not one that he wants to be missing one on here. These are the chances he has to take. Well, already looking at the plant possibility into the middle at some point. First shot, probably the key shot in this break. Landed nice and low on the yellow. So he's still looking at this plant. So the yellow's going to be heading down table, but that's okay. Yeah, do you feel that like he's just going to leave the one on the cushion till last? Yeah, that's the last ball. I wouldn't say he's perfect here. Takes the ball into the corner. Ball near the ball line, second last, you would think. And yes, I see what you're saying because he doesn't want too much of an angle on this yellow. He'd got love got to get as straight as he can. Yeah, he's got more of an angle than he wanted. And uh, it's not the angle he. He's just going to drop it in. Or he? I was trying to produce Powered it something. across. He didn't want to be there. I'm not sure about that one. I mean, he would just try to get very close to it. So it's a very thin cut. This cue ball is going to be moving. So it's That's in or effort. over. Good effort. Brilliant. And it's shot. dropped. I thought for a second that was going to hang. 
It's just the pace of it, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it gave it every chance. Yeah, give it every chance for the pace. I mean, that takes some mighty fine queuing. This black. Oh, he's missed this one, though. That one weren't going to drop. Has that just kicked and straightened up, do you think? I don't he, know. He's not looked comfortable on this clearance, though, has he? No, it's a couple of uncharacteristic misses from, uh, from Gareth. If he's going to play safe at any point here, it's going to have to be a good one. Yeah, it certainly is. Not sure there is, there is a great safety shot on, really. So it's top cushion behind three or four reds, etc. That's about the only option. But he's got to get this right. If not, he'd be leaving Gareth an easy shot. But he's going for a double. But he's got the white ball on a That's piece a of string. That's a great cue ball. Yeah, and it, he played that a shot to well, he had a shot to nothing really, doesn't he? And what can Gareth conjure up here? Is there any route to that black? It is on. It'll be close. It's in. What an escape that was! And you can hear the little giggle from Dean Shields. I'm sure it was Dean just giggling. I mean, that's that's absolutely nailed into it. It really is. He's had to play that with one inside. As Gareth just said to Dean, he said, I, d I didn't have any choice. <laughs> it was the only shot on. Sometimes the problem, when you let your opponent come back to the table. Oh, he's got that chance, haven't they? They have, but he couldn't do much more, could he? No. no His no. hands were tied. I mean, this is the one that we didn't think was going to drop, but that pays. Any right. harder it misses. Not sure what happened on that black, but we know what happened on this black. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. Two cushion escape. Frame. Perfect. 2-1. Gareth Hibbert to break. I mean, he, he struck these well last time like he normally does, but was close to this corner pocket. He can lose his cue ball at time from time. He has lost it. Straight in the corner. Player error. If it gets knocked in, you can say you've had a bit of bad luck, but when you draw the ball straight into the pocket, you've lost control. Just shows you're not queuing completely straight. I mean, we've seen Dean Shields, he was queuing very straight indeed. He hit the middle of the back cushion. But now, Dean Shields, another chance to level this match up. There's one free shot, one visit. You'd expect him to to really get these sorted out. So he's opening up the yellows. Yeah, developing shot. No one with that one. Looks perfect now, doesn't he? He's under no pressure as well. Not with that top right hand corner. A little bit short of pace. Not got the angle he wanted. I feel like he's going to be losing the cue ball after this shot. No, he can just drop it in. Well, he did just drop it in, yeah. Looked like he might drift too far, but... Yeah, it did. He's oh, okay. And we all know what, what you know, a really confident part of Dean Shields is. is that he just believes in his own ability. Which at this level of a game, that's what you've got to do. Believe. The only possible problem you can see here is the last yellow to get to the black. Yes, it's over the pocket. But he's going to have to control the cue ball if he's going to get good position on the black. I suppose it's all about where he leaves this uh, cue ball now. I mean, can he pinch some of the pocket to, to gain an angle? That's probably not there. <coughs> so, key shot, Andy. 
mean, this has got to be cued very well. It, I mean, it's not straightforward. So he's screwing off the side rail, and he didn't mean to hit that red. Extension cut. No, he's just trying to compose himself. We all know he's a great potter. But there's pressure out there. It's not a gimme. Oh. There you see, once again, another miss black. Yeah, one uh, again. He's one that he should be getting. And he's really unsettled by everything that's going off at the moment. It's quite an edgy match from both players. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's the dynamic that f that's sort of good friends and it's it's awkward to play each other? I know it shouldn't be like that at the professional level, but... Yeah, it's definitely sometimes it's said, isn't it? They've yeah. all got a bit too much respect for each other, etc. And that that's what's probably showing here with these two players. But, you know, against these top players, you, you can't give them these chances. And Gareth is one of them players... Sooner or later, he could trigger into reeling off four or five frames and uh, this match will be beyond Dean Shields. <coughs> so, just coming down to his last few reds now. This is to open up a two-frame lead. And he seems to have picked up the pace a little bit. I mean, Gareth's no way like a slow player anyway. But he seems to have picked the pace up, if that's possible. It is noticeable. He's uh, a bit of a spring in his step. A couple of unforced errors from both players. He knows he needs to up his game. And a black in the middle to take a 3-1 lead. He's got to be happy with that, considering a couple of misses from both players. Could well have been level. I mean, it definitely probably should have been level. I mean, you know, I didn't expect uh, Dean to miss that black, but it all come down to him cannon into that red. I mean, it, it weren't an easy shot to get on the black, and uh, it, it was one of them, um, you know, situations where things could go wrong, and that's what's happened. So that shot there where he thought he got prime position, and he didn't, didn't cue that nice, though, yeah. did he? Quite nervy. And when you see the rerun, it looks so easy. <laughs> yeah, we do. So, so another look at the Dean Shields break. Been breaking well in general, would you say, Mark? I think he has. I think he's been absolutely he's hitting striking. the ball well. Yeah, he has. He's, he's not been getting any reward from it. But how long can you keep striking the ball well when you're not getting the reward? Another good strike. That was an excellent break. Well, the yellows. <laughs> the yellows. Get the yellows. They're absolute dreams. A crunch of a break that was. Certainly would. I mean, the white ball was starting to bounce, but it soon settled down. And uh, this could settle down a Dean Shields. Just what he needs. Perfect position. In the centre, dropping the corner. And very quickly, 3-2 on the cards. Yeah, on and off the cushion. And I think Dean's picked the pace up as well here, both players. Yeah, I think that, well, the showing signs are starting to settle a little bit. Which is only good for one thing, a decider. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. So, 
Good frame there from Dean. Needed it badly, but is he going to get a chance off a Gareth Hibbert break? The way that Gareth's been breaking recently, he possibly could. So in the last 16 matches, John McAllister, he's safely through to the uh, quarter-finals, as is Andy Crowsdale. He beat Clint Ianson eight frames to four. John McAllister beat Dan Davey eight frames to four. So the quarter-finals lining up. Liam Dunster against Corey Rees. Craig Marsh against Mark Boyle. Andy Crowsdale against John McAllister. Then the winner of this match will play either Wade Morley or Mark Farnsworth, which is locked at two frames, frames. apiece. Who is going to be winning this professional event? Here at the Isle of Man, we will be finding out tonight. Scheduled for around 9.30, 10 o'clock. That's a crunching break. And he's off the table. Oh. The Gareth Hibbert break continues to fail. Surely this match is going to be levelled up again. Just when he started to open up a bit of a lead. That was a crunchy break as well. But losing the white ball, a bit unforgiving again. Yep, he went airborne. Never a good thing. So he's pushed the yellow onto the side. Little bit of insurance possibly for him, should things go wrong. But he's taking reds. Just needs to be careful of his work at the bottom end of the table. Those two reds, one close to the cushion, one about a ball off. Yeah, he'd expect them to be his last two balls, but it definitely needs to be so careful. His position's got to be A1. But, we, you know, we've seen Dean. He's, he's stepped up the pace a little bit. Yes, he has played a few loose shots in this match, but he seems to have settled a little bit more now. This is a bit of a key positional shot. He, he, he's desperate to make sure he's got the right angle here. He's only going to get one shot at this. He's moving. There's a slight angle. Probably not, if anything, not enough. What you don't want to be doing is leaving a, a sharp cut. Playing it with a bit of trace side look. Oh, he's played that well. He has played that well. Very well controlled from Dean Shields. I mean, the one that he's going to drift into the cushion now, it all depends on how far that cue ball bounces off that top cushion. Needs to drop this in dead weight. He's still a little higher than he wanted. Does he play this for a tracer side again? But he needs some very good cueing. Just wants to kill the pace of the cue ball as much as he can. Oh, he's done exactly as good as he could, I think. So, no, it's not an easy pop, but well, I'm expecting Dean Shields to make sure he gets... Yeah, he's going to be drifting away from the black ball. It's all about pace control. He really doesn't want this cue ball drifting up table too far. Be just trying to drop this in. And there we are. Exactly that, dropping it in. This as well, pretty simple black into the right centre to level this match up. There you see it, we're into a best of nine. Dean Shields back in this match, 3 3 all, just when we thought it was going to start to get away with him, but it's all down to this Gareth Hibbert break. That's the reason. I mean, look at that, unforgivable. Got some great power, but ball off the table. Just try to give it a little bit more, didn't he? Three apiece now. That shot there, that he just drops it in. Perfectly played. Perfectly executed. Three each. Dean Shields to break again. We've already seen he's been crunching this break. Definitely breaking the better of the two players at the moment. Is that going to continue? Frame 7. 
Olympian shield break. Scores are tied. Three frames all. Time running. Another crunchy break from Dean Shields and his balls flying in everywhere. Yeah, wow. another monster break there. Start the clock, please. They're just giving themselves up, aren't they? They really are. I mean, if anything, hasn't got an easy opening part this yellow, you'd expect him to get it into this centre pocket. In the bottom half of the pocket, but it's down. You know, there's no chance of that missing. And now he's got a chance of taking the lead in this match. He's just looking at the ball in the middle of the table. Not afraid to leave distance, is he? he really Such not. a good shot maker. I mean, that's, I mean, he has got an angle to run down, etc. A little bit more than he possibly wanted, but surely there's not a problem here. <coughs> I mean, he's straight down to it. Really, he's not not overthinking this shot. Nicely executed got the ball back out in the open and he's going to leave himself options here at which pocket he takes his black in so looking good now he's getting ahead in this match played it well has played it well confidently well as well Dean Shields 4-3 ahead now against Gareth Hibbert has Gareth Hibbert sat in that chair what would be going through his mind because his break's been absolutely awful what does he do next he just needs to tighten up on the break, doesn't he? Um, the ball flew off the table. He didn't quite catch them head on as he wanted to. The ball was up in the air. Do you text him with coffee? Do you move the cue ball? Do you try something different? Um, what do you do? I think you just concentrate on hitting the ball square, head on. Maybe take a little bit of, bit of speed off it. Yeah, I mean, one thing with Gareth, he, he sometimes doesn't change things. He, he he tries and keeps with it and just grins and bears it. I mean, it's a lot to grin and bear, it really is. Especially when there's so much at stake here in the Isle of Man. All that muddy, all them ranking points are all so important to every player. Ben Taylor Ferrante getting these tightened up again. Gareth the one positive, the sorry, sorry, Mark. Well, Gareth Hibbert, we know what he's going to do. He's going to crunch these. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, the one thing you could, would, you'd have to say about both players is that they're getting plenty of movement when they're breaking. So the packs are splitting. Yes, they dry sometimes, but the balls tend to open. Yeah, and that's what's happened again. And, uh, I mean, he didn't connect. It's probably not his best connection on the break there, but at least he's kept the white ball on the table. He's not done that in the last three frames that he's broke off. But he, these aren't easy. First glance, I suppose you've got to say yellows. Only, got, only because of the red near the black and the red near these two yellows near this middle pocket. But they're, even the yellows, they're... They're not great. But one shot could open it all up. So the yellow on the left hand side of the table, near the middle, does it pass the red into the middle? I mean, the, the overhead camera suggests not. Uh, that camera angle that we're looking at currently, possibly. I mean, it's so hard to say. I mean, look at that. It doesn't even look like it goes, does it? No, you'd want to be behind it if it did, I think. Yeah, you really would. I mean, he, he is behind it now, so... Yeah. Oh, he's not... He's, the way he stayed down on his shot there suggests he d hasn't got the cue ball where he wanted. 
Is he starting to feel a little bit of the nerves? Is he too straight? Is he seeing a bit of a winning line? This is a big frame to the Dean Shields. Remember, it's 3 1 down in this match. This is to go 5 3 ahead. Great pot. Great pot indeed. But still not in prime position. And that yellow that we've been talking about, and the one that you've been talking about, where does it go? Apart from the top left. Well, not many other options for it, is there? So, where's he going with this? He's trying to hold the cue ball. Them two yellows, they must pass into the top left-hand corner. Does that mean all these yellows are going in that top left-hand corner? Yeah, he's looking at coming off the yellow. Bumping into the red. Oh, he's not got his cannon in his... his I don't know, he's just got a bit too much into that. And even this yellow in the middle of the table, it hasn't got too many options for pockets. Oh, you'd have fancied him to hit the red there. Yeah, and that is going to change his route. And that means the cue ball could be doing a few more miles than it's going to be doing. Oh, nicely controlled. Just that yellow pass into the left centre. Wow, well, I'm not sure on the overhead camera angle, but it must do. It must do. Big moments in this match, this is. What a big clearance this will be from Dean Shields. Yeah, he could get it just into the near side of the jaw. So, this black open up two frame lead. He's taken four on the bounce then. He's got it. Five, three ahead. Two frame lead now. And he's going to be breaking in the next as well. Momentum, definitely with Dean Shields. No doubt about that. I mean, this break here from Gareth has struck it okay. But just didn't get a ball. Not really too much threat in the pocket. That one in the middle, that was about it. But Dean Shields held himself together because it was an important clearance, that. Some of the shots that he executed in that, that wasn't easy under that pressure. Oh, he's up to it. He's now up to a 5-3 lead. Dean Shields to break next. Can he open up a three-frame lead? Five, five frames on the bounce against former world champion Gareth Hibbert. We didn't think it was possible. Must be feeling good at this point. Two-frame lead. Race to eight. Frame nine. Dean Shields to break. Leading five frames to three. So Dean Shields needing more of the same. Another fantastic break there. But unfortunately, it's dry. Can't hit them much better than that. And look at these yellows. Called for his extension, as most players do, or many players do. Early in the frame. Just wants to make sure he knows which way he's going. Plan his route. So, first ball, taking the yellow long. And he's elected to try and move the two most difficult balls early in the clearance. But he's not quite landed where he wanted to be. So, he's elevating. And that, well, he's taking the pocket, second prize. Just out of position on that yellow. Landed too low. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad outcome, but you know, what's 13 conjuring up here? At the moment, it's Dean who has the momentum. He's trying to leave himself an angle to clear that top right and pocket. Is he on that red that's on the balk line? Looks tight. If he is, expect that top right and pocket to be cleared. I don't think he is. He is now. He's made sure he's on it. So he doesn't have to do a lot with his cue ball. What he needs to make sure is that yellow pots at the very least. He just wants to hold the cue ball if he can, which he has done. Played that way. Great well. shot, yeah. So the two awkward balls now available into the middle. And he's opened this frame right up. Yeah, and you feel like he's going to take both of them right now. Oh, he's trying to get back onto the other one. No, nothing wrong with the way that he's going about these. Every player has their own patterns, etc. And uh, all depending on what angle he, he has when he gets behind the shot. And, uh, he's played that okay. This will make things a hell of a lot easier now. Just needs to make sure he gets the right angle on his last ball into the centre pocket. Just wants to come away from the cushion. I mean, does he play this on and off the top cushion? Maybe, possibly. I don't know what angle he's got there. Looks like he's got an angle to come on and off the top cushion, but does he need to? So is that all that thing that is going through his mind now? Pinch a bit, oh, he's got plenty of money just to pinch a bit of the pocket, but played it at a good pace. Just kept it simple. Don't think too much about what you've, you've got to do. Just do the simple thing. Just drop this red in the middle. Natural angle. He wants to be up. Well, he's on it. But he would have liked to have gone a bit further up table there. Yeah, and is it that ball thicker into the pocket? That's where it went to the bottom part of the pocket. And that's why it's a little bit... Off the position on his black ball, but it's made no problems at all. 6-3 now. Five frames on the bounce, Andy Richardson. This guy's got the momentum now. He has. He's looking very confident now. Looked anxious at the start of the match, it has to be said. The boys played well. Yeah, and this frame was a good example. You know, the cover in the pocket sometimes in black ball rules isn't the way. I mean, I mean, would Gareth prefer to have potted that with the pace he played it? I think he was just trying to contain it. And he, he's got punished. And that's what can happen at this black ball rule set. Good clearance from Dean Shields. So, what's going through Gareth? If it's mine. The Not break. showing much there, is he? <laughs> the break. I mean, he, he, you feel like he's got to take this frame off his break to get any momentum going. Let's move the cue ball slightly. Is that going to help? Much better break. Black ball's in, is it? No, the yellow's in, though. And he's on a yellow. Well, that's... Um, well, it was a, pretty much the last roll of it. I thought the black was going to drop. So did I. I mean, yeah, he's on a yellow, Andy. I suppose the yellow that's probably the hardest is the one on the bolt line in the middle. Let's try to open it up by moving that red. And great shot. Very clever thinking. But he's going to have to go up table. And then he's going to have to drift down table. And again, this is a similar scenario to Dean Shields about making sure you leave the right angle because you're going to get one chance at it. Deciding to go down table now. Looks a bit short of pace to me. Yeah, it's not where he wanted to be. And this momentum swing we're on about. I mean, you can just tell that Gareth's not been at the table that often to get this momentum going. And that's what we're seeing. Extension call. I mean, the shot here, does he take the, the tougher yellow of the two to try and cannon the red? 
It's it, a possibility. That's the only You can option. hold on that red, as you say. But if he takes it on and it hangs, he's handing the table over. And at, at the score as it stands, he, he can't really afford to take the risk, I don't think. Yeah, when we saw what Dean Shields did last frame, this has to go. Has to go. It has gone. Brilliant shot from Gareth Ebert. Like a red ball, those drifted into a bit of an area. It's a bit of a blocker. This will need to be some shot. I mean, does he play the in, in between the gap of the two reds? Is that the best way? Does he screw? So he's tried to play. Well, he's short of pace by about a foot. I don't know what he's got on here. Has he got the cut back on? That yellow on the ball line, does that cut back into the top left-hand pocket? With side, I mean, if if it does, the white ball's going to be travelling. From the overhead, it doesn't appear as if it does. I don't think it does. And can he whip it in with a better side? That's the, the question now. Oh, oh, no, 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 no definitely here. not. Looking at that one, it looked tighter on the... Uh, so he'll be kicking at this, yep. And he had no option there, did he? He didn't. And he's handed the table to Dean Shields. And he's going to have an easy opening pot. Fuck. Once he's got this red out of the top half of the table, if he does, there's no problems. Does Dean want to go all out for it? Oh, he's playing containing. He's left this yellow, though, I think. Awful shot. That really is a bad shot. I'm just saying it how it is. That's an awful oh, shot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could have gone for the clearance there. The yellow and red are planting to the corner. He could have played red on sort of yellow, yellow red at some point. Yeah, but what he's, uh, he's also done, he's just left him the, the great yeah. angle as well. I, t well, I think that was a case there. If you, you know, you've got to be aggressive. Yeah. And especially with the momentum he's got. I mean, I don't get it. He's been playing some brilliant stuff. He's just trying to really tighten up a game and uh, Gareth's punished him. And uh, it's Dean Shields, he's going to have to learn from that. Gift, an absolute gift there for Gareth Hibbert. Dean Shields, what was going through your mind there, son? Either way, you've got to get it to the back of it now. Get back into it. It's going to be Dean Shields to break. Better break there from Gareth. Didn't think he was going to pot a ball. The next minute, that yellow there just drifts past that black ball. And this was way short of pace, that shot there. That was a good shot, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good shot, but that red going in that in that area just made this positional shot. I thought there maybe he would, have, he would have drawn back to the side rail to open the angle out. That was when Dean knew what he'd done by leaving Gareth that simple clearance in the end. And what a difference yeah. the score makes now. Yeah, it does. 6-4. 7-3, 6-4, huge difference. Getting six frames to four. Time running. Needs to forget all about it. Looking for a good break once again. Not as much power in that break, I didn't think. I think he hit them OK. But yeah. once again, we've come up dry. And have we got a momentum shift change here? It makes you wonder. I mean, it's not, not a great layout. I mean, can he, can he get through to an opening pot? Is he looking at red onto yellow plant? Oh, that looks horrible. It's not the first shot you want, is it? No, it's not. I don't think you can put any of them into the left centre. That he's closest to. But either way, I, mean, I suppose if he does take this on, it opens this frame on. This is an ultra attacking shot. He's using his extension, so that suggests to me he's made his mind up. Weren't easy. Far from easy, that. Has to be said, he's been uh, slightly fortunate that he's left the ball scrappy anyway. Yeah, he's left uh, Dean Shields uh, a yellow here, but what can he do with them yellows in the uh, top corner there that's together? 
Does one of them pop? That's the question. It may do. Now? It may do. If it does, that's an error from Gareth Hibbert. Well, it does, doesn't it? Certainly does. And now you can't see any problems here for Dean of getting on the hill. One frame away from getting into the quarterfinals himself. He'll just be mapping his route out, looking to see which ball he wants to take last to get onto the black. Yeah, nice little control pot into the centre there. <coughs> I mean, is it the one at the bottom half of the table that he gets on the black with? It's possible. Because this one near the uh, the left centre, that's one of them shots he needs to be directly behind, but and that'll be his second to last ball for me. So play this one, one into the... Well, I suppose you can do either. Either that one into the centre and play one in the top corner. It, it, it could have gone either way. So this one, this one just needs to a little bit of care and attention. Oh, he is going the way I thought he was. So directly behind it, played it lovely. Played it lovely. I think that was his original plan to go that way. I mean, yeah, he had to bounce the cue ball on and off the cushion because he weren't in the didn't have the correct angle, but he has now. So we already seen him miss a bit of a nervy black in this match. Don't want to put too much pressure on Dean Shields, but that could possibly happen again because that black isn't easy. How close can he get to it? He's elected not to get close to it because he was obviously straight on it, but he's got a shot. This is a tough black. He's a good curious though, let's remember that. Great shot. Great shot. Very good shot there from Dean Shields and he's up there, up there with the task like getting on to the uh, the river, the seventh frame, that's what he was aiming for. And seven four up against former world champion Gareth Hibbert is exactly what he needed. I mean, it's a pretty steady clearance, that Andy, wasn't it? It weren't easy. Weren't Things easy. Gone wrong. Good black. There's no gimme. And he knew the importance of it. Puts him on the hill. Yeah, one frame away from getting into the quarterfinals. Gareth Hibbert, his break worked last time. He seems to have uh, started to keep the white ball on the table. Is that going to continue? Frame 12. He's just, if he does, you know, clear up off this break, he's just got to sit and wait and hope Dean makes a mistake. Good break, bit of a loose cue ball. But guess what? It's dry. And we've had some dry breaks in this match. We've had some dry breaks over the course of today as well. I mean, there's some power in those breaks. Certainly is. Dean Shields, is this the opportunity he's been waiting for? They don't look bad, Andy, these don't. I mean, every ball's got a pocket, whether you're reds or yellows. <coughs> Just that black ball's fell a little bit awkward again, but, you know, we've seen what Dean cleared up last time. There's no reason why he can't clear these up either. Just one awkward yellow, you'd have to say. But there's a ball next to it. Every chance of moving it at some point. Seeing the closing moments now of this match. Can you shot this one? Played it okay. I mean, it's drifted a little bit further than he wanted, Andy, hasn't it? It has. 
Is that a little bit more tension in his arm than he wanted, do you think? Got a bit too much into it. He maybe caught it a little harder than he wanted to do. Close to the cushion. I mean, if he was behind it, he could possibly play it onto the yellow over the pocket if he needed to. Oh, that was a good shot. He took the Under hardest the one yeah. of the two. I mean, the only problem with this clearance is going down, then up, then down, then up again. And <laughs> when you've got your cue ball and a bit of elastic, sometimes it can go wrong. But that's what he's going to have to be faced with now. I mean, I don't think he can... Um, I don't think he can get into this cue ball to try and get the yellow off the cushion. I don't think there's any point of that. He just needs to believe in his potting. I mean, as I said, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs, upstairs. It's. Uh, I mean, can, can he take the one down the rail now? I mean, it's definitely the tougher of the two. Is there any point? I don't think so. I think he takes one over the pocket now. I thought he may have taken this one last shot and then played the, the plant, but he sees it differently out there. He has been queuing OK, some of these down the rail. You know, that black would have given him a little bit more confidence. So he's going to have two tough balls now to get into the quarter-final. He's not frightened of leaving distance. I've noticed that in this match. No, he's not. He believes in his potting ability. And uh, that shot there tells you <laughs> the reason why. So more of the same. Similar shot, more pressure. But you fancy him. You certainly do fancy him. And Dean Shields safely into the quarterfinals. It's not been the uh, the cleanest of matches. I mean, there was a lot of momentum, you know, where it stopped, etc. Didn't it for both players? I think the talking point was probably the uh, all the dry breaks that Gareth Hibbert was getting and the, the way that he couldn't control the cue ball. But over and all, Dean Shields played well, played pretty solid. Looked like he cued the better out of the two players. Good shot making, I thought. You know, he wasn't frightened to leave distance. He didn't mind leaving a black down the rail from distance. Believed in himself. Yeah, he certainly did. And uh, I think once he did settle down into the match, both players took a, a little while. Uh, whether that was down to the, the, you know, the way that the balls fell, and that, that that's possible. But Gareth Hibbert, you know, he's too good of a player not to see bounce back at some point, and it could well be this weekend. There is another event for him, the Open. You know, we'll either start tonight or tomorrow morning. So we'll uh, we'll have some uh, feedback on that. But let's go and talk to Dean Shields now. And who's talking Dean Shields? It's our very own Kevin Barton. Thanks, Mark. And I'm here with Shootout Shields, who... Um, Dean, uh, tell us about that performance. I mean, uh, it was pretty flawless, really. Uh, aside from the flaws, <laughs> yeah, I think I've made two glaring errors, uh, and then I think that's just focused me again. I've, I've seemed mm. to kick on as soon as I made the mistake at two one, where I've, uh, I've I've gifted a frame to Gaz. I've, I've then kicked on, and I mm. think I won four or five on the spin from there. So, yeah, it just seemed to refocus me every time I was I played a loose shot. In the balls, I mean, you know, you left yourself some tricky finishes, but it seemed no problem. You it looked like you're queuing really well, really confident. Is that is that how it's feeling? Yeah, it's more a case of just, I say, confidence. You know, mental attitude. It's like um, I'm I'm always been positive and potting balls. It's just you know backing myself against the best players. And I'm thinking, you know, I've got the game. I just need to I just mm. need to do it when it matters. And when I got the chances, I'm I'm never afraid to take a finish on. It's just you know backing yourself to get them. And um, and Gaz is obviously who you won the World Doubles title yeah. with, hence the, the nickname Shootout, yeah. uh, that memorable shootout. Um, do, you, do you find it more awkward playing playing Gaz, who you know very well and very close to, or is it, is it just once you get out in the arena, it's just I business? Think it, in some aspects, yeah, but in some aspects, no. Like, I, I'm, I'm quite friend, good friends with Gaz anyway, um, so maybe the... The intensity hasn't really been there, which is why I think that when I've missed and I've I managed to refocus, that's helped. Because sometimes I, I get into games with guys where uh, it's more like we're just having a, a little a knot between us, you know, rather than as serious as it would be with someone else. So I think you know to to try and stay focused with guys is something that I have I have struggled with in the past. But mm. yeah, it's uh, I always enjoy playing him because he plays a nice open style, same as me. So mm. the, the the games are usually quite open and quite quick. It certainly was. Um, 
quarterfinals in the mm -hmm. quarterfinals now getting yep. to the uh, you know the uh, deep in the, the tournament again. That, um, <laughs> that final tonight um, you know what would it mean to you to, to lift the title and, and finish the season you know with with the yeah the big paycheck but you know the title of the uh, title the yeah this uh, it, it mean everything like I've, I've been close a few times and it's not something that's sort of been eating away at me but it would be nice to get the monkey off my back you know I've been to three finals now it is so yeah, it would be nice to win one, and what better way than to win it at the uh, the biggest one? Dean, thanks for your time. Good Thank luck for the rest of the tournament. Thank you. Thanks Cheers. a lot. So Dean Shields takes his place uh, quite impressively. Mark Pickworth into the quarterfinals. Uh, he said before he's lost in three finals. He's knocking on the door. Could be this the time where the door finally opens for him? Yeah, yeah I mean, it could do. He seems to be queuing very well. I mean, uh, Will's very... Um, we, we said quite a lot about his cue action in, in the commentary, me and Andy Richardson. And, uh, you saw some of the glimpses there, and he, and, he, and he did it consistently throughout. And to do it against a player that he's got multiple respect for in Gareth Hibbert, you know, they won the world title together, didn't they, in the doubles 2015. And uh, and, uh, and, he, and he showed some brilliant glimpses of uh, his, his great cue action. And if he continues to uh, deliver some of that, you just never, never know that he can go on. He's, I mean, he's, it looks like he's going to have a tough match in the quarterfinals because uh, Mark Farns just one frame away from getting in that quarterfinal, so that'll be his next match up. And we know how Mark Farns has been playing. That could be another incredible match. And uh, Gaz, a word about Gaz be a little bit disappointed. The break, obviously, you know, glaring errors on the break. Yeah, I mean, Gareth Sibbett has won pretty much everything in the game. You know, he's been about for 105 years or whatever it is. I mean, he's made of granite. We've always said that. He's, he's some sort of Iron Man expert. I don't know. I don't know what he's made of, to be honest. He's, I mean, he absolutely amazes me and amazes, no doubt, everybody that watches him on the TV. Uh, but Gareth Sibbett, I'm sure he'll bounce back. He's too good of a player not to be bouncing back. How he continues to deliver at a very high level is absolutely outstanding to him. And uh, he, he'll be very critical of the way he's played today the way the breaks just never went for him he, and he, he, he struggled to control his break and that might have been the difference in this match I think if he'd have got his break working from the very start it could have been a very different outcome I mean the white was uh, flying off the table what what do you put that down to is that just the extra pressure and trying to give the break a little bit more or is it a technical technical error what? yeah and I think you've got to give Dean Shields some uh, credit for that you know because he put Gareth a little under a bit of pressure um, and he just never went away from him and, um, and I think that's what happened Gareth tried to put a little bit extra in his break because what he, he's obviously been practising on or whatever he's been routining on etc wasn't working so he, you sometimes try a little bit extra a little bit different take a little bit off but add a little bit on but he seemed to be adding a little bit on he's, there's a lot more tension in his arm and nothing was flowing through for him and that, and that was probably the difference mm. Well Dean Shields takes his place in the quarterfinals and we have got the first of the quarterfinals coming up and what what a battle this is going to be. Scotland v Wales. These two have got history. Mark Pickworth, tell yeah, us they, about the history. Yeah, and this isn't the only first Scottish Wales clash we've got in the quarterfinals. We've got another one as well, haven't we? Craig Marsh and Ball. That's going to be an absolute cracker. But Liam Dunster, the world champion, the number one professional player against Corey Reese. Remember, he won the last pro event at Newcastle. So Corey Reese is in some good form. Remember, Corey Reese is the current Champions Cup winner and he beat Liam Dunster in that brilliant grand final, which obviously had Gareth Hibbert in it as well. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting matchup as well. One thing I know is Corey Reese has got a very good record against Liam Dunster and out of all the professional players, Corey Reese has probably got the best record against Liam Dunster. And is that going to continue? Liam Dunst has been in scintillating form. Mm. He's dropped three frames so far in two rounds and, and <laughs> he looks absolutely unplayable. Um, Corey Reese is going to have to pull out some some real great stops. He's going to have to make sure his break's working. But we know what Corey Reese can do. And he, if he can do it against Liam Dunster once again, then uh, that's a credit to him. And you know he can go on to win another title. Yeah, well, I can't wait to watch this one. It's Scotland v Wales. Settle yourself in. This is going to be a classic. Over to you, Andy. Thanks very much, Kevin. What a match we have in prospect here. Liam Dunster. It's got to be said he's been playing almost perfect pool against Corey Reese, As Mark alluded to... He's got a good record against Liam. But this is going to be a big ask. What a match this could be. Liam, looking as usual, very composed self. Just waiting for the balls to be racked up. 
can't wait for this one. So, here we go. Corey needs to break. And he needs to make these breaks count if he's going to have a good chance in this match. And I'm joined in the commentary box now by Kevin Barton. Kevin, welcome. Hello, Andrew. Good to uh, good to see you. I think we've met before. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, about 40 years ago. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a match we've got here, Kevin. What a match. Yeah, and as, as Matt Pickworth said um, when we were just doing the intro, these two have got history. They have had some titanic tussles over the past 12, 18 months and it has generally been Corey who has come out on top in those battles. So we saw what form Liam Dunster was in last night. Can he keep that level up? And what has Corey got? Oh dear. Well... You can see what he's got. He's not got a lot. I mean, look, he, he played a good ball into the middle. He had to try and move something, but that looked slightly dangerous, didn't it? It did look high risk. You know, whether he, he just caught the uh, the yellow into the centre a little bit thick, maybe he was trying to hit it a little bit thinner. But either way, the black went down. Unfortunately, it, that's not a skill shot in these rules, unless that's your last yellow. And uh, that is frame away, and uh, Liam Dunster gets a frame on the board, and he's not even chalked his cue yet. No, and the last thing you want to do with Liam in this form is give him a frame start. Yeah, I know Christmas is round the corner, but it's uh, a little bit too early, Corey, I think, for uh, giving out presents. So, just got to forget about it. And he'll be praying for a dry break here. Corey, that is, not Liam. So Liam breaks from the side rail, but it's effective for him. Yeah, his break was uh, really working well yesterday against Robert Stephen. Robert never got a look in on the Liam break. Yeah, that was some performance in that match. So, ball down. Stays at the table. The only balls you can see are yellows. And he's just taking his time as he does. Mapping out where he wants to land. Yeah, is he going to be forced into pulling out a big shot on the yellows? Or is he going to play the yellow red plant into the centre? What is going through that robotic mind of the world number one? What's he got up his sleeve? What a shot. What a shot. Very difficult opening shot, that. I thought he may be playing the plant into the middle. But he's taking it long. And I just love watching him. It's the composure. Yeah, every shot gets the same amount of respect. Even when there's only two seconds on the clock, he doesn't look hurried. Now, Mark and myself, we were talking about that yesterday. He, he manages the clock so well. 
so many players as the clock counts down they, they sort of start to they panic and they maybe play something that they, they didn't really want to play they weren't too sure of Liam always looks like he knows exactly how many seconds he's got left nothing changes in his technique important do you think that that first frame might be in the context of this match when uh, when uh, the hands are being shaken at the end well it, it could have a big part to play uh, as has already been said Corey has a good record against Liam so if he could have taken an early lead you know put a little bit of pressure on him it would have made a big difference and to kick the black in like he did effectively giving him one start it's just going to make him even more confident. It's just a little shot like that that Liam's played. It's just ju it made that look so easy. He's judged the contact absolutely perfect. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's ma almost making a mockery of this game sometimes. He's making it look so easy. I said that yesterday. He, 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 I, I can imagine people who don't play the game watching him play and thinking, well, that's easy. How come everybody else doesn't get them all in all the time? <laughs> His pattern play is just so good. Very rarely moves the, moves the cue ball unless he needs to. Yeah, you, you never see him hit a ball in anger, really. It's all, uh, it's all meticulous it precision. Is. But when he's asked the question, if he needs to pull the big shot out, boy, does he pull him out. I mean, he's, he's flicked that round there off two cushions. All right, he's left himself a little bit hampered. But just the ease and the timing on these shots. That's years of practice and natural ability. It is. And the mental strength. His composure. And under pressure. Something to behold. And he's fouled there, I think. Well, he's got one visit. Yep. Queuing over the red. Uncharacteristic error. Yeah, big let off there for uh, Corey Reese. He must have been fearing 2-0 there. But yeah, it looked a little bit awkward on the overhead on the queuing. Obviously, it, uh, he tried to dig a little bit too far into the white and he's obviously just... Uh, Glance to red. So, first shot, free shot. Moves his difficult ball down table. Takes the bag. Everything's open for him now. And if he can capitalise on this, the error in the first frame, get himself level. Settling back down again. Yeah, and that's the first the first mistake from Liam that we've seen in this year. Twelve, <laughs> <laughs> certainly twelve frames this weekend that we've seen on the street. But yeah, you're probably not far wrong this year. I mean, since he won the World Championship, you know, it's fair to say he's not been at his best. You know, he's got his new business, and obviously that is taking his priority and his time. But even his is not quite his best. He's still <laughs> better than better than, most. than most people's. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, but he said, you know, I've been putting the practice in. This is you know, this is the biggest tour event of the year. It's double prize money. It's it's a nice it's a nice holiday, business class. Ten thousand pounds to the winner, and uh, all these guys are here to win it. Struck with confidence. Yeah, how well's he queued that? I mean, you can quite easily just decelerate on those, and the white only moves two inches. So, black down, one apiece. The error on the black in the first frame. Distant memory, but there we go, look. Always on the cards. 
Do you think, Kevin, the fact that Corey has such a good record against Liam, do you think that that maybe sort of, I know things don't get in his head particularly um, like they do maybe some players, but that's got to have some bearing on this match. Well, it, yeah, I mean, Liam is human. You know, he's, is he? he, he <laughs> believe it or not. And we're just going to see the uh, the shot, I think, coming up on the highlights reel. Yeah, just they see, you know, the, the spirit and the sportsmanship that these guys play to call the foul on himself even before the referee could get the words out of his mouth. It's just like a natural instinct. Um, so, you know, when we see that in our sport and it's really commendable. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, um, you know, Liam knows that um, Corey's got a good record against him. Maybe that might pump him up a little bit more, or I don't know. But I mean, Corey has got a good record against most people over the past 12, 18 months. You know, he's um, he's one of these players that has gone from a very good player to, you know, he's getting to that elite, elite category now. Oh. Well, the white was on its way anyway, but the, but the, the cue of the object ball made sure as well. Yeah, you've got to say that's an error, really. If you get kicked in off, you get kicked in off, you can count yourself unlucky sometimes, but if you're screwing straight back into a pocket, yeah, it got kicked in, but it was going in anyway, as you said. And they're the kinds of errors that he can't afford to make in this match. He needs to keep the pressure on. Yeah, three frames so far and three errors. I mean, that is... Um Extension. Is that just uh, reflecting the, uh, the sort of tension in this match? Very possibly. The balls are splitting very well, I've noticed today on the table. Yeah, I mean, look at these reds. It's fair to say we've had a fair few uh, in-off breaks wise, but uh, the balls are splitting really well. Surprised at that shot. What, what, what do you think is going through his mind here, Andy? I don't know. Just potted the red to clear the way for the yellows. Leave the yellow down the rail from the black into the into the centre pocket, pocket at the pocket, end. Yeah, I would say so. Certainly, his intention. That's the trademark. Drop the ball in. Very limited movement of the cue ball. As little as need be. Just strikes the ball. It's so clean. Joy to watch. Yeah, I think Corey will be even more disappointed after pinching that last frame after the Dunster error. He'd really want to capitalise on that. And uh, that poor break has just stopped that first bit of momentum that he'd got in, in this match. So, played it well. Yellow into the corner. He's got a nice little angle. Stun over towards the rail. Doesn't want to be straight on the last yellow. Little angle, bring it away from the cushion. And it should be black into the middle. Slight angle, as intended. to take the lead and as you said Kevin every shot the same amount of attention same delivery focus Black then to move into a 2 1 lead, and then it goes. And the world champ moves 2 1 ahead 
in this race to eight frames for a place in the semi-finals of the 2022 IPA Professional Grand Finals. Just like that. That's how easy it is. <laughs> you see the frame in 20 seconds. Referee John Attridge, first time here at the IPA. Great to have him here. Known John a long time. So Liam, once again, breaking from the side rail. You don't see too many players break from there, Kevin, do you, on tour? I think there's actually more players breaking from the side. You know, people like, I mean, Boyle's always been the master of the cut break. But I think we've seen more and more people break, break from the side. Are you a fan? No. I'm not either. No, I don't like it. Um, I, I, I like the break box idea. Got to be honest. I like to uh, I like to see who can give them the biggest biff. I mean, uh, from my perspective, I think 15 balls. You know, if they're racked tightly, which they always are, you want to be in the head ball with as much force as possible and control. You want to get movement. But having said that, I commentated on Mark Boyle's match, and boy, does he hit those balls from the side. Yeah, I think I think Boyle has mastered. Um, I do the uh, the cut break. He hits it harder than anybody else. Um, you know, if you're playing it down the pub, you fancy having a go at that. Don't make sure there's nobody stood stood near the side of the table. It's certainly a definite skill, and uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting that. Different players have got a different view on the break and whether you need a break cue. Some do, some don't. It's um, you know, it's just personal choice and what's between your ears, really, isn't it? What, uh, what that's telling you. Yeah, it's each to their own. You do what works for you. I know back in the day you used to see a lot of players, they would start off breaking from the head, you know, hitting the head ball on, uh, head on, and then if they were struggling, they'd go to the cup break. But uh, you now do see players sort of begin the match, cut breaking. And as I said, Mark Boyle is phenomenal. The pace he gets on the ball and the control. Certainly a different game when we were playing Andy. And, you know, you, we broke like snooker players. <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, wanted two balls to come out of the pack and that was it. You didn't want any more. We were horrified if something dropped in. <laughs> yeah. There was never any danger of anything <laughs> dropping in. Uh, things have evolved, as they thankfully, always do. Thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. I mean, the level of, of play this weekend, you know, it's been a while for me, but noticeable. Phenomenal talent, phenomenal standard all the way through. As I've said several times, strength in depth. I mean, really, if you were here and you were watching some of the matches, I get the... Uh, the honour of being able to commentate. I've got ringside views, but I do spend time in the uh, in the other hall watching the other players. And the amateur game, even the amateur game, phenomenal standard. Yeah. The ladies. And those uh, amateur semi-finals are taking place as we speak, and we'll see the amateur final later on tonight. So. Just landed a little bit awkward there, Kev, do you think? I think he's okay. But I don't think he's going to be able to do much with the cue ball on this one, so he may not end up being in perfect position. And two frames ago, similar position, fouled the ball. Will that be in his head a little bit? The answer is no, I think, there. <laughs> So this, if he takes it long, it's not a gimme. I think he's just going to drop the one in the middle, surely dead weight, and just leave a little bit of angle for the one into the other centre. 
for the black, as long as he doesn't drift, stick behind the yellow. No, he's, he's going, going your on. way, he's going your way. Clock's ticking. But it's still hit the middle of the pocket. Ball over the middle pocket. What you would consider to be a straightforward black. And we're looking at a potential 3-1 lead. And Corey really doesn't want to let Liam lead out in front here. You know, how hard does he dare hit this one? Because sometimes they can pop out. Again, pure timing. Got the screw back off the white ball and, and hardly touched that. All about the timing. Bridging over that ball again. No mistakes from the number one ranked professional player, Liam the Duster. Dunster. Just seen a rerun here. That was a good shot, wasn't it, when he was hampered? That was the key to the winning that frame, I think. There we go. I think he played that frame a little bit quicker. I think that was about 15 seconds. So, Liam leads 3-1. Frame five, four rings to break. Trailing three frames to one. Time running. Breaking from the centre. Head ball. Full on. Controlled power is what he's looking for. That's what he's delivered. He's parked the white fantastically well there. Not really split as well as they have been doing, unfortunately. And he did it though as well, didn't he? Yeah, that was a fantastic break. Plenty of power, plenty of <laughs> control as well. I mean, that white spun back and didn't move. But I think he's going to like, look at these yellows. They've all got pockets. They're all nicely connected. So, um, see how it goes about the finish. Can he take it out with the same precision as the duster? I think we've generally got some quite poor nicknames in the IPA ranks. The duster. You're not a, not a fan? <sighs> no, not really. I think um, it's not one of the worst. Crowy. <laughs> For Andy Crowsdale, I've got a big thing about that. I mean, that's that's lazy. Does he like it though? He's happy to change it. I think oh, he well. just wants me to come up with something, to do something a poll. else. I think we've done that poll. I can't remember the answers, but it's it's a Can bit we repeat lazy. Them? <laughs> <laughs> and not all of them. It's a bit of a it's a bit lazy. Isn't it? It's like Marshy, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people got called Marshy, but he is the Buddha. He is the Buddha. Did you have a nickname uh, back in the day? Uh, I did. Many moons ago, yeah. The Rocket it was. The Rocket. Rocket Richardson. And then I famously played uh, in the Moscone a long, long, long time ago. And there were three Rockets. <laughs> One American, myself and Ronnie O'Sullivan. So I obviously became something else and I went out to be the Torpedo, which I immediately, after I finished the match, said, can we just drop that, please? <laughs> just call me Andy. The torpedo. The torpedo. I don't know where they dug that up from. The surgeon, is it? Still the surgeon? No, not for me, no. No, more of a toilet cleaner. <laughs> you were the surgeon, I remember. <laughs> that was uh, many, many years ago. I didn't choose mine. I was uh, I worked for somebody do doing exhibitions. It was Alan Bartlett who uh, instigated this tour back in the day. In fact, that was before Ronnie was called the Rocket. That's how old I am. <laughs> he's undercut that one a little bit, Corey. This was um, pretty straightforward, but I think now he's 
You can't just drop this in. I think you might have to just bring the white off the rail and take the other yellow. Can he, can he flick it in dead weight? Maybe a little bit of bottom left-hand side. If not, as you're saying, he could, he could go out off the side rail, couldn't he? Oh, there you go. He could. He could kill it. He had a better angle than we thought. Yeah. Anyway, back to the game, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a good response from Corey. Good response. Yeah, it needed as well. No problem for the man from Wales. And uh, he gets back into this match 3 2 down. Interesting the break, uh, breaking from the front. And I'm thinking about the other Welsh players, the Craig Marsh, Ben Davis, they all break from the front as well. It seems to be a Scotland like the cut break and Wales like the front on. Yeah. Not I sure what English do, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't play anymore, as you know, so. I wouldn't have a clue. But I was always a fan of, of uh, hitting the head ball head on for me. If I struggled, yeah, I would try the cut break, but. More through a lack of confidence, I think, than uh, thinking it was the most effective. So 3 2, still in the match. Frame 6, Dunstan break, the three frames in 2, time running. So meticulous as ever when he places that cue ball. And then it's quite. Ironic, <laughs> takes, takes 10 seconds to place it with his hand, then moves it with his cue. <laughs> but that is absolutely micro millimetre, exactly where he wants it. And just the two yellows this time. Ooh, but that's landed a. Can he put that yellow into the, into the corner pocket? If he can, he's in a little bit of bother. It's not clear from the overhead. I think, does it pass, Kevin, do you think? I, I think he can get to yeah, it. He can. Yeah, he, he can, can yeah. 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 Slices it in with a bit of bottom left-hand side. He's been taking these finishes out these past 24 hours. You wouldn't expect him to not take these out. So we could be looking at 4 2 in uh, a minute and a half or so. <coughs> Just taking his extension there. Just making sure. I think Liam is the only player I know that um, hears the beeps on his break. <laughs> the five second beeps. <laughs> That's how meticulous he is, uh, he is on the break, but look at the rewards that he gets. So it's uh, something obviously well rehearsed, well practiced. It's over hit this. This one might get away from it's him. It's it. Or he might get a bonus. Well, he has been slightly fortunate in that he does have a shot. But it's not what he played. And that was some shot to take on, I thought, Kevin, did you not? I understood the, the, the logic of it. You're taking the difficult ball out and leaving your work at the other end of the table, but... He was coming down a difficult line yeah. with, the, with the cue ball. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Mm. You can think you can probably get some bottom side on this and spin it around off two rails. He's judging these shots to uh, to the second. There wasn't much left in the in the bank there. How good a position can he get on the black from his last yellow? Yeah, that red there just above the black makes things difficult for Liam. But after misjudging the uh, second to last shot, he'll be very happy with where he is now. Just a nice little trace of side on that on that white ball, a bit of right hand side. And there he's just showing you where he wants to be. Just 
Just needs to be careful with his cue ball. And carefully he usually is. Has he gone far enough? I think he looks okay. He's going to be slightly hampered, I think. Pumps it into the corner to seal the frame, and that is four frames to two to Liam. Another great break. And this shot here, he just he overhit that ball, didn't he? You were coming in a difficult line, as you said. But this was played well. Precision pull. the response from Corey Reese. last frame it was a breaking dish he cannot afford to go 5-2 down he's got to keep on Liam's coattails and hope they can get some sort of sniff on the dumpster break but for now it's all about this this next shot so be looking to control the white as he did the last break he parked it didn't he, in the middle of the table last time and then you just trust him to look, hoping that something drops. Again, hit those really well, really well. Wow, look at that for a, wow, and look at that for a split. Wow. I think you'd fancy getting your cue out, Andy, for these, wouldn't you? If I could find it, I'd get it out, yes, definitely. <laughs> I don't know where it is. But yes, look at that for a split. I think one thing's for certain, he won't be taking yellows. That is a monster break. Just got to work out those two next to the black. Yeah, that's the only possible difficulty he's got, and it's not a difficulty, is it? It just needs some good uh, positional play that's all yeah I mean if that red just to the left of the black goes in the right centre I mean that's absolutely fine you just can't foresee any problems here can you it's one of those clearances where you just need to keep the focus you just don't want to get sloppy with it being so easy yeah Yeah, it's definitely those two balls closest to the black that are, we say difficult, the difficulty within this finish, but you would expect him to work it out. Using his extension, just a reminder, the players are on a 30 second shot clock and they're allowed one 30 second extension per frame. Shows the action keeps moving. There you see, he ran round the rails. Made sure he had a, an option of, of either ball into the corner. And he is plumb there. Yeah, it was cleverly played by Corey. Had a big margin of error. And uh, like you say, was always going to have a minimum of two balls to go at. Good response is this. 5-2, I think the writing could have been on the wall. Yeah, just screw the white back a couple of inches. And then this routine black into the middle. And uh, once again, he'll claw to within one frame. Liam Dunster. In it goes. That's uh, two 
Breaking dishes on the trot on the Corey Reese break, and uh, his break is uh, well, both players, the brakes are both working very impressively. Fantastic, yeah. He's parked the white ball, hasn't he? Twice. I mean, the last break, he, he, he parked it and it got mo kicked backwards, but he's, he's striking it really well. As you say, both players are breaking well. Two completely contrasting styles of break, but both effective. This for me was the best shot in this uh, clearance. He spun round the two angles, affords himself the op option of either ball. And there it was, into the middle, and he's only one behind. So just to keep you updated on the rest of the scores in the professional event, we're now at the quarter-final stage. We've got Craig Marsh three. and Mark Boyle who are just getting three. underway. Four frames to three, time running. As the second quarter final, we've got Andy Crowsdale who's having a great run. He's playing John McAllister. And then the second favourite at the bottom, the number two ranked player, Dean Shields against Mark Farnsworth. Mark Farnsworth, the player of the last 18 months. His trophy cabinet has been bulging. Wow. The white nearly came off the table. It just the cushion kept it on. Yeah, he didn't hit those cleanly, did he? And uh, well, look at those yellows. And this was exactly what Corey was hoping for—an opportunity off Liam's break. Mm -hmm. Extension. Extension. So after this um, quarter final, we are going to be taking a <laughs> half-hour break. Give our uh, production team chance to uh, powder their noses and have a little uh, little glass of water or something maybe a little sandwich depends what's in their pack up and uh, we'll be back with uh, with the action to bring you the conclusion of this event and also the uh, the amateur final so lots more pool tonight Hope you enjoy what you're watching, and uh, it's going to get uh, pretty tense out there tonight. It is. Corey there taking the yellow in the corner, but I don't think he meant to hit that red. I mean, he's going to make this ball, I'm sure, but I don't think he meant to land as low down the table as he did. Yeah, I don't think he hit that well at all. That first pot, it's almost as if he quit on it a little bit. But still in a great position here to level things up. So this is no gimme. Played it well. Nice nudge on the yellow as well. So he's holding his own, Kevin. Holding his own. Oh well, you know, Co Corey is—he is an elite player now. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, the likes of him, Ross Fernie, you know, they're—they're um, they're up there with with the Dunster and the Farnsworths. You know, the, you know, those two are, you know, a percent above the others. You know, they are just a little bit ahead. But you know, these guys are. You know, these guys are, are there, you know, they're there. At this level it is, it's small, small margins. Yeah, they've got the game. As I said, Corey's beaten Liam uh, many occasions. And, uh, and Ross Fern is, you know, he's winning titles as well. He's provisionally ranked three before this weekend. So... Oh, there's some great... There's a real mixture of youth. I mean, Liam, you know, Corey, Ross Fernie. And then you've got old man... Old man Mark Farnsworth. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that, but... You know, he's got the experience, been around a long time. You know, Clint's relatively young as well. You know, so, um... A real mix. 
So back to this uh, frame. It's got a perfect angle on this last yellow. And there he are, slides past the black, leaves it into the middle. And it's this black to go for a piece. What a match we've got here. He's taking his time. In it goes, four frames all. This is bubbling up nicely to a conclusion. I think this has this got a final frame thriller. Every chance, every chance. And look at Liam there. He's a bit confused by that break. That uh, wasn't in the uh, in the instruction manual. The black nearly saved him by uh, by going in from the break, but. I know he never looks phased, but he, he does look a little bit concerned there. Does Liam? He knows he's in a match. Yeah, he he probably would have known that before the match, but if, if he wasn't if he wasn't sure before, then he will be now. Yeah, and Corey's break. So effective. So effective. Time running. So all he can do is concentrate on his own games. Here we go again. And he's been so consistent, hasn't he, with a break. Head ball. Powerful. Controlled. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Here we go. Another great break for me. Is that yellow going to reach? Oh, it has last done. gasp. I think he was sucking that one in. So not quite as straightforward as his previous break, so um, he's going to have to uh, think a little bit more about this one. Extension. There's a yellow tied up, I say tied up, relatively close to a red on the cushion. Um, other end of the table. Yeah, still makeable, I, I suppose, if you're somewhere near it, but... It's not straightforward, as you said, Kevin, this one. Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards yellows, but... Um, it's the opening ball, I think, is the issue, isn't it? Yeah, and, and this yellow in the bottom right-hand corner that's sort of tied up, It's there's not really anything near it to try and develop it, so that's what's going to be going through his mind now. Is he going to go for after it with this shot? For a second, it looked like he was, but it's not really the shot, is it, when you're trying to take a colour? <laughs> There are players that maybe would have would have taken that. <coughs> I'm sure he would have got it more times than not, but you can't afford to give Liam chances. Well, you can't give anybody a chance at this level. I mean, if you can get the white near the black somewhere, I think he could probably clip that yellow in. That's what I was saying. You, you, it's not that you can't land on it. It's just diff you've got you've got a very small window of opportunity to land on it. I think if he can. If he thinks he can get near it to clip it, that's what he'll play. He won't try and risk. So this is the key shot. Key shot coming up. So, does he take the ball into the middle? Does that give him position on the difficult yellow? He may choose to play it now, it looks like he is. Just nudges onto the red. And there we are. And the thing about these shots, he, he, if he misses it and it hangs over the bag, that is not going to do him any favours with these rules and skill shots. Oh, he'd be going all out for this, won't he? Back in the day, that's what we'd have been trying to do. Yeah, we'd have been <laughs> devastated if it dropped. <laughs> so, only problem here is the cue ball. Controlling the cue ball. And he's played that. What wow. a beautiful what a shot, shot that was. What a shot, Corey Reese. 
quality, quality shot that was. Now, if the black doesn't go in this bottom right -hand corner, he's probably going to have to play the black into the same pocket that he's going to pot this yellow. He'll be hoping it does, because that, that is a <laughs> nice and easy. Yeah, looks like he is. He's overrun it by about two inches, but I think he'll take that. Has he got a full pocket, Kevin, do you think? Well, the way he's looking at it, probably not. You're fancying for it all day if he's got a full pocket. You're fancying for it if he's got half a pocket. But he would have liked to have been straighter on this ball. And the pressure's out there. No mistake there from Corey Reese. He wins three frames on the trot. He is now ahead by the odd frame after nine frames. Three away from a place in the semi-finals and a chance of the top prize of £10,000 and the title of Grand Final Champion. This was the key shot in this finish. And that was a great delivery. So it's Corey, 5 4 in front. He's got to be feeling good out there, Kevin, hasn't he? Well, I, I mean, even at 2 0 down, I think he's still feel it, feeling good. He, um, no, he was 1 0, wasn't he? But even at 4 2 down, sorry. Um, he uh, he's still you know still a still way in the match you know these guys can turn things around so quickly as as we've just seen one dry break from Liam and he's and he's sat down for three frames. So back to business as usual for Liam. He'll be open. There's a white oh. ball. That white ball was travelling dangerously close to the corner pocket, but. It's okay, he's at the table, it's a good split. Look at the yellows. The yellows are all there. I mean, I think the reds are all there They're as well. Both there, yeah. I think you'd go yellows probably the two the two reds close to each other. Probably the more awkward. But yeah, there's an argument for either colour set. But he won't be rushing. He doesn't rush, doesn't Liam? No, nope. he's used his extension. Generally, the players would, would use their extension at the first visit as they as they map out the the route. It tends to be the way players go. He's an easy first ball on either colour set, and yeah, he's electing to go for the reds. And as is the norm, he's taking the reds. And straight away you can see the pattern. The two awkward reds, or I say awkward reds, they're no longer awkward reds. He's opened everything up here, if he chooses to take one of them now. Yeah, if he's straight, he's just going to have to watch the pace of the cue ball. Play this first. Is he slightly more angle than he wants there? I think he's giving himself a nice bit of angle there, so he can just cushion the white onto either of those two yellows, just to hold it in position for the red into the other right-hand corner. And that'll be that'll go a long way towards securing this frame. Just doesn't want to go. Doesn't want to land on the cushion or anything awkward yeah, like I that. I just thought he might have wanted to have less of an angle, so he didn't need to use the cushion or run into anything. So there. Well, he's misjudged it. He's, that is, and that's the problem. That is an error. It's an error from the world champion. And they are a rarity this weekend. He's in trouble here. He's under pressure. Yeah, he's... Well, he's definitely rerouting. What he needs here is what he's great at. Pulling out a really difficult shot when he has to. <coughs> so it's.
it's all going to be about the last red to get onto the black. He's certainly he'll be looking at an area sort of just left of the blue spot where he'd like to uh, in between the yellow and the black where he wants to uh, leave the white ball this is all about feel, judgement, confidence this is a big shot in the context of this match it is and when you're under pressure those are the things that are difficult to maintain aren't they? Yeah. The touch, the feel. You've got to get that negative thought out of your head. Just doesn't want this white ball to slide behind the yellow and snooker him. He could even go over to the cushion. Yeah, I think I might have gone that way. What a perfect line he played there. Yeah, and the, and the, and the pace. I mean, the pace was, you know, another six inch or four inch and he's going to believe himself in a whole world of trouble. But now... He's got a chance. Is he having to send it round the table, or can he hold just for drops it? Drops it in, yeah. Yeah, he can there hold. you go. Could just catch enough of, enough of the yellows just to take the pace off the white ball, off the cue ball, and this easy black, and we are down to a best of five for a place in the semi-finals. And no mistake, there it goes. Five all between these two gladiators. Who is going to blink first? Are we looking at Hill Hill? Every possibility. So again there, we just run out of position. But rerouted. And this was a great shot he played. I like the fact that he stunned over to the cushion, played a good line. <laughs> so, five apiece. Five frames all, time running. Corey to break. As we keep saying, he's been breaking so well in this match. <coughs> keep the white on the table and make a ball. It's the order of the day. Oh dear. Well, that's unfortunate. Kept the, kept the white on the table. Made a ball, but look at this. He needs to make a ball now to stay at the table. And there's nothing on. He may just play a containing shot here. Bump the yellow out, sit behind the other yellow. So it's not an open table, is it? It's not an easy table. Liam is directly behind this yellow. So if he chose to, he could take it on. But the yellows aren't good. You'd want red to if you had an opportunity. Yeah, great break. Great control as usual. Very unfortunate to land where he did. So he's elected to play the containing shot. Liam at the table. And yes, it does go in the corner. Well, that was the attacking shot there from Liam. But he has, I won't say he's gifted, but this is a great opportunity for Corey on reds. Yeah, never easy when you elevate the queue like that. He was trying to screw back off the bottom rail. It was a big ask. But he felt he had to try and take his chance there. 
Yeah, and I think one of the, the deceiving things about Liam, and I think something that he doesn't get enough credit for, he is actually a very, very attacking player. But he plays it in a way that is very clever, and people don't always understand it or, or see it, but he is, he is a very, very attacking player. Yeah, it's very methodical, but it is, it's an aggressive form of, of, of methodical play. So, reds. The black is slightly hampered. We can't really tell from this overhead. It goes into the middle. I mean, you need to be behind it. I suppose he's got a ball on the rail. Could be his last ball if he chose to. Yeah, I think that looks like a nice, a nice option. Just got to work out the path to get there. So already thinking maybe five shots ahead. So he'd like to be straight on this red. If he is, he can run through. He's got several options here. He may choose to take the ball on the rail earlier. Either way around, I think the black at the moment is looking at the middle. So he's punched that into the corner, stunned over. So he is taking the ball on the rail. And if he can hold this white ball, red into the corner, white off the cushion. He's got three easy balls. We say easy. <laughs> Pressure. And they're playing for £10,000. Exactly. Nothing is easy. Exactly. It's all about holding your nerve. Keeping it in the moment, not getting a little bit carried away, thinking about you've already won the frame, getting, the, getting on with the next one and then thinking of the semis and the final. <laughs> it can race away with you. I was always excited about getting to a last 64. <laughs> so, straight forward. Doesn't want to be straight on his last red, but I think that's obvious. I don't expect him to be. Just a slight angle. Red into corner. Run through. And as we thought, it looks like it's black in the middle. And this is to take a 6-5 lead over Liam Dunster, who has been a machine this weekend, it has to be said. Shot. Yeah, just helped forward. You really got to strike through those shots nicely. I mean, you just to get that nice little bit of side momentum, just to run it around a couple of cushions, just to leave it nice and easy. And no mistakes there. Corey Reese six, Liam Dunster five. What a match this is! A match of such high quality between these two great players and. Uh, you know, I think you alluded to it, Andy. It's just great to be able to sit and watch and commentate uh, and and just just watch these great players doing what they do and watching the twists and turns and watch them fire rockets at each other. It's a joy to behold. If I wasn't in the commentary box, I'd be in the arena. Yeah, it's a joy to behold, Kevin. If I wasn't in the commentary box, I'd be in the arena watching anyway. Thoroughly enjoyed the weekend so far. Hugely impressed with the standard of play. Frames for twelve, to break. Trailing frames for six. Time running. This is a massive break now for Liam. Massive break. Yeah, it's a must must get break for me. He needs to make a ball here. He needs to stay at the table. Well, 
those yellows are queuing queuing up to get in that middle bag. And it's another fantastic break. And again, well, he's probably going to have to go for reds, but I don't think that's a problem. Again, it's just the black. But yeah, taking his time. First part of the mission is accomplished. That's getting a ball from the break. And now it's about mapping out the route, getting the getting the program correct. If he takes this red into the corner. Is he looking at leaving an angle onto the red in the middle? Maybe running into the yellow by the black. Just nudge it. Maybe feels he doesn't need to. Just got to be careful sometimes how this bounces off the cushion. Doesn't want it to go near the black. Just to make it a bit more congested there. Can't see it doing anything else when they're bouncing off that knuckle. So he might just be dropping this in dead weight. Well, he's made things worse. That's always the problem when you. Uh, it is a little bit risky. It was always going to come off the knuckle and head towards the black. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit unlucky, but. You know, I didn't dislike the shot, did you? I I could see the value. It maybe a little hard. Maybe he struck it a little harder than he needed to. Yeah, I think he, he didn't want to drop it in dead weight. He would have left himself dead dead straight on this red, and I don't think he wanted to leave leave that. So yeah, to stun it, or just screw it back a couple of inches. I mean, the ball still go. You know, everything still goes. You know, he's, he can take the red that's glued to the to the yellow near the near the top of where the pack would be. That goes in the corner. The red that's near the black that's tied up with the other yellow that goes in the top right hand corner. So there's, there is pockets for all these balls. Brilliant match this is. Two players, top of the game. Really entertaining us with their uh, skills. Yeah, when he uh, when he nudged that yellow away from the pocket, it looked like he put himself in trouble. But as Liam does, he finds a way. And he's two reds and the black to level this match. Now... Does he need to play a plank, Kevin? Has he? He's not landed where he wanted to be there, has he? No. I mean, I think the red will go past the other red into the corner. It's just whether it nudges that red on its way in. And would it nudge it onto the cushion? Might make it awkward. So, if not, it's a plant. Liam will be working out which is the lowest risk. No, it went in, went in clean. He did look at the plant though, didn't he? It looked like he was looking at the plant. He was just keeping us all yeah. on the edge of our seats. I think so. You're always going to make the ball if it passes, aren't you? So he's looking at going high up the table. He's taking no risk with these yellows lower down. <coughs> he's not looking for perfect position. He's playing for space. He knows if he goes past the blue, and there you are, anywhere in that area, and he has a black into the middle for parity, level game. What a game this is. This black for six apiece. And a place in the semi-final looming, best of three. Well, he hit that a little bit thinner than he intended, so 
Just a little bit of additional drama there with the white ball tracking towards the uh, centre pocket, but no problem. In it goes. Six frames all, as you said, Andy. Best of three for a place in the semi finals. Who is going to take the spot? Corey is uh, breaking on the odd frame, so he potentially could be breaking it in the decider. But this just puts even more pressure on this break now because if Corey goes dry, that could be his last shot of the match. I was about to say the same thing. The pressure mounts. The break, ever important at this game, but never more so than now. 13 frame. Corey reads the break. But you can't afford to think about it. You've just got to do more of what you normally do. Don't overthink it. Same technique. It's been working for him. Here we go. Biggest shot of the match so far. It's another monster break from Corey Reese. White's in the open. Balls are everywhere. What next? <laughs> well, the yellows are looking good. It's only yellows. It has to be yellows. Extension. Extension. And we've just had a quick online poll. Andy, you've got the results. Well, 60% of our audience think that Liam will win this match. It'd be interesting to see if it's 60% after that break. Yeah, it would because that... Yeah, we've just been informed that was before this break. But yeah, such a close match this. Such high quality. I'm not sure he played that kiss. No, it's worked out it. okay, yeah. Really shot that goes by the pressure just notches up a little ramp more. It's got to be careful here. It's not an easy finish this, Kevin, I don't think. Two balls close together on one rail, another yellow close to the other rail, and you need to get behind that ball if you're going to clear these balls. And he may try and do that. That's a lovely sh Oh, well... I'm not sure about that no. shot, Andy, to be honest. No, I, I, when you look at it, what was he trying to hit? The red? Was he trying to come off the bottom rail? And Yeah. I mean, look, he's still at the table. He's still on a yellow. But the ball he was trying to land on, by the look of it, is going to have to be his last ball at this rate. Yeah, I think it is. He's going to have to put this and then play up for the plan. Needs that white to run a bit more as well. He's a bit undercooked that one. So he's going to have to go play the plant, come back over for this one, and then back go again. back again. I'm going to get dizzy. He's trusting to look to some degree. And this is all about the pressure. Massive pressure this must be. So he needs to really commit which ball he wants to be on next after this shot. Like that to run. Oh, now then, he's got a little thin one here. I don't think he can. I don't think he can get. Wow. This is tough, Kevin. Can this he get tough. the pace right and land on this right and cushion? He's trying to hold his. This is tough. He's got to try and cheat the pocket as much as he can. Can he take the pace out of the ball here? He's trying. And he has done, but has he gone far enough? Has he gone far enough? He did cheat the pocket. So he's going to have to come off the side cushion and flick it in. Yeah, swung his arms there, so looks like he's not on it. We didn't know if he could maybe just spin it in. So, is it, yep, yeah, as you said, side cushion, bottom cushion probably. And does he come out round the back of the black maybe? No, I think he'll just be happy to get this in. 
I think he's just going to dolly it in. No, he's tried oh. to go around it. I think yours might be in the right shot, Kevin, but he did try and go around the back of the black there, I think. Yeah, he did. He'll be disappointed with that. That is the first glaring miss of the match for Corey Reese, And it couldn't have come at a worse time. And that's just pressure. Liam electing to snooker. Corey. The problem is, he, he, I mean, he can get out of this and pot it, but the black is just tied up. I mean, there is an option here to go one rail. Yeah, I, I would expect him to be very close to hitting this ball. Yeah, and I'd be at the top of the centre bag. I think he was looking below. I think I'd be at the top with loads of left hand side. I think he's got the gap between the two reds where he was looking. Just oh dear me. Well, that's the last thing he wanted. Yeah. The last thing he wanted. Sure about that one. Does the red pass the yellow, Kevin, do you think? Well, it's whether it's whether Liam wants to go for the 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 win in this frame. In this visit, sorry. He's got the one on the cushion. That's why I was asking, yeah. Red next to the black. He's got it's a red a on this cushion. A couple of options. He's just gonna buy this time. I'm not sure he wanted that. No, I think he just wanted to cover it. Now we, now we might just have a, a free go at at the finish. You know, maybe pop this one into the corner and maybe up try table. and develop the one off the side cushion. He could even run up table, come back down, and leave it down the side cushion, couldn't he? Yeah. No. Yeah. I think it's what he's doing. Or possibly. It, yes, he is. It's almost a free go. I mean, is that red, black, red a, a three ball plant? Yeah, it looks like it, isn't it? The red next to the black goes in the other corner, it would appear. Well, if it does, I, I would expect him to go for the clearance. Absolutely no doubt. You said he's an aggressive player. I think you need to go here, don't you? You've got insurance. Yeah, just six holes, a bit of a different kettle of fish I don't think he's going for this no well I'm surprised at that he's giving he's giving Corey a shot bottom cushion and that black's going to be travelling I think this is I think this is high risk I thought he would have gone there I have to say I mean this is going to be moving this black ball <laughs> it's going to be hold on tight or does he just try and judge it for the middle pocket? Here we go. No, this is pace on. Airborne. Middle in cut. Oh. Didn't really he threaten anywhere. to stick to the red. Well. And there's another little twist. I mean, he could try to move it this shot. Put this one into the bottom right and corner. Send the white off the side cushion into the red and the black. But yeah, it might not the red onto the. C oh, I don't know. Is he playing it? It looks like he. Is he checking it? Yeah, he's checked it. He doesn't want to nudge it on the cushion though. Yep, yeah, that was the problem. But this is Liam Dunster. Surely that's not a problem. Feel the tension in this game. <laughs> you can feel the tension in the whole arena. Even the commentary box is feeling the tension. Yeah, it's great. How is this match going to pan out? Great stuff. Uh, this looks and is it just too straight, or can he run that white through onto the side cushion behind that red? I think he's got a nice angle. 
does it leave it to last? I, I would have thought when he started this finish that he'd be leaving it until last. But that might not be the case anymore. He's punching it through for it to play it next. Yeah. Doesn't want to go behind doesn't. the black. A little bit of awkward cue in there. That's going to be a, a, a long reach for Liam. It's not the tallest. And where's he looking for with his last red? Well, I think he's just going to take his medicine and leave leave the red into the top right hand corner. I'm not sure he can. It's difficult to tell from this angle where he can get his cue to the white ball. Oh, he can get into it. He could this be okay. He's good yeah, he's good at this shot. He could just get to the bottom right hand side of the cushion of the of the cue ball, which was the bit he needed to be able to hit. So does he draw back to the the cushion? So he's got one of them funny angles, and it? it's just off straight, I think, into the corner. But I think he can just screw it back, bottom cushion, just bounce off six inch. Look at that, just like that. He hardly touched that ball. This is a pressure black, though. I expect him to get it. It's not as easy as it looks on the screen. Not at six apiece. <laughs> Looking to go into the semis for 10,000. Wow, he used all of that middle pocket. I bet just for a microsecond he was uh, concerned. But in it goes. It's 7-6 and it's Liam to break. So, Corey just uh, taking a comfort break. Trying to compose himself. Had a great chance in that rack, but that was always the problem ball. That last yellow. Maybe he could have just tried to drop it in off the side rail. And this was a high pressure finish. Left himself awkward there. But look at that, as Liam does. Beautiful shot and a pressure black, but it just fell for a second. We thought, has he missed it? Yeah, they're always a lot harder, those, in uh, <laughs> when you're playing them than what they can look on the camera. You've got to give it every respect. So has Corey Reese played his last shot in this match? So he's returned from his comfort break, composed himself. It's... It's just it's just on his way back. It's a little little walk to the uh, to the comfort area. <laughs> About twenty yards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what a match, Andy. This has been. I mean, it's having it's early on. It was fantastic clearances, great breaking, great play, and now we've started to see things get a little bit tense and exciting. Now that we're getting to the latter stages. Not, there's not been much done wrong, has there? It's not been error strewn. It's the breaking's been fantastic. The pressure pots, the pressure finishes, everything you want in a match. Drama. Liam knows it's uh, in his grasp. He wants this title. He's been putting the hours in for this one. He knows what it means to win this title. I'm sure at one point there he'll, he'll have thought he was seven six down. Yeah, definitely from the break. I think that's that could it be an absolutely critical uh, misclearance there from Corey. Anyway, here we go. What can Dunster produce on the break? Oh, he's dry. He's dry. There's wow. another twist. It hit those well. An IPA twist. Well, we called it. Potential. Hill Hill. Yeah, probably not the hardest call, was it? <laughs> not really. 
Uh, still work to do though, still a lot of work to do. Obviously there's a, a yellow and a red tied up there near the black. His first thoughts, you're looking at yellows. But he could try and bust into it now if he takes... Yeah, he just nudged this out. And now he's got an angle, if he chooses to. Does he... Yeah, I mean, if he can... It, uh, does he hold or does he slide off it? I was thinking he could maybe run into the, the black and the, the red and yellow, but he's losing control of the cue ball somewhat there. I'm not sure that he'd split the balls properly. Yeah, he's looking to land on it. And yeah, I come that option. Yeah, definitely. Low risk. Not relying on a bit of luck. Yeah. Just use your skill and precision. Run the white round of two rails. From putting this one into the uh, bottom left-hand corner and then the next yellow into the same pocket and then it's just about holding it together for yeah. for the side. It's easy, this game, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's easy. It's no problem. So, yeah, two rails... He can land almost anywhere on that rail there. If you, if you can see the yellow, position should be relatively simple to continue the break. Don't go behind the rail. Well, needs to pull up. I think he's okay. I think he's okay. He can play it plain ball, bring the white centre cent of the table. Just over ran slightly there, didn't he? Yeah, a little bit of adrenaline that one, I think, wasn't there? Oh. What do you expect? To be expected. The angle's just a little bit wide for him, wasn't it, on that, on that shot? It's well judged. The table playing so straight. Beautiful, that just rolling. That's back in the day, that might have rolled off. <laughs> That's what we'd have, we'd have said it rolled off anyway, wouldn't we? Yeah. We never missed. They always rolled off. Absolutely. It's Just okay. a little bit awkward here, do you think? I mean, I know he's got four balls that are open, but yeah, he's got to he's got to make the ball travel a little. Again, just not quite where he wants to be. No, he's a little bit under on that one. Now, I think he's going to have to play the plant. Yeah, he, he could have been harder. He just didn't want to be under on that shot. And if he does elect to play the plant, it's where that second yellow, the ball is hitting, where that lands and where the cue ball lands that count. It's an element of danger. So there. Well. It's a, another Corey Reese error. But he's got the angle, he can punch this in. Off the, put it into the bottom left-hand corner. Punch the white across. It's a tough shot. If he can get the white back out to somewhere where the yellow is, he's hitting. Or is he just going to run, run the white into the red and just take his medicine? Run his white into the black. Surely it's a punch. He's got into it too much. He's got. He needs a kiss. He hits it. It's all gone wrong for Corey Reese in these last two frames. That is definitely adrenaline. He got way too much into that one. Yeah, he's in no man's land here. He was under time pressure as well. He's going to have to pull out a, a shot off the red into the corner pocket. I can't see anything else. Run out of time. Yeah, we could hear the sigh there. <coughs> so, if Corey does lose this match, he is going to be bitterly disappointed. Bitterly disappointed. Well, he's got the up and down, clip into the left middle. That's all I can see. Drift across for the black <laughs> in the corner. As easy as that. I mean, that's what he's got to play, Kevin, hasn't he? He's got to play it. He's got to play it with conviction. He's got to try and play it at the speed that he thinks gives him a chance. Yep. But above all, he's got to hit it. 
And ironically, if he'd have played it harder, where would it have gone? Yes, it'd have been trouble. The black was still uh, not going anywhere. But I think he was. Do you think he was trying for the middle there? Do you think he was yeah, trying for the corner? Yeah, he was definitely playing his middle. But I think he's played his last shot in this match now. I think the writing is on the wall. Liam Dunster is not the kind of opponent who is going to give you a second chance. And this first shot here, he can develop the ball on the rail. Which he has done. And I'm with you, Kevin. I think it could be his last shot in this match. And what a match it's been. Yeah, it's been a high, high quality match between two great players. But it just would appear that the pressure has got a little bit to Corey at the back end of this match. Errors we wouldn't normally expect him to make. He could have been in the interview room now with Pickers talking about what a great big victory it was. And unfortunately, that conversation is going to be had by his opponent. Or at least we think it is. You never know. Well, that's it. That's the beauty of this game. And uh, it's not crystal clear for Liam here. I think the red does go past the other red. He's got, I mean, he's got options. Red past the red to the rail. Play the ball that's over the pocket. Yeah, you or just, play it as a plan. You got, he's got options all around. You just can't see him not getting these. You really can't. I mean, it's no issue playing the plan. He could have gone further over to the side and played the ball over the pocket. Then middle, then back to the corner again. But he knows better than me. That's for sure. Played perfectly. Now it's just a matter of finishing this match off. He's got his opponent exactly where he wants him. Sat in his chair, pondering what might have been. And in five pots time, it will be Liam Dunster who will take his place in tonight's semi-final, which we will we'll be bringing you later on this evening. The semi-final will be around about seven o'clock. Followed by the second semi-final. And then the big one, the final. So, this is the shot, Kevin. This is the shot. Yeah, he'll be using the centre pocket as his target area, but he's a little bit under on that one. Now then. Yeah, it's not where he wanted to be, is it? It has to be said. Yeah, he didn't get into that white ball enough. He wanted to be a lot closer to where the centre bag was and to be you know, almost straight in behind the red that is behind the black. I, I think he's still OK. I think he can get into this white enough. Screw it off the side cushion and red. Oh, he's had a little bit of a touch there. But even if it had kissed it full in the face, he still would have been fine. And now these last two balls are going to be going in the same pocket. I suspect he's just going to glance this into the bottom right hand corner. He'll play with a little bit of right hand side, I think. Maybe go off two cushions. Two cushions. And then Unless he feels back. he's just going to slip off one. There we are. What a match. Absolutely perfect. And this black. And in the black goes, well played Liam Dunster, unlucky Corey Reese. he will be bitterly disappointed uh, how that match finished, he, he had two chances there Andy and that was ultimately the difference between the two players. It, absolutely yeah, I, I was absolutely certain we were going to Hill Hill there, I thought we were going to have a decider, I think Liam will be relieved to have won that match at the end there, Yeah, that was looking, I mean, for me it was looking 7-7 seven, seven all day at one point 
But look, he just handles the pressure so well, doesn't he? Yeah, and on this occasion, it was Corey who just didn't quite handle the pressure. No. It was flawless throughout the match. And then when it uh, had the chances at uh, six all, he just couldn't put them away. No, just just slight errors out. You know, the, nothing sort of glaring. Just high pressure, high pressure pull. Very difficult to keep your composure. Everything's got to be timed perfectly. You've got to make the right shots the right time. And, and Liam is just a, a master at that. Well, fantastic match. We hope you enjoyed that. Um, so let's get over to the studio and Matt Pickworth. Well, thanks, uh, Kev, Andy, and uh, another fantastic quarterfinal there. I'm sure you've all witnessed. And Liam Dulce, are you pretty pleased with that performance there towards the end? Um, uh, mm, kind of. <laughs> I'm pleased with how important, but positionally-wise, I'm all over the place, as you've probably seen. Um, I think it's just going for different tables to be honest. Um, played on there over earlier on and I think the cloth's maybe like a year old and then they come to there and it's brand new so I just playing completely different. The sliding the cushions, the other ones are pinging. Yes, yeah, just get just getting used to it. So hopefully if my next match is on the stream I'll be a bit more uh, better positionally anyway. Yeah, I mean we saw a great performance from you last night. Um, I mean you're still in the competition. You've been playing some really determined stuff and uh, you, you know, sometimes it doesn't always go to plan and some games are a lot tougher than others and Corey Reese, you know, he's probably one of your toughest opponents that you've had throughout this year and maybe last year as well. Yeah, I mean he's he's always good. Um he's up until last year I'd probably had him as the biggest underachiever he's obviously no won anything before the Champions Cup I don't think anyway um, but yeah so he's just shown his class by winning Champions Cup and then um, he seems to be getting deep in almost every tournament this year so yeah he's, he's playing really well Yeah and I've also said about Corey he's probably one of the, the most professional players that we've got here that's got a very good record against you and uh, are you pleased to get one over him especially in the, the tournament that we're in currently Yeah definitely yeah um, I think, yeah, it was four draws in the Champions Cup now. I think he beat me and I beat him, so I, I beat him there. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty even, to be honest. But, yeah, yeah, happy to get to the semi-final and hopefully um, I play just like that, but slightly better positionally and I'll, I'll still be hard to beat. And just a little bit about your form at the moment. Obviously, you've been a bit out of form throughout this tour. you would be one of the first to say that, you know, after your World Championship win. I know you've had a lot of other commitments, etc. Some of that s sort of thing is, is starting to settle down for you now? Yeah, definitely starting to settle down, yeah. Um, getting used to the business life, stuff like that. Um, and then, l like I said in my other interview, I've um, put a lot of work in just, just for this tournament because, like I say, a, a few results haven't been my way the last well, six months or so. Um, but that's just down to lucky practice on my behalf. So um, hopefully that's that's been and gone. And semi-final coming up now. You're going to be playing the winner of Mark Boyle and Craig Marsh. Last time I looked, there was locked at 5-4. And then just looking at the screen there now, it is still 5-4 to Mark Boyle. Is there any preference who you want to play there? Either way, is it is it going to be a tough match? Yeah, well, tough match either way, yeah. Uh, well, Boyle slapped me 8-2 eight, slapped me last week, so probably play Marsh, preferably. <laughs> Absolutely. Is it harder playing a Scottish player rather than a Welsh no, player? No, it's just... It's the exact same. You, you put your, your feelings towards the guy to the side for the match and then right after the match your best pals again. So. And what are you going to do now to prepare for your semi-final? Are you going to have a little bit of time now before you play that? What's uh, your plans? Not sure. Uh, maybe just chill out and maybe watch other games. I'm not quite sure yet. OK, well, well played, Liam. Look forward to seeing Cheers, you in the semi. Well done. OK, well, we're going to be taking a break of our own now for 30 odd minutes or so. Uh, but right up next will be Mark Farnsworth against Steve Shields. But straight after the 30 minute break. See you soon.
Welcome back here at the Grand Finals here at the Isle of Man and uh, we've had a fantastic lot of action already today and uh, we've got a lot more coming up. There's going to be another quarter-finals and there has been some quarter-finals played already and uh, we obviously had Liam Dunster. He's safely through into the semi-finals where you can see there it beat Corey Reese eight frames to six. Mark Boyle. He's beat Craig Marsh eight frames to four. So that's semi-final already. Liam Dunster against Mark Boyle. That will be coming up after this match. That you can see at the bottom of your screen there, Dean Shields against Mark Farnsworth. That's the other quarter final. And that's what's coming up now. Dean Shields, we saw him beat Gareth Hibbert already um, earlier on today. And then Mark Farnsworth. He's he's taken a pretty steady route all the way through here to the quarterfinals. He's the number two seed in this tournament. He's been playing some great stuff recently, and this is going to be a fantastic game against the battle of the English blokes. And uh, here we go. Both players, as you can see, they're, they're ready. So is our referee, Darren Mayman. And I'm going to hand over to the commentary box now with Dan Davey. Yeah, what a match this is going to be. Dean Shields, Mark Farnsworth. Dean Shields keeps knocking on the door. Three, maybe even four finals in the last couple of years. Always seems the safest, worst match for the final. Unfortunately for him. Got to know him pretty well recently, Dean. He's a great guy. He's up against Mark Farnsworth, the machine. Very good first break. Very good. Not y you wouldn't call them absolute gimmies, but the uh, the reds are fairly easy. Probably fancy him to get the yellows too if he had to go. If he had to go yellows, but he's in. That's all he'll care about. Talking of being in. Old Pickers, the multitasker, has come from. Uh, Come from introducing the show to to join me in the commentary box. Yep, here I am, Dan. And, uh, it's good to see you in here. We, we've not had much presence from you uh, at the last tour because you you was playing pretty well last tour, wasn't you? And yeah, you I seem to sneak out. I seem to sort of just about get away with it. I'll make it to a quarter final and tend to. Yeah. But I do love it in here, obviously. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's great to have you in the commentary box because you you do add a lot of value in here. But it's also nice to see you doing well on the tour. You, you've not had a, you've had a pretty steady year. I mean you'd like to have won a title possibly because uh, we know your high standards etc. But you, are you pleased with the way that you've played this year? Uh, not really. No. No. I, I, <laughs> I started the year thinking I'd going to put a lot of effort in, and I haven't. I just put a bit more in than last year, but not enough. Not enough to not enough to be annoyed at myself for my results because I don't feel like I deserve to have done much better than I've done, really. But um, soon, next year. Next year's the year. Absolutely. I mean, you had yeah. a tough game today against John McAllister. You know, he's hit a little bit of form recently as well. Yeah. I'm not saying you haven't, because you have. Uh, but it was always going to be a tough game against John because he, uh, he has been doing quite well. And, uh, you know, 8-4 eight, eight in the end. Yeah, to be honest, I was 5-1 down and um, all I'd done wrong was, was get kicked in off the break. He played really, really well. He cleared off his first three breaks and that sort of broke the back of the match, really. He's He, he was on top, top form. And, and it was that pretty much what goes around comes around because that's exactly what you did to Curtis Lee, didn't you? You took a big lead and uh, didn't do too much wrong. Is it similar? Uh, similar, except for he, he played perfect and I, I, I played OK, but he, he was... At his very best at the start of that match. Um, as is Dean Shields. First frame on the board. Uh, pinpoint with a cue ball. Left himself a little bit of a tester when he had two balls left. But straight shooting Dean. Knocked it straight in. Yeah, I mean, when I commentated on Dean earlier against Gareth Hibbert, you know, I could notice that he was queuing very well indeed. and uh, oh, He always does. His, his cue action is definitely one of the best in the game. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. And what's your opinion on his cue action? He's he's up there, isn't he? Oh, oh, ultra, yeah, like like you say, kind of straight shooter. Yeah. You know, you you really he, he's one of these players that seems to leave himself. Um, he doesn't mind leaving himself a, a difficult shot to um, if, if he thinks it's going to win him the frame. You know, well, um, some people tend to, you know, when, when it's kind of a fifty-fifty 
shall I land on it? Shall I try and break it out? He'll he'll always land on it and just back himself to make the big shot. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's been doing. I mean, Mark Farnsworth, let's, take, let's have a little bit of a talk about Mark Farnsworth now. He's been in some scintillating form. That last tour that we played at Newcastle oh, in that open final. Oh, 20, well, yeah, not just the final. I mean, the run to the final. 26 frames in a row, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think he was 3-1 down in his last 16 match, won that 7-3. couple of 7 nils and went 6 up in the final. And Yeah. This is against people like <laughs> Mark Boyle and was it Craig Marsh yeah, in the 77 nil. Yeah, it was. Crazy. <coughs> Crazy. All right, we've had a, an online um, to see who's going to, uh, an online poll to see who's going to be winning this match. And 69% of you think Mark Farns is going to be winning it. Wow, that's a, a pretty high percentage there, Dan. No, it's, un it's understandable. <coughs> but I mean, um, yeah, pen and paper. Yeah, you know, when you write it down, it's a, there's no, you know, Mark Farns with can't lose this match, really, but... Yeah, Dean Seals is going to put up a fight, let me tell you. Well, first things first, um, Dean's in again because Mark came up dry. If Mark's got an Achilles heel, it's his break. Um, although, <laughs> he hasn't got a bad break, it's just probably not as good as the rest of his of, of his of his game. But look, Dean looks really confident. Again, he's just knocked in a, a long one there and made it look like it was over the pocket. Um, uh, and he's in, he's, he's got a difficult black to land on. Not quite sure where that's going to go. I don't think it's quite close enough to the yellow for him to be able to play it off the yellow into the middle. So he's going to have to play some sort of cannon. I think it's all about himself leaving him, leaving the right angle now. That just needs to carry on just a tiny bit. I think that's perfect. It is. I mean, he's stunned that beautifully across. It's very well controlled pace and everything. And he's, uh, he's, he's absolutely spot on, I'm sure. You, you see here, as well, he's kind of lining it up. He wants to hit that that yellow kind of three-quarter ball, half ball, and, and almost split the two. He doesn't want to push it into the black. That is perfect. That is perfect. A little bit hamper queuing. I think it actually well, might, it might be a gap. gap. Yeah, it yeah. might be a gap. be perfect. But, uh, <laughs> look, the yellow he's closest to, he'd like that to be a little bit further out of the way, but he'd have took that. That's a good result. Yeah, and I mean, there's, n there's not a lot of room to be potting the black, etc., but... It, this is another good chance. And when you're playing, players like Mark Farnsworth, these are the chances you have to take to really hurt them, don't you? Yeah, uh, so a couple of ways he can play this. Uh, unless you're really down there, you're not really going to know. But he can drift back up in the, in the, in the line that he's going to be playing this, or he can dig into it with lots of bottom left and just try and leave himself. So he needs to clear the yellow. doesn't want to cannon the yellow. Where's the cue ball? Where's the cue oh, ball? Wow. The cue ball is in oh, off. Oh, uh, it just oh. glanced past that yellow and flew in off. I mean, it didn't even look like there was even an angle there to go in off in the middle, did there? Do you know what? No, no because he's almost flicked the yellow on the way past. And it's still only just gone in the middle. So it was obviously... He, pro he was probably looking at it thinking it wasn't possible to go in off. No. The no. fine margins. I mean, that is... <laughs> I mean, yeah, there probably weren't even enough room for it to just creep in that middle pocket, but it has crept in that middle pocket. Mark Farnsworth back to the table, and this is a chance that you really cannot see. Him messing up on. He's going to be taking these out. Is he a little bit short? Of pay? I mean, does that yellow? I think it. I think it, that yellow passes into the left centre anyway. Yeah, I don't know if he's got a full pocket, but obviously he's right behind it, so easy enough. Yeah, he's going to be making light work of this and obviously be levelling this match up. You talk about fine margins, I mean, I mean, a, a fraction away from... The only criticism I suppose you could maybe say is he could have he could have hit it a little bit softer so that it didn't quite reach the middle pocket, but it, for me, I, I didn't look at that and think the in-off was on. No, we definitely didn't see that coming. But I think as soon as Dean saw it bounce off that cushion with the running side, he knew it was possible. Oh, he, you know. he was walking away. He was walking away before it went in. Yeah. He knew. One apiece. It's been a steady start there. I mean, Dean's possibly, you know, early signs looking the better player of the two. Where they, obviously, he's got his break working straight away. Seems to be 
quite confident in potting all the long shots, etc. And I think out of the two players, I think Dee's probably disappointed to be at one frame each. Yeah, look, look at that. Look at that. It's just How only just happen? missed the yellow. Yep, really. So he'd be a bit disappointed there. The way that's fell out. But Mark Farnsworth does what? Mark Farnsworth does. Punishes his opponent. And one frame each. Dean Shields, he's been he's been crunching his break. Yeah, he's got to put it to the back of his mind now. But carry on breaking like he started. And um you know, on on on, on a on a good day, Dean Shields in top form. He, he could be thinking about clearing from Oh no. Oh, he, he, oh no. Oh dear. How <laughs> That's going to hurt Dean now, because first of the in off on the previous frame, and the, the way that that's been kicked in off there, Ugh. that's horrific. Oh, <sighs> I was in the middle of saying if he, if he carries on breaking well, he, he could maybe expect to clear off four or five of his eight breaks. If he gets eight, he's playing well. Look at the you know, split as well. You've got a feel for Dean there. You know when the pool gods, are they pool gods about? They're not, they're not looking in Dean's corner at the moment. No. <laughs> Cursed will be the word he's probably going through his mind. Mark Farnsworth, though, he definitely won't be feeling sorry for Dean Shields, not like we are. <coughs> and all, no doubt all of you at home will be feeling for Dean a little bit, but one thing, person that won't be is the man at the table. Mark Farnsworth, quite a ruthless player. Yeah, he's got. Uh, he's, pl he's playing with a bit of tempo about him as well today. Yeah, some pace. He picked up a bit of pace. He has, yeah. Um, I think that's a sign of him being very confident. Not that he isn't often, but um, I know he's been putting a lot of time and effort in because he's got a big game coming up against Mark Boyle. Um, and obviously, it's the last tour of the season. You know, it's double prize money. He's going to put the time and effort in for this tournament. And he looks like it. I think um, he won his first match eight 0 didn't he? In the, in the pro event. Yeah, and I think you, you know you, when you know when you get to know Mark Farnsworth, he wants that number one spot back. And uh, yeah. even though Liam Dunster is a long way ahead, I think some of them points uh, they are going to be uh, cut back or caught up, whichever one, whichever terminology you want to use. Because when the points get taken off, it's a two-year ranking list. Yeah. Provisionally, it yeah. is being cut back, cut down. So. We're still on for the Dunster Farnsworth final, which is, will be a great ending to the grand final. No offence to any of the other players in this, but there is a lot of other players in this tournament that could have a say. Well, I think the one we just mentioned there as well, Mark Boyle. I mean, for me, ever since he's joined the tour, he's, it, like, consistency wise, he's probably always been in the top four or five. Boyle, you know, some people kind of. <coughs> dip in and out of that depending on form and how much they're playing and stuff like that but I don't think Boyd ever has I think he's right up there with the they're very very best in the team very really. best on the planet yeah, yeah. so yeah I mean yeah, Farnsworth Dunster Farnsworth Boyle both be great finals um try I mean, break again that's if they get there Dean Shields is playing very very well just got to put to the back of his mind that he's had a couple of bad bits of, yeah, a bit harsh bits. <laughs> you can argue that the in off wasn't really lucky. He didn't get kicked in off, did he? But the the break was, and uh, they came out quite nice. So, you know, if he hadn't have gone in off, this would have been Dean two one up, and in the balls. He's got a chance now to get back to two each. So I'll put that last frame out of his out of his mind. Yeah, and I think what Dean will take from the uh, the, the opening stages of this match is that he's seen Mark Farnsworth break twice now, and he's had nothing from it. Of course. So Dean, he's going to get a bit of a lift from that. Yep. Because we all know when Mark Farnsworth breaks, is working, and uh, you know it can still work. Yeah, there's still plenty of time. Yeah, he's close to unplayable. Just needs an angle, anything but straight. That's perfect. So this is 
is that needs to be a well controlled shot to stun it up. He's a little bit short of pace where he wants, but Dean Dean's Dean. He he believes in his ability and uh, he's happy to take on any any you know, sort of longer range pot, etc. Yeah, if he's just about got enough I mean, to be this, able to queue. Yeah, I mean this is the toughest one out the two, isn't it? It really is, but it's clean. That's the heart of the pocket. Clean That's Dean. Clean Dean, That's new, what they call him. new, new name, nickname for the <laughs> shootout shields. Clean Dean. No, oh, I like it. Like doesn't, it use, doesn't use the jaws. No. Yeah. It is a feature of his game. He does He does more than most. I said someone else that does it, Gareth Hibbert. He he just really doesn't mind leaving himself shots. Like, obviously, you want to be closer to it if you can, but... He loves to just guarantee himself a shot um, and back himself to, you know, it, it, even in terms of, like, the order that you'll take the balls in. Sometimes, yeah, you got one down the cushion. You're not going to break it off the cushion. No. But it's when you take it, you know, and uh, he's a confident player. Yeah, and he's going to leave himself a, a longish range black here as well. I don't think he can get close to this. No, he can't really. Not unless he tries something stupid, but... He won't. He'll just uh, try and leave the cue ball as close to that red as possible. Okay, so I think he was actually coming across towards that left middle. Quite yeah. a confident shot, really, because uh, didn't necessarily need to do that. Quite confidently down as well. Down quickly, and the heart of the pocket again. Dean Shields is sending a message to Mark Farnsworth and we've got a pretty good match on our hands here again. Yeah, this is good. Yes, I mean, this break here, I mean, we, we heard a lot of emotion there from Mark. I mean, he was very close to in off there. He feels like he, he struck that well enough to pot a ball. And he had a few moans and groans <laughs> looking at the balls, but uh, Dean Shields does what Dean Shields seems to be doing very well today and that is clearing up yeah, first look at the two players together there don't seem to be too much emotion there from from either of them still early stages 2-2 two -two, not shouldn't be too much pressure flying around yet but it's, sooner or later it will kick in like you said earlier, Dean's definitely breaking better than Mark, so if he can keep the white off the table, make a ball again. Keeps the pressure on Farnsworth. Again, look at that cue ball. Well controlled, but well, it's dry. Down. It's dry. But. Yeah. Second prize, maybe there's clusters. Black's a little bit tied up. Uh, can't even see a yellow, let alone pot one. So I think if he's going to go for anything, he's got to go reds. Um, he's thinking now to himself, does he even bother going for a red? Is he just going to play a safety shot? And can he get through to that red? If he can, that, that would help things. Wow. Yeah, so now the red closest to the one that's tied up he will be able to play that at pace uh, off of that red to break it out. So he is he has got a route here. Uh, the black is tied up though if you're going reds. It's not an easy finish. No, a lot of work to do. There is a red down there that he can open up and I think he's going all out for it now. He's going to be opening this black up. Very well controlled shot. Yes. But... Yeah, that's good. That's for it. That's for it. That's as he'd have took that. black goes. Yeah, I mean he's got yeah. a pocket now, and it? it didn't have a pocket. It has now. No, yeah, and 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 he was trusting to luck a little bit there. That I don't think sometimes you cannon and then there's a perfect way to cannon it. Just there, he kind of had to trust a little bit to luck. I think he'll be quite happy with the result. Yeah, I, th I believe he played at a very controlled pace. Um, but yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. There's definitely a, a lot of down to a little bit of running the ball, etc. I think he's gone a bit farther, hasn't he? I think he wanted to be on the middle of those three reds now, so he could have played it off the other one. Well, he's on this one. On the, uh, he's going to have to right play it next time round. Right then, so you need to play this in such a way that you're guaranteed to be on the one over the middle. And try and control it best you can. Get back out towards the middle of the table. 
Oh, what's going wrong? That's so lucky, is it? Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't go in the middle, cross double, is it? Is that it? If it doesn't go in the middle, what oh, does it go? Horrible plant. He's having a look again. He's That's tight. It's tight. He's using extension, so he's obviously not sure what he's going to do. I think you're right. Maybe cross double is all he's got. Unless it goes, he's, I think he's down goes. again. I think it goes. I do, I, yeah, he does. He's right behind it, though. So he obviously hasn't got a full pocket. Doesn't look like it goes from there, does it? And it didn't. <sighs> It didn't. A slam of the cue on the on the on, on the uh, floor as well. Really not happy with that. No, I think he was a little bit. You got to say unlucky the way that the red travelled back down. But there's no way the red went clean. That's why he was down. He was looking out for so long. So he's obviously not had a full pocket to go out there. But it obviously did go. He really wouldn't have played it in the first place. He still had a good 25 seconds to play with so he obviously felt it went just very very tight but he's missed it Dean's in I think if anything's going to go wrong now I'll be playing this at pace played that lovely cued that really well he's sort of you know like a soft stun so he's he's playing it with a bit of pace but not not so hard that you're testing the pocket yeah, and it, yeah, even though them shots are easy to play, you, when you're playing at a match play level against a top player, you know, they're, they're the shots that can go wrong. And uh, he seems to be playing with so much confidence at the moment. Well, it's a hell of a start to this match. And maybe you know, a th just a one frame lead for Dean Shields is probably a little bit harsh because uh, the way that Dean started in that, this match, he's definitely the better player of the two yeah, well, it, and, and he's broken better like we said, so it, maybe a little bit of run that sometimes I've, from me watching him, I, I don't know if it's three or four finals he's lost in Four, I think. Is it four? Yeah. And or was it? Th yeah. Well, either way. Three or four. Yeah. Either way, you don't get to a final if you're not good enough to win one. <laughs> He's no. good enough to win one. He just hasn't got there yet. But you know, just the odd thing that needs to go your way in these big matches doesn't seem to have gone his way in in the past. But just there, that you know, the dry break at two all. He's left mark nothing, or he's left mark nothing easy to go at, and um, he's got his chance. Yeah, he has. And, uh, he seems to be taking it with both hands at the moment. I mean, yeah, it's this one just here. Uh, I mean, he, he he thought it definitely would have gone, but it didn't go. No. Bit of emotion there from Mark, just slamming his cue into the ground. Not happy. But Dean looks. Dean looks. Mind you. He always does as a player. He looks very relaxed. He looks very confident. You know, this confident without being cocky. Do you know what I mean? He, he kind of, you can tell he really believes in himself. Believes that he's queuing well. And there's no different today. Three two up. With this break from Mark Farnsworth. This has been his struggle at the moment. Yeah, at two drives so far. Well, that, yeah, start of this match. It's been a struggle. Yeah. One thing you notice about Mark's break, he normally pots the ball early on, so that's what's happened there. He's got a ball. He, that'll, that'll cheer him up a little bit. Probably not a lot, but it'll cheer him up. First glance, Dan. Could go yellows, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. The two yellows, um, top right of the screen as we look at it. Uh, you know, one of them doesn't go, but once you get on... Once you get on the one that's right over the pocket, you can play the other yellow into uh, the opposite corner, the one where the white's closest to now. So it's just really going to be about how he gets up the table. Is that to slow down? Oh, he's played that well. I mean, he's only just... Well, he has he's clipped the red. He's clipped just flicked red, it. Yeah. Any thicker. Yeah. It's probably trouble. Yeah, I think he's... Uh, he's, he's almost got... I, I, I say he's got away with it, but... He's he hasn't. He hasn't played a bad. He's almost played a bad shot because he's only grazed the red. Yeah. So he's okay. He's at the woods. He just needs to. Uh, he's got a good angle now to be able to bring the white out towards the centre of the table. 
it's just how he gets from main thing that can go wrong here is getting from uh, one and a half of the table to the other for these two at the bottom half of the table just needs to settle down here because you know he is slightly out of position here and he just thought he maybe didn't right. get a great contact but yeah I think he's alright I think he drifted over towards the right middle pocket and then it's just a case of leaving yourself the right angle you want to be straight at worst really ok so I don't mind that so he had a bit more angle than it looked so he's actually come down for these two now so like I said it's all about how he attacks this part of the table he's chosen to get on them now and uh, as long as he gets on the one at the top of the table it's quite an easy positional shot to the black so he's got a big area to work in as well I think yeah, yeah. so one this thing one. you'd never question oh. with Mark oh, I think he's just about come far it's enough for awkward queuing though yeah, tra tracer left hand side. He should just, just, just about be alright. I think. Yeah, he's again, you don't, we don't see a problem. You know, we expect him to. But this is very awkward. Yeah, the one, one thing you don't really have a question mark Farns or Fons is pattern play. He's got as good uh, pull brain as anyone that I've, I've ever seen. Really, in terms of figuring out the routes, uh, shot selection is uh, pretty flawless I think at all times for, for, for Mark and there aren't many people you can say that about there's some top top players that you can't say that about but Mark is pretty flawless when it comes to short selection yeah he is and if that will make him feel a lot better with the break and clearance there three frames apiece best of nine Dan it really is better break from Mark got a bit more pace on it finally got a ball um, he's and I think with the break, I mean that was a see that shot there. He thought he didn't get the best of contact, but it didn't didn't really show us anything on that replay there. Yeah, one of those. He's uh, it was wasn't an easy clearance, but it wasn't too tricky for someone of Mark's uh, Mark's ability. But he just needed to. There were a couple of shots where he. Almost ran out of position, but but was just about okay. He's made the clearance, three all. This Dean Shields the break. So, Dean Shields his break. It's been absolutely crunching. It's crunching yeah, again. Really good connection oh. again. It's made a ball. I suppose you could say that was a bit fortunate for that to be kissed in, but it was so close to the pocket, it would have been unfortunate not to be dropping. Yeah, and at first glance, I thought they looked a little bit messy, but now I've, now I've had another look. I think yellows are actually quite nice. Yeah, they've all got a pocket, haven't they? This one first. The one that looks a little bit tough cleanly goes into that corner. Yeah. little bit similar to Mark's previous frame the um, only thing that is likely to go wrong is going to be getting on that yellow at the bottom of the table very easy pot if you get on it unmissable but there's uh, he, he, you haven't got that big a window to land in so it's just all going to be about how he gets up table for that well this is a bit of a stretch I know one thing I won't be reaching this one I neither would I. I wonder if I've gone for it to be honest. <laughs> it was so awkward. So yeah, I think Dean's going to use the yellow in the middle. Yeah, there we go. He's lining up the angle. He wants to leave himself to get on the yellow at the top, at the bottom of the table. So right now he's thinking three shots ahead. He's telling himself what angle he needs to leave here. And he knows exactly where he wants the white ball. Again, he's just going to come and double check. You see the top players do this. They'll just, no matter how easy it looks, we, a lot of people don't realise it's just how important it is to leave yourself the perfect angle when you've got a crucial shot to play in the frame. He seems to be happy with that. Um, I presume he's going to be stunning down the left-hand side of the table rather than trying to find a gap. Yeah, so he's going to be coming over. 
it's got a good angle it's got a big margin of error as well because it widens the angle by by playing it this way has to miss the reds oh it's not has good to go this. a little bit oh no has to go a little bit he got a little bit into that i don't think it's going to be a problem for him uh pot in the yellow but it's all about the the cue ball control getting on the black well can, can he no he's going cushion first yeah i don't think he could pot it well well i mean got a bit more into that yeah, his attention starting to show a little bit. It's okay Perfect. though. Perfect. Great shot. Great shot. Great shot. Very well played. It wasn't that difficult a shot, but no. they're, they're harder to play when you know you shouldn't be playing them because you've just run out of position. But they almost hurt your opponent more a little bit though. Mark would have been perked in his chair, thinking he was going to get a chance, and Dean's uh, Dean still found a way. Yep, he has. The break and clearance is exactly the way to to deal with Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, keep him in his chair. Even Mark can't win frames from his chair. Mainman, just making sure the balls are tightly, tightly racked. Let's have a look at the uh, Farnsworth break. 4 3 down. I mean, Dean Shields has just been asking a question now of Mark. He's putting him un under a little bit of pressure, to be honest to Dean. He is. Uh, doesn't look intimidated by Mark at all. Um, he's played, he's probably played Mark plenty of times now, so. He's, uh, with how Dean's done um, on the tour in the last two or three years especially, he isn't going to be intimidated by anybody. This will all feel quite, feel quite normal for him now. When you first break into the pro ranks and stuff, it, it feels a little bit, can feel a little bit daunting sometimes playing on the, on the stream, being the centre of attention, but I think Dean's well past that stage now. Mark's been past that stage for years. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very confident first shot, queuing off the cushion, up, punching that in at pace. So, a bit of work to do. He's, uh, especially with these two yellows in the bottom left hand side of the table, how he gets on those is going to be interesting. He didn't want to do that. Uh, he's uh, got some hampered queuing. I mean, he, he, I think he's got a choice of but two yellows. The one in the uh, top left on your screen now. One in the top right, obviously. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can quite get through to it. But if he if he can get through to the one, no, he can't. There so. you go. So literally just one choice. It needs to be quite quite pinpoint here with his white ball. That's not the best. That's really not the best. I mean, the only thing about that, he can now drift on the one on the bottom cushion. I don't think he's on it, Mark. Really? I, I think he's, he's just knocked the table. Oh. I think he needs to sort of swerve this slightly to get on that. Oh, dear. That's a bad one. Because if you overhit that, you don't underhit it. If you, if you overhit that, you can play the one in the centre of the table. He's trying to swing it in with some side. That is a fantastic shot. It's always is. going to be tough, though, wouldn't it, being... A in perfect position. It is. Uh, that, that's a great shot, but he needs another one. <laughs> he, he's either playing an ultra thin cut, or or he's somehow got to find his way back up towards this one on the cushion after after putting the one in the middle of the table. Either way, it's difficult. This is a shot, I think. Cue ball. He's going to be travelling. That's not close. He's missed it. He's missed it. I think he's showing a little bit of frustration out there. He is, because look, that, that that was just poor cue ball control, and that is that is probably Mark's strongest point yeah. in, in, in his game, is, is having that white ball on a string. He can make very tricky fi finishes look very easy, or he's just controlling that cue ball. 
That'll settle down. I'm just wondering what Dean was playing there. Was he playing himself in an area or was he trying to get a ball off? Cause I think he was trying to get the ball off the cushion. Because if he, he... He weren't really that close to it then, was he? Not really. It's not no. like he's just flicked it or anything like that. He's got nowhere near it. No contact at all. No. And this now is a massive... This is by far the biggest frame of the match. Not just because of the score. Obviously, that's a big part of it, but... It's um, the fact that Mark's got in, had a tricky finish, but it wasn't too difficult. Had a tricky finish, he's found a way to mess it up. And now Dean's got a chance to go too clear for the first time in the match. And they're not easy. <laughs> Played it at a good pace. <laughs> Played it at a good pace, and that's why it's gone in. Now, do you play the one in the middle of the table to get at it pace and get this out? You're guaranteed, or you're almost guaranteed to be on the one in the right middle. So, I think now is a good time to play it. Well. He's playing the one in the middle and screwing into it. Just wants to flick it. Oh, I don't think that's no. Didn't, I didn't like that shot. No. Um. I think he should have played that a bit more harder. I, I may maybe played the one in the middle of the table. And, and and punched into it at a lot of pace because you're guaranteed to be on the one in the corner. But <coughs> and the skill shot now, you know, we can uh, these blackboard rules. We can play red onto yellow, but they've both got a pot. But yeah. that's not easy, that one, is it? No, it, yellow's too much in the jaw, really. It, it probably it's probably not impossible, but you, you you're probably going to get a double kiss, aren't you? Yeah, and I mean now, what, what's what's he playing? He's playing he's playing a double. Treble. I mean, that was all uh, legs in one basket there, and I've got a lot of time for that because he's taking the aggressive option. But that was a difficult chance, but it was a chance missed, and it's the sort of chances that Dean's probably been taking all weekend to get himself too clear in this match. And that's the second time, obviously, the second frame he had a chance to go too clear as well and didn't. So, good standard, but both chucked a mistake or two in that they wouldn't normally. There's a lot of stake here. Oh, I even heard that. It's a hell of a that kick. That was right? a kick. But it's 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 in the pocket. It's, that's the important thing. So Mark's had a, a bit of a giggle to himself. He wouldn't have been giggling if it wouldn't have gone in. But that was a better break there from Mark. And, uh, you know, Will's expecting him to clear up at this opportunity. But that, uh, that positional shot. shot, I mean, that's, yeah, a great part. But the swerve there. You just saw on the replay how well he played that swerve. I mean, that shot there, he just wasn't even close to that. It's six, maybe eight inches missing that. See, that's the shot there. That shot we've just seen, I think... When he watches this back, he'll think to himself, I should have played the one into the corner and bumped it, just stunned into it at pace. Guaranteed to be on the one in the right middle. But, you know, if, he, if, if, if what he'd have played would have just flicked the yellow slightly differently and opened the pocket out for the red, we wouldn't have been talking about it now. Fine margins. Anyway, got to put it to the back of his mind. Long pause, long pause. Oh, is that going to drop? It's not going to drop. Dry. Second dry one in a row, I think, for Dean Shields. Yeah. Oh, dear. Mark Farnsworth. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure how he's still in this match, to be honest, because he's, uh, he's not been... <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a bit of a, a struggle for him, hasn't it? That's the best way of explaining it. He's took his extension. He's not. He's not quite sure what he wants to do. I think if, if he could cut the red in on that top cushion now, I think he'd play it now. Because as messy as the table looks, they've all got a pocket. The one that yeah, he's playing it now because the one over by the left middle will go off of the other yellows into that middle pocket. You'll see when he takes it, it'll all kind of open itself up for for the frame you could almost leave them as the last two balls that one and the one in line with the cue ball now yeah, I think he takes the two in the top half of the table next if he can it all depends on this angle of this one 
it's just how he's going to get, like you say, angles crucial. I'd love to be straight here. I think he's just off. It'll be alright. I think the uh, I think the red goes past the other red. If, if anything, it's making it a big pocket into the bottom left corner to play after this. that so he's gone a bit far for that whether he meant to be on that or not I don't know but he's going to have to play the one over the corner pocket now I see him play this with a bit of drag try and kill the cue ball just taking a bit of time to think about what he's going to do no he's playing the first one yeah, he could just hold it enough so that he didn't quite he was worried about pushing the yellow into the red and you saw how close it went but Played it well. I suppose maybe that big back pocket now will probably be his last ball. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You want to get close to it though. You uh, it's quite important you get close to that. Yeah. <coughs> so he's stunned back now. Didn't want to leave himself straight there. He's left himself an angle to make sure he can get up close to this last red. This was the first time that Mark Farnsworth has been in the lead since it was two frames to one. Yeah. Probably would have liked less angle. He's going to have to leave the cue ball. He'll just leave himself a shot, won't he? A bit closer to the cushion than he wanted, though, but he'd be fine, I think. Oh, no, he's OK. No wrong with that. So... As, as well as Dean's been breaking or looking like he was breaking at the start. Uh, he's had a couple of dry ones recently, which is... Yeah, did you see him just nodding to his head and all of a sudden, Mark Farnsworth was hearing a lot of frustration coming out of him. And um, he seems to be a different player at the moment. And, uh, he's going to be breaking again next and uh, momentum is with Mark Farnsworth at the moment. It's your difference though, you know, with the with the very good play between the very good players and the the the, the elite, um, the elite, you'd say Farnsworth um, is obviously one of the elite. As in, for well, I mean, at least the last five years, we've been <laughs> top two or three on the planet for the entire time. Yeah, he just the ups and downs and bits and bobs that happen during matches. Um, as, as, as annoyed and frustrated as he can get, uh, he, he he just seems to shrug it off. You know what I mean? He doesn't let it affect his next frame, and that's crucial. Such a such a huge part of this game is between the ears. That's what separates a lot of the very good players from the elite. It's his but best crunching break. break. It's his best crunching break as well. It's probably his, has been his best break, but yeah, the momentum has stopped again for Mark Farnsworth. Just when he's took a lead there, uh, five frames to four. Can Dean level this match up again? Yeah, Dean is straight round. He's straight round looking to see if that yellow passes the red. So the yellow that's closest to the white now. If that passes the red into that corner pocket, these are quite easy. If it doesn't, and that's Mark's chance in this frame, but the way he's played that tells me it does. He might only be able to play it off the far jaw or only have like three quarters of a pocket, but no, it's fine. It flew. So right behind it, just dropped it in. Yeah, uh, he needs to be a little bit careful when he gets to the bottom half of the table, with the yellow closest to the black, and how he gets onto the one that's on its own into this bottom left corner. As we look at it, but they're all there for Dean to take this to five each. So just under it, that one a little bit. Doesn't want to be. Would have loved to have just the cue ball just landed a little bit closer to that bulk line so that he could just play this naturally and get on the one to the left middle. Now he's had to take a slightly different route. He's played that quite well though. He's perfect on the yellow in the centre of the table. Got options.
For his extension, just taking his time to figure out exactly how he wants to go about these last two balls. So this is the bit now. Are you just going to top this for a tiny bit, leave yourself a little bit of a cut on the yellow? Maybe play it with run inside to hold the cue ball. You screw back over towards the middle pocket. The one that's closest, the, the right, right middle pocket as we look. That's what he's looking at now. He's just deciding, but he's only got 10 seconds. Yeah, that is pinpoint. That is perfect. He's got options. He can stun over and play the black into the right middle. He can top it through, maybe play it off two cushions and play the black into the same pocket as the yellow. Yeah, I think two cushions for me, Dean. Oh, just dropping it in. Yeah, just dropped it in. We don't want that. Stay away from that red. He's perfect. Five each, it looks like. What a match. It's flown by. Yeah, it has. We're going to go into a best of five. We are now. That black is down five frames apiece. I mean, a reflection on this match so far, does it deserve to be at 5-5? Five, five? Yeah, I think so. I don't think either of them can complain at, at, at it being five each. They could both say that if they were at their absolute best, they could argue they might be 7-3 up if they were playing flawless stuff. But they've played well. They've played pretty well, and um, I think five each is fair at the moment. Here yeah. we are. It's like in boxing, they call it the championship rounds, don't they? This is where you separate the men from the boys. Yeah, they do. I mean, we're going to be back to this Dean Shields break. It's not been working for him, has it, last couple of times? Is it going to start working for him now? This is a crucial stage now of this match. Is this where the adrenaline starts to just rev up a bit, do you think, Dan? Yes, yeah, it's just, just so much harder than people give it credit for to time the break well under pressure. You see there, he's lost the cue ball. He's I mean, got a ball. He's got a ball, and that's all that matters. Oh, has he got an opening pot? Does it just that yellow into the, the centre? Is that all he's got? Maybe the red into the same centre? Oh. If they're blocking each other, are they? I don't it's know. Really tight. Uh, the only person that's really going to know for sure is Dean. And cue ball on that cushion is horrible. Yeah, this five is five. You yeah. got an easier chance than this, wouldn't you? No, this isn't easy at all. I mean, the reds was his first red coming from. Can he can he play the one into the middle? Is the black tied up if you go reds? Does it just about go? I think it might do. <laughs> Couldn't come out much worse. This, even if you text the yellows. I'd, uh, there's no guarantee of position after, is it? Apart from the one in the top right. No. Does the red go? The red does go. That makes a difference. Right, so the red went, so now it's just all about does that black go? I think if he's right behind it, I reckon it does, you know. It's very tight, though. Very tight. Well, he has got another option of a red, so... I mean, it's quite deceiving. It's only the top one that goes, look. Yep, that's in. So that's OK. It's all about this black, though, Dan. Like you said, I think it's OK, that black. Yeah, but it's quite a nice quite a nice ball. So the red just above the black. If the black does just don't only just go, it's quite a nice ball to leave as your last ball to get onto the black. But you need to be very precise. You, you want to be as close as possible to it. Yeah, I mean, the one on the top, I just thought he'd overdone that a little bit. I think uh, he's OK, only just, but he's OK. Yeah, but I don't, I don't that know. red that's in the, the top half of the table, it's the closest one to the bolt line. I'm not sure if that goes into the top right. If it does, it's simple. Yeah, I'm not sure it does. Um, if it does, he hasn't got a full pocket on it. I think he's having to screw all the way across, twice across the table. Eh? No, it must go. It must go. That was a bit of a nervy one, though. It, it wasn't a clean Dean Shield, clean Dean <laughs> shot. Wasn't a clean Dean shot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there's some, there's some pressure mounting now. I mean, it's loads and loads at stake here. Semi-final place for one. 
He's rerouting. That red doesn't go. I didn't think it did because he had an opportunity on the shot before. I didn't take it. Things are getting hard for Dean Shields because that red definitely doesn't go. So what else has he got on now? Now he has got nothing on. Um, a, not a, a double, maybe? A double on, on the one that's closest to the bulk line? Hold the white on the yellow, but I mean... Come on. <laughs> this is, is he, he's not going for a cut, is he? Surely. Not sure what else he goes for. He's trying to cover the bag, a bit Just containing shot. Uh, uh, it's not a bad option. It's not, I mean... But you, you're going to be in trouble here, aren't you? Probably, yeah. Far, Farnsworth's favourite now for the frame, definitely. This is a chance now for Mark to take control of this match. He's not going to be doing anything extravagant here. Just dropping this white ball onto the yellows. I mean, has he left Dean a thin edge on that red? I don't think so. I think it's a, it is a total snooker. Referee's just called timeout whilst he double checks. Has he did, I didn't really hear that. Did if he give it or not? I don't think he. I don't get his at all. Don't think he did. No. Wow. Well. This is making it a bit harder for Dean than if it's not a total. I think he has to go through the gap of the yellows. Maybe play with a, a little bit of side and go just up and down. To, ideally, if you can, quite a full contact on the red. I slid a bit there. Yeah. I think he's put a trace of Ryan's side on that as well. From what's it like? It's a bit awkward queuing as well, going that way on, wasn't it? But what yeah. oh, fans with? He's, he's really punished Dean there. I think he might. Do you think he's going to tie him up again? I think um, if he can clear up, he will. But um, if this doesn't go, we'll see him just bump it towards the corner pocket and An easy one snooker him. But it went. Yeah. So yeah, no need, no need to be laying any snookers now. It's not the old days. No, it's not. But I mean, it was all about whether he could pot that yellow, weren't it? So, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, he's out. Uh, is, is he deaccelerated there, or is he? Do, uh, do he think he's got a, he's, a bad contact? It, well, uh, w when he had a bad contact on the black, we heard it. I didn't really hear that one, but the way the whites reacted probably does suggest he's got a bit of a kick. Um, he's got the white ball cleaned, which means he thinks he's got a kick. So. It's still fine. Still should be fine from here. Might have to play the yellow into the the lowest of the two yellows now. Which I don't think was his original plan. Clean. Very clean shot uh, there. Clean pot, but wrong, <laughs> wrong angle. Wrong side. Needed to... Needed the cue ball to come out another three or four inches so he could be at least straight. And he is chasing a bit of a finish now. You know, he's not, still not in prime position. Now, does he stun this on and off the cushion, or does he just drop just it in? drag it in. Yeah, he's just played it plain ball, and uh, he's kind of made sure of the pot, but accepted he's going to leave himself a little bit of distance. Does He did need to be... Didn't need to have an angle though to, to come up table for the black. He's played that great. Brilliant pot, brilliant clearance. Brilliant shot, yeah. He's, he's made that look a lot easier than it was. Very, very good from Mark Farnsworth. Leading. Time running. 
So Mark Farnsworth to break again. He's changed his break here, Dan. Is he going for the cut break? He is. He's made one as well. Does that yellow pass into that left centre? On the top centre is on your screen at the moment. Well, whether you go yellows or reds, they're tricky. But you wouldn't say for someone of Mark's ability there it's going to be the hardest clearance he's ever taken out, but it is a tricky one. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I said yellows is because obviously the three yellows in the bottom half of the table just leave himself the perfect angle, uh, as I'm assuming that black passes into this right-hand centre. So that's the only reason I've said that. But th there is there is problems. Is like, I think the balls are in each other's way, aren't they, for pockets, for natural pockets. I think, as well, that's... um. One of the things that tends to happen when you use the cut break, you get a lot more of that. These little clusters, you you definitely get more clusters when you use the cut break. I know there's pros and cons to it, but I think definitely always seems to be a little bit more traffic. Someone like Mark Farnsworth, though, I mean, that's literally that's literally that's what he does. He's so good at it, figuring out these tricky clearances where he's got to play one or two proper pinpoint shots for the cue ball. Does he play this off the red, or does he just... I don't think there's any need if, if he... No if need. He, I, I, well, I don't think it's... Is it on, though? Because that red... Then, no, he, he definitely don't play that off he, the red. If he, if he does, though... No, I think he can play off the red, but he's pushing the red towards the corner pocket, and that could potentially be a problem for him. As you said, Dan, there was no need. And uh, he said, I mean, there's still a bit of a debate about that yellow. Does it pass that red into left centre? If it does, it makes his clearance a lot easier. Than yeah, and and if it didn't, he's looking now, is did it? he did he did he actually want the cue ball to be a little bit closer to the centre of the table so he could screw into the gap on this left hand side cushion Is for a choice of yellows? No, he's not going into him, so he thinks this one. It, we've already had one of these. He's had a one of these already, and he yeah. he's missed it near knuckle. He'd love to top it through and just rest on the red. That'd be perfect. I think he's got the angle. It's a bit awkward queuing though, as well. Yeah, slightly. It does look tight, doesn't it, from our angle? Yeah, I'm pleased to see that down. Yeah, he, he, he's close to it though. Now, if the if the black doesn't go into the corner. And he needs to get straight, and he needs to get topspin on the cue ball, uh, and he's very close to it. Horrible little shots these under pressure. Oh, he's played that well. Yeah, that they're is, um, they're tentative shots, aren't they? They're I mean, horrible shots. Remember, this is six five or up for a place in the semi final. Yeah, there's a lot of money at stake as well, and this ten thousand pounds to the winner. The money's about to ramp up significantly. Luckily for Mark, it did go in the corner, so well played. Brilliant very clearance. Finish. That yeah. was a tough, tough clearance, weren't yeah. it? Very good, very good uh, in any circumstance, let alone 6-5 up in the quarterfinals of a big tournament. Yeah, and it, that's the difference, isn't it, against these top players. He elected to change his break to the cup break, yeah, and as you said, Dan, a lot of balls, they do go to the left-hand side, and that's what we saw. Mm. But he just held himself together. He didn't do anything too extravagant, and he, he, he basically just kept it as simple as possible, and uh, and he got his reward, and, I mean, that was a, a very delicate little... Yeah, it's what the best shot. players do, that, you know. He had a couple of shots there where he had to be absolutely spot on with the cue ball. You know, a couple of inches out, and he's all of a sudden got a, a quite a big problem for, you know, in terms of keeping in position and making the finish. And um, the couple of shots he really needed to be perfect on, he was. And that's what these elite players do when it really, really matters. Good okay. connection again. Very he's got good. a ball. Yeah, Nadine's got to tell himself, look, he's back, look, he's made a ball there, he, he can get these, these th these are pretty good, right? but he's got to tell himself, he's one dry break away from having the break at 7 all. Yeah, I think the match isn't in his hands at the moment, he is going to rely on a, a Mark Farnsworth dry break, possibly, but he, first things first, Dan, 
he needs to be clearing these up to give himself any yeah. chance. Look, they're not they're not easy, but they 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 kind of go. You know what I mean? He'll he'll be happy with this. So, absolutely. I mean, I think he's got a choice of either colour set really, but I mean, the yellow that's on the corner on this right hand side. So that's the reason why he's uh, electing these reds. And the, the toughest red he's got is the one on that top cushion there, which is near the middle pocket. Yes, but even well. the, you know the way that Dean cues, that's not a tough shot for him. It's where he, he'd love a little bit more time to be able to think about how he's going to go about these. I thought there he could, if he was a bit straighter, he might have played the red Ooh, down okay. the bottom. I think, bottom. He, I think he'd be a bit disappointed with that. No, I think he's all right. He, he's but he's having to play a little cannon now. But he probably doesn't mind that. This is one of those, because he's so close, one red's so close to the other, these are a bit easier to control. I think he'd play it running right-hand side, maybe. It's all about the pace. To the pocket, yeah, that's okay. I mean, yeah. he's going to have to do a bit of, you know, cue ball control off the two cushions basically wants to off two cushions the line is to sort of cannon into the black but just fall short yeah. exactly where he's putting his cue it's all about the pace the angle's quite natural the worst thing that can happen here is go beyond the black and uh, you've yeah. just got to make sure that is doesn't give any chance of that you, you don't want to reach the black you don't want to reach the black That's why your line needed to be the black, because if you play at that pace but with the right line, then you nudge into the black and you're perfect. Just a fraction out. I think maybe he got a little bit too much side on the cue ball a bit and maybe he's popped but it didn't, a bit thick. didn't didn't need to, possibly, yeah. I think everything that he could do wrong he did wrong on that shot. Yeah, look, there's uh, two things that can go wrong there. You can slightly overhit it and you can he's got he's got no time. He's had to lash at that a little bit. That's actually not a bad result. <laughs> it's not a bad result at all. I'll take that. But Mark, Mark knows what to do to put him under all sorts of pressure, doesn't he? Um, yeah, he needs to find a snooker, though. And yeah, he does. He's. Uh, I couldn't have landed much better for Ding, really, I mean, considering sure, where he was. Not sure if Mark's got a pot on here today. Left centre. The one just above the black spot. I'm not sure if he can get through to that. I mean, the overhead there uh, says he can, but yeah, I think there's a containing shot coming here. Are you playing this in the middle? Oh, here, let's go. That yeah. is clean. And now leaving himself on his most awkward yellow. I mean, that, what, them two yellows that's together, do they need developing? I think they do. I think they're far enough apart for him to maybe be able to just um, create a plant there. Just wants to get quite close to it if he can. They're definitely far enough apart for him to play, play it as a plant. If Mark Farnsworth cleans these up, he's definitely lifted his leg up, the, the level to um, to the end, towards the end of this match, hasn't he? Yeah, what we said, wasn't it? Just just championship rounds, if you want to compare it to boxing, just kicked on from fireball. You know, a couple of mistakes. He played quite well, but a couple of mistakes he wouldn't normally make in the early part of the match. And from fireball, if he does take these out, he's, he's played a, a, a perfect three frames all about this plant yeah. oh. just about oh. wow I did a, had a little bit of a thought about it Dean's laughing I think I think Mark didn't want to laugh but I think he's had to Dean's <laughs> funny side <laughs> yeah he's too nice Dean he is and uh, be laughing at that uh, be fuming You said that plank could be made, Dan, and that's exactly what Mark Farnsworth has done. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but it's uh, it it was the key. It was the key, and it was one. It was effectively one shot to win in the match. Seems to be striking the ball a lot more cleaner now as well. He, yeah. he settled in. I mean, this is his first match on this match table, so. You know, but it's been it's been a good performance towards the end of that. We didn't see the, the normal done, farms. Though. It's just done what he needed to do. You know, he's, he's hung in there after a couple of mistakes, but playing okay. And uh, then when it really really, really mattered at five all, he's uh, he's played perfect. He's played really well. 
Yeah, and you saw the uh, the response there from the crowd that was watching, and uh, you know they've got to appreciate what they're seeing. And uh, Mark Farns have created some, pre well, he had some great clearances towards the end of that match, and uh, deservedly into the semi-finals. <laughs> so we will be bringing a semi-final to you next as well. So this is now getting very, very tasty indeed. Oh, we'll boil and dunce the next what game? I oh, know. What a match. Anybody who's not watching this, where are you? I mean, I know there's firework displays on, etc. But Scotland's <laughs> finest. They're the only fireworks are on here next. <laughs> yeah. Dunce the boil. Scotland's Scotland's very best. I'd like to uh, just listen to Mark on his uh, interview, just to see, you know, when Kevin does interview him, just to see see what he was saying to him and uh, about how he was going on about that match, etc. Yeah, I think we're ready to hand over now, actually. I think we've got Kev Barton ready with uh, our winner, Mark Farnsworth. That's probably like... It's just well, uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'm just <laughs> Deep in conversation there with Mark on, uh, on a fantastic victory. Uh, you knew we had to play well to beat Dean because he's been, uh, you know, playing really some great stuff over the past six, eight months. Yeah, I think Dean's one of the one of the more, their players that's been proved probably the most um, on the tour the last probably two or three years. I think uh, he's always had the talent, but I think he's probably maybe a little bit self-belief. Um, but I think probably this season, maybe his last season, I think he's, he's has he won a couple of tournaments. So he's he's, he's ran Three deep finals. in. Uh, I think he's ran deep in. Um, I think he beat him one of the pro events. I think it might have been here actually. Uh, he played really really well. So I knew I had to play well. Um, I thought I did. Um, Dean's probably a couple of bad positions with our team in there, but overall I thought it was a pretty decent standard match. Even the break, I've, I've hit them pretty sweet most of the time. I've, I've, I've gotten a couple of drives, but I've took a couple of big finishes out, so delighted, delighted with the win. Yeah, and the great form that you've been showing over the past 12, 18 months um, it just seems to continue, and your confidence must be as high as it's ever been. Yeah, um, a few things went against us. I, like, I've, I've only recently went to tie am choke, and it's just absolutely like ridiculous the difference when you're playing somebody with triangle. I've used triangle since I was probably seven, eight year old, and you, 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 I'm stubborn. I had an interview with you earlier on, and I'm one of the stubborn, most stubborn people you can ever meet. And it took us a long time to change from triangle to, to tie am. And then when you see the difference, obviously Dean's playing with triangle shot, and the lumps on the white ball was literally nearly every other shot. So like I, I've, I think I've had two or three kicks in one frame, and one of them had like, heavy contacts, and you just don't. You, you, when you're using the time, that, that comes out of your game. You know, and it's just it's mad when you go to somebody who's it's it's a it's a marks on the tables. When I practice, I don't even brush my table anymore. So literally, just leaves nothing on the table. And you're playing somebody with triangle, and it just completely changes it. The, the, the stream tables play slightly different than the other tables. Probably not, nothing wrong with it all, but obviously the other ones seem a bit quicker. So the pace caught us up a couple of times, plus the heavy contact. So I was up against it at times, just delighted to get the win. I'm sure the uh, town chalk representatives uh, <laughs> will, will be in touch shortly as well, Mark. Um, yeah, obviously, semi-final, um, the biggest event on the tour calendar. Uh, what would it mean to you? It's one that's probably missing from your... Uh, massive array of titles. What would it mean to you if you were lifting the crown later on tonight? Yeah, I think I've won a couple of opens over here. I think, about, um, but I, I don't think I've. I don't even think I've been to the semi final. final. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm rubbish with stats, uh, but yeah, it's a great event. And I think the the big thing about this, it's the same as uh, sporty before. When you've got the tours at Newcastle and even Coventry, you get a lot of the locals. You come over here, and the support from the local players, it's it's brilliant. You know, you get people from the like the government and the, the ministers and stuff like that. They come in. They all want to chat. You know, they're interested in the game. You know, they watch the watch the. Video some of them play but they watch a lot of the matches and you know they have to a little bits of advice and stuff it's great it's great for the game well you might be rubbish at stats mark but uh, there's certainly nothing rubbish on uh, what we've just seen there good luck for the rest of the tournament thanks very much so mark farnsworth marches into the semi-final mark pickworth and um, he knew he had to play well against an informed dean shields and he did exactly that yeah, he did. I mean, the, the, what the clearances he took out in the uh, the latter stages of the match just proves what, what the level that Mark Farns was at at the moment. He's dug very deep in that match because things weren't going to plan for him and uh, he had to think of a way to get over the line against Dean Shields. But, you know, Dean Shields, he's had a, he's had a cracking tournament. He's queued really well. He's had a few things go against him today. So he'll be taking a lot of positives out of this. But Mark Farns with He's here to win this. He wants that, and he seems to have a bit of good spirit about him. Because at the very start of that match, he, he, we didn't know what sort of Mark Farnsworth we were seeing at the moment, but he seems to be in good spirits now. 
Well, he certainly should be. He's in the semi-finals, and uh, there's a nice £10,000 up for grabs for somebody tonight. Um, so he is in the second semi-final, which will be coming up after our first semi-final. And matches really don't get much bigger than this. Liam Dunster against Mark Boyle, the Battle of Scotland, two of the greatest players in the world right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always say the world champion, the, the pro number one, Liam Dunster against Mark Boyle. I mean, anybody who's not watching this, now I don't know what's going off and uh, yeah there is firework displays on but the fireworks are going to go off on this table at some point today and it's probably going to happen in mm. this next match and both those players have been showing great form I mean it literally is a coin flip between these two <laughs> yeah it is I mean I was talking to Liam in his um, interview but on his previous match just before the break and uh, he, the one thing he mentioned he said that um, I'd like to be playing Mark Boyle because he beat me uh, last weekend at eight frames to two so I think that's in the back of his mind he wants to get one over on him and uh, either one of these two players the best of friends these two mm. played each other hundreds and hundreds of times and uh, but they want it. so you're only as good as your last win aren't you mm. so it's really important whoever gets through and uh, I'm sure there's some uh, bragging rights at the end of it Absolutely, Matt Boyle obviously is, um, you know, he's had a lot of things going on in his life, but it's just great to see him back uh, competing at the highest levels where he belongs uh, in another major semi final with a chance of, of landing the top prize. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're also seeing, you know, Mark Boyle, he, he's won a tour already this season, so he, he is in some great form. He's won a lot of things in the UK as well. Well, Liam, yeah, he's not really been in the winner's circle that much and uh, he wants to get in there. So this is going to be a very, very good match indeed. Absolutely. Well, it's the Battle of Scotland, I'm sure. Any, if you're a pool fan, I think like you've alluded to, Mark, whether you're Scottish, English, Irish or you know, you're watching from overseas, this is a must-not miss match. Yeah, these, these two players are two of the best players in the world right now. Two of the most informed players, definitely over the last four, five, six years, etc., and uh, oh, it, it's it's going to be an absolutely unbelievable one. I mean, the semi-final that's going to come up next is going to be unbelievable as well. I mean, I know there's still a quarter-final still yet to be finished, but it possibly could be a John McAllister, Mark Farnsworth, two former world champions. What a final four that would be. No offence to the other players that aren't, aren't in that final four, but wow, mouth-watering. Well, I can't wait. I think that's enough from us. Um, the referee's ready. The players are just about ready. Let's hope our commentators are ready as well. Over to you, Andy. Thanks, Kevin. A look at this for a match. Liam Dunster, Mark Boyle for a place in tonight's final. What do you think, Dan? Have you got a coin? Well, I think uh, you look, it's a coin flip. If you had to on, you know, over the last few years, OK, I think... At, at his absolute best, I think Dunster is is the best. But it's fine, fine margins. You could maybe make a case to say that Liam's a air first a slight favourite, but you're pretty much flipping a coin for me. Uh, especially once you get to the to these later stages and with semi-finals now. It's not first round. They've both played three matches. Um, yeah. I, I predict a close one. Yeah, so I think it could go close as well. Going to be all about the break as u as usual. Yeah, I think that's Mark doing the peace sign to the camera, not. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> not anything else. Uh, he's uh, got his water ready. He's prepped up. He's similar. So similar in every way. Even the body language sat in the chair, the, the pair of them, they don't like to give anything away. Quite emotionless in the chair. Very composed. Both wear a glove. Seems to be a lot more trendy these days. I remember when I first started playing, uh, no one wore a glove. It was kind of, what are you wearing a glove for? You know, and, and, and now they're all doing it. And they both tend to cut break. A lot of similarities. I do. Liam's made a ball again, though, with that cut break. Like mentioned in the last match, you tend to get the balls go over to one side of the table, as you can see here. But he, he won't care. He's, he's made a ball. They're all in the open. Um, not the easiest clearance he's ever had, but he's 
they're all there. Just a, a couple of pinpoint positional shots. Nothing needs to be broken out. Oh, there's an argument for reds or yellows here. There is. And he's used his extension straight away, which is a, a common thing. He's just taking his time. Wants to map his route out, as we've said previously. And yet, nothing to break out. Just needs some accurate positional play. And they're both known for that. Yeah, I think Cubal controls literally, yeah, t in terms of attributes, top of both their piles, really. The, the lists he's the pinpoint with the white ball often make the game look a hell of a lot easier than it is because they're never out of position. You know, they, they seem to seem to always have the cue ball on a string. So very rarely do, they, do you see them have to pull a big shot out. Decided to take yellows. Yeah, and I think you could just about hold now uh, for I think the yellow in the middle is going to be next for him. But he's got options. If he went too far, he could go up table. And he's managed to hold. Yeah, just grazed the knuckle on the way in. But the pace that he's played at has, uh, has, has meant that it's still gone in. If he takes this ball into the middle... He opens up the ball at the lowest point of the table, which will be his next ball, you would think. Yeah, and... So it's interesting to see whether he rests into the red or not. So it's quite often in commentary you're not quite sure because obviously the player's right behind the shot. If he's got the angle, he might just nudge into the red. Flicking off it, sort of half ball, quarter ball, rest on it, and then he's perfect to just come up table for the last two. Didn't need to. Just slightly the wrong side of the yellow, he would ideally have liked to have been moving the cue ball up the table. Yeah, he'd have loved to have been sort of maybe half a roll lower so that he could have just played the yellow straight into the middle. He's, he's just overhit that one slightly. So he's going to leave himself a bit of a tester next. Can't take too much of a liberty with a middle pocket from from that, from an acute angle. This is a bit of a tester early doors. Queuing just off the cushion. Yeah, asking the question. Yeah, these are much easier when you're, you're sort of five two, five three up in the match and you're in your groove. But first frame, you never really feel like you settled till you've won your first frame. Perfect. Handles the shot clock really well, Liam. Uh, I think better than most. Yeah, we discussed that earlier in commentary. He manages it really well, doesn't he? Really well. Right yeah. down to the last second, he never seems to change any tempo. Nope. He doesn't seem. It doesn't ever seem rushed. And uh, your sort of natural logic would be that your slower players might struggle on the shot clock. And Liam's not one of the quicker players. Um, but yeah, he doesn't. If anything, he handles it so well that I think it's an advantage for him playing on the. Um, on the on the main main arena where you've got the shot clock. Yeah, definitely doesn't phase him. Right, nothing phases Mark Boyle either. Very poker faced. Very determined look there from Mark. He knows he's got a job to do. Yep. And we know how well he breaks. So once again, usually a cut break. I think Mark as well was probably the first top, top player to do the cut break really, really well. I think even to this day, he's probably got the best cut break. May not be that case in this match, but uh, consistently over time. 
He seems to get better splits. He doesn't seem to have the clusters that other get others get when they use the cut break. I, I tend to think he's the he's the best I've seen. Yeah. And I think he generates the the most power with accuracy yeah. through the side of the pack. You see, look at that. Whether he's got a ball or not is another thing. But he's he's there isn't a if anything the uh, the uh, the cluster's gone the other side of the table, but n not made a ball, which is all that really matters. And um, Liam's in. Yeah, he can't control that, can you? He hit them well, hit them with purpose. That's all you can do sometimes. You know, people chop and change the break, but I think half the time you only really need to chop and change it if you're not hitting them well. There's only so much you can do. I think I think reds have got to be the ball. I think play the plant first up, but you play the plant half ball so the yellow comes back away from the pocket. Yeah, that's key, isn't it? Yeah, if he gets that right, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. But it's a big if because if he does play the plant half ball, it's probably going to be cannon in the cue ball afterwards. So whether he wants to play it straight away. I'll just screw the white back out. Yeah, away from the yellow. There we That'll go. do him. Well, actually, he's, he's he's potted both, so he can go yellows if he wants now. M might even see him do it. They're both pretty good. Take his choice, can from here? Yeah. Well, he's sticking with the reds. Can't blame him. See players do that quite a lot. He's played that into the far end of that middle pocket, if that makes sense, to hold the cue ball. If he'd have played that into the centre of the pocket, the white would have been much closer to that bulk line. It's a little delicate thing you a lot of people at home might not notice that these top players do. He's just put with his hand there where he wants to be for his last shot. That's where he wants to be round about where the black spot is or in line with it so you can play that red into the right middle and drift down and play the black into the same pocket two balls into the same corner and as Dan alluded to the red nearest the middle will be his last red yeah see again he's just come round and it's just all part of the pre-shot routine, just composing himself. That's the line he wants to be on for his final red to that right middle pocket. So basically you want the cube lever on the spot where the black goes, or in line with the spot and the red. That'll leave himself a natural angle. Just a small stun. He'll be happy with that. Yeah, I'll take that. So this red into the middle, black into the same middle, yeah, he may just flick into the yellow. He's taking a little bit of time. He's going to play it with lots of side to try and avoid the yellow. <coughs> yeah, he's played it with lots of side to try and avoid it, but he's perfect. Played that really well. Didn't want to be flicking that yellow on the way past because he's been going towards that corner pocket. Perfect start. One apiece. Faultless. Has to be said. 2-0. 2-0, excuse nil me, all was one piece. Yeah, all Mark's done is uh, broken very well, but not made a ball. And Liam's just done what Liam does. You see it so often on these, these big matches, and the very, very best, like Liam, will, will uh, just make the perfect start to a match, kind of like stamp their authority on the game. 
it's, it's so, you, you, like I said before, you never really feel like you've settled to you've won your first frame and so much of the games between the ears is so important that you get off to a good start. So Liam once again breaking from the side. Yeah, made a ball last time in the top right corner as we look at the screen. It's not normally where he makes his balls when he cut breaks. But he won't care as long as he gets one. So the other quarter final between Andy Crowsdale and John McAllister has just gone seven each. I think it was seven four, or at least seven five to John. So that's now in a deciding frame. The winner of that plays Mark Farnsworth in our second semi final. Back to this match though, and Liam's made a made a ball off the break again. Taking the yellow into the top left corner. First up. I like this. A lot of players aren't brave enough to do it, but playing a missable shot first up rather than just take the easy option because overall it's making the clearance easier. Yep, leaves all his work at one end of the table. Should he get this one in the middle? Yeah, I mean, he's, he, with that one, that one shot, he's kind of broke the back of the clearance really they're all lined up just just, just waiting for him there just needs to play this gentle enough not to run into the yellows again he's played it thick into that into that middle pocket to hold the cue ball and he's, he's perfect some start this from Liam fantastic start yeah very difficult to play against this impossible Mark's just got to sit tight, wait for his chance. Just so clean, his technique. Makes it look so easy, I said this before, but... Very little movement of the cue ball. Doesn't move it unless he needs to. Very yeah. tight control. Yeah, he is absolutely textbook. If you were gonna teach a youngster how to how to play this game or give them somebody to model their game on, it would be Liam. With everything. You know, the I mean as yeah, funny enough he's actually run a little bit far though, he's slightly out of position, but We'll forgive him. We'll forgive him. He is human. Just needs to draw this ball. He's going to leave himself a little bit of an angle, but it shouldn't be a problem for him. In fact, no. It's perfect. Is it okay? Perfect. The perfect start for Liam Dunster. About to be 3 0. Just found that, heard that John McAllister has won the deciding frame of his last of, of the last quarter final, so it'll be John McAllister against uh, Mark Farnsworth, two former world champions in the in the other semi-final. What Mark Pickworth said in the studio, it's probably the dream quarter final, the dream semi-final lineup. No disrespect to everybody else. Tough game at the top. Mark Boyle's done nothing but sit down for 15 minutes. And he's 3 0 down. He's, played, he's hit one break. He hit them well, just didn't make a ball. 
the yeah. pressure that puts on this now as well, you know, he needs to needs to make it up. It's hard enough from three nil down, but needs to make a ball. In your mind, you're probably thinking, if I go dry here, I'm five nil down. Liam's, you know, Liam's playing that well. Yeah, imperative that he makes a ball. Imperative that he has a chance in this frame. He's got to take the positives. He's done nothing wrong yet. He broke well. Just didn't make anything. The referee there just, uh, just having a little bit of difficulty racking the balls tight, but better that he takes his time. Yeah, it's crucial. You don't need every ball touching. You don't want any gaps in the pack. It can you know, mean they don't split great. And obviously you want the balls to be in exactly the same position every time. He correctly lifts the black ball up to make sure he's placing it on the spot. Doesn't guess where the spot is, he has to make sure he's absolutely pinpoint. So, 3 0. Needs a ball off the break. So well, boy, you'd hit those. First glance, he's got a easy opener on red. I'm not quite sure if he can get through to yellow in the middle, so he might be forced to go reds. He's called his extension just while he's figuring out he wants to do. I don't think he can see a yellow in the middle so I think reds might be the colour anyway because of the, the, the red in over the bottom left hand corner pocket it's going to make life difficult so just going to have to play this first shot he, he's going to have to control the can and he, he can't avoid the other red so it's just how white reacts afterwards sometimes need to trust a little bit to luck now I don't know if Mark knows yet or not, or but whether these two reds that are together are blocking each other. It does look that way, Dan, doesn't it? Yeah, if he, if he can, if he can just get into it, and then it's yeah, it's, it's hard to know. If it was red and yellow together, you'd think is he going to clip the yellow first, maybe? But he hasn't got to worry about that. He can maybe well, play playing a bit it, of side. He's go. playing it, yeah. Yeah, he, he may have even clipped the other red first there, but... It did look that way, didn't it? I thought yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't matter. The frame's opened up. It's there for him. Just to be a little bit careful. It's, there's yellows in the way of the, the, the red over the middle pocket and the one over the... Well, I suppose it'd be top left as we look at it, but on the bottom left-hand side of the table. Yeah, just shown us there where he wanted to be on the side rail after this ball. Yeah, he's actually got quite a small window to come across, so he'll use this side cushion, trace the left-hand side and drift over towards the, the red in the middle. You know, the closer he is, the better. That's very good. Now, I just want to draw back to kind of the other side of the yellow next to the white ball now. Has he gone too far? For a wow, second, wow, I wow. thought he was in the middle there. Yeah, and he's... I thought uh, he was in the middle. He's, he's gone a little bit too far to be able to play this with... So if he was closer to the black, he could have played it thin with left-hand side. So he's after gonna, gonna have to come across the opposite side of the table. Just needs to avoid the yellow. Needs to avoid this yellow. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. They can go wrong sometimes, those shots. But he's back. He's on the board. He's on the board. So, 3-1. Liam leads. And Mark finally on the scoreboard. 
Another great break. Look at the power he generated there. I think that's four breaks and four first visit finishes. Yet to see a mistake from either player. The only mistake so far is my uh, incorrect scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it was one apiece. Time to wake up. Uh, referee again, just making sure they're absolutely pinpoint. Does Liam often break from the other side if he's struggling? Does he tend to move? Does he? Look, some, sometimes. I don't know if I've ever seen him. <laughs> no, he, he sometimes he moves and and does kind of the. Do you, what should do we call it? The front ball smash. Sometimes he does that, but yeah, most of the time he will. He, he's not afraid to change it. You see, some people are very stubborn. Yeah. I'm one of them. I, I'm front ball smash. That's it. I, I sort of. Uh, I've probably hit a cut break 20 times in my entire life during practice and thought this just isn't for me. You know, I feel like if I'm queuing well, then the front ball smash is the one for me. Yeah, we discussed uh, that earlier. Yeah, a lot of the time I think um, when you're breaking well, is is tends to just be when you're queuing well anyway. It's, all, it's, it's a shot, it's not a, it's not a whack. It's, it's about timing. So if you, are, if you are playing well and queuing well, then you tend to break better anyway. When I... When I'm breaking at my best, it's normally later on in the tournament where I feel settled and, you know, so, yeah, I, I tend to just leave it as it is. But Liam does chop and change. I've seen him do it a few times. He'll change mid-match and... Because I think, you know, every table plays slightly differently. Every table, you know, will be... Even if it's just the smallest of fractions, like quicker than... Quicker or slower than the other table you've just come off or... You know, it's... Uh, Every cushion slightly springier than the next. It, it's, um, he's not stubborn with it, but he does favour that break. It came up dry though, so Mark's in again. This is what he needed. Exactly what he needed. a good result. He knew he was running into the yellow, didn't want to. So quite a fortunate little double kiss there and just held the cue ball perfect. So Liam has his, uh, a yellow tight on the left hand cushion as we look. A little bit of insurance should he need it. see Mark going about his business he kind of he's he's already used his extension so he hasn't really got an awful lot of time to think about how and, and what order he wants to take these balls in doesn't want to hit this too hard because well he's actually potted that a bit thick he wanted to pot that thinner and just rest on the yellow but he's potted it thick and now all he's left with is a tricky cut, very thin cut into the right middle pocket, and I fancy him to get it, but it's, it's where the cue ball's going, which is your bigger problem. He hasn't got much time to think about it. It's in. Well, is he, is he going to get away with it? Oh, not really. Not really. He was trusting a little bit to Lucky. He almost found the route he was looking for. The, the path he was looking for but just slightly too close to the red to be able to cut that in can play the red long but how's he going to get on the last one is he drawing off the side of the yellow he's tried he has tried as he snookered if he can see an edge he can probably pot it but it's definitely close Referee's called a timeout, so he's checking to see if it's a total oh snooker, and it is, yeah. It's a fair effort, that, wasn't it? It was a Straight good effort. off the side of the yellow. Inventive. 
Yeah, and this all stemmed from that shot, well, four shots ago now, three shots ago, where he just... Very, very easy red over that left middle pocket, but he just potted it slightly thicker than he wanted. So instead of resting on that yellow closest to that left middle, he just flicked off the side of it. And that was sort of the beginning of the end for, for Mark. Position just got more and more difficult. Liam's called his extension. Looking to see where he can hide the cue ball. You can tell he's thinking... You can tell what he's thinking because he's putting this cue exactly where he wants it, but doesn't want to leave a gap. There is a big gap there. Needs to be accurate here. Yeah, or, or, or does he come all, all the way up the left-hand side of the table, so thin off the yellow on the right, but actually bring it to the left of the black? Because then he has actually got quite a big... Well, he'll take that every day of the week. It's exactly where he was stood. Yeah, and although it's can and the yellow, the, the cue ball was still going exactly where he wanted it to, so it's a very good shot. Very good. So he's looking at the side rail. He's going to try and kick the red. And if he's playing it at pocket speed or thereabouts, maybe a little harder... He's going to try and kick it in that corner. He needs to make this... Well, he hits it. Is it going in the middle? He fluked it. Oh. Well, it's sort of... Sort of bad news, really, there, because... <laughs> he's also now left Liam a massive pocket for that right middle. He's also... He's left Liam the perfect angle, if he wants to, to cut this yellow into the right middle and go into his two... Two balls that are stuck together on the left near the left middle pocket. Yeah, going to be developing these two. You would think. Yeah, and they they definitely all go now. It's a good shot. Still a lifeline for for Mark though because he's got the yellow closest to the red on that side cushion. But Liam being Liam, I mean, he's going to have to play one very good positional shot to get on it. You'd back him to do it. Once again, manages his time really well. Yeah, very well. So he's looking here. He can... Is he, is he looking to... Maybe play a snooker here. Is he going for it? Is he? No, he's point, pointing his finger. I think he's looking at playing a snooker. Play the yellow into the jaw, maybe. Very clever. He's played the yellow into the jaw and covered the one cushion escape or one of the routes for the one cushion escape with that yellow. I mean, Mark can get to that red off of one cushion but he's going to have to play it with in fact I'm not even sure he can actually know the blacks he's playing a massive there we go this will swerve Oof. oh look at the action he's got on it I mean look at where the cue ball's landed the action he's got on that's ridiculous but not quite not quite there yeah it was a little bit desperate, wasn't it, that? But he didn't have a lot. No, didn't have a lot at all. Very clever snooker from Liam. You know, like I said, some some people would just lay the snooker and, you know, li Liam's played it into the jaw, but at the correct pace to cut off that one cushion escape. Very clever from Liam. Are we just having the yellow cleaned? Is that... Looks like it. I see you, Liam uses free visit to push this yellow over that right middle pocket. And with that shot, he's got the table at his mercy. He's perfect here. I mean, he has literally got about 20 different routes he could take these balls.
He has, but you know he always takes the right one, doesn't he? He does. He does. I, I said this about Mark Farnsworth in the previous match. He shot selection such an underrated part of the game. Like how, how in terms of how easy you make life for yourself. And um, I think Farnsworth and Liam. I'd probably put Mark Boyle in that category as well. It, it just make life easy for themselves by the way their brain works and how they figure out the clearances. Even this, where you got four or five balls left. Now and again, you see other players maybe rush it because they think it's too easy, or they just don't take that extra two or three seconds to compose themselves. Yeah, there's always one easier way to go, isn't there? And I think that's true. Some players, they just look at the table and think, well, there's nothing to miss here. And you just, a little error, little positional error, and you can uh, put yourself in trouble. But yeah, as you said, Liam and Mark, neither of them guilty of that. No, and so far, Liam's still, still to make a mistake, really. Perfect start. Perfect pull. 4-1. Four one race to eight. No errors. Dry break. I mean, you can't do anything about a dry break, can you? No, we see here. Not the hitting thing, it well. The only thing Mark's done wrong in the entire match is 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 just there. He's just run slightly out of position, and to be honest, he still doesn't miss the ball. He's just uh, run out of position once. And Liam does what Liam does. He punishes. This is the shot here. Really clever. Off that knuckle until that yellow came out of the neck. He could have just played it up the cushion. You know, or played it a bit softer. But he's played it into the knuckle at the uh, slightly firmer pace than he needed, needed to. To cover the easy escape. So, Mark Boyle. It's more and more important as time goes on, but he needs a ball. The yellow flew straight into the corner pocket. Yeah, he's hit them really well as well. Really good. Been a great standard of breaking. Yeah. In this match. Good split. Very good split. Is it's called his extension. Probably, arguably the only. Difficult shot he'll play in this clearance is is the first one, or like we said before, he's just just mapping out his route. Smart move, take your extra time just to make sure you're doing the right thing. Make life easy for yourself. He's going to go yellows, I think. Yeah, I think he'll just want to stun back just past the black. That is. Absolutely perfect, I think. Slightly overrun there. Slightly overrun. Well, that is as bad as that could have come out, but even still, hampered Q, and he's still got an easy pot into the left middle pocket. He should... I think rest on the red. If he can hit it full ball, I think he should still be alright. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. I mean, that was as bad as it could have come out, so he's, he's still okay. Still hampered queuing, actually. Uh, a bit of distance between these two, although the pot's very easy. Unmissable if you've got your hand on the tape, if, if, if you're, you're not hampered queuing, but. Needs to make sure not to put any sort of unwanted side on this. This wants to leave a little angle. Doesn't want to go straight, but it yeah, it's a great shout. You, you, the last thing you want to be is dead straight on these. I think he's just about perfect, actually. I think if he tops it through, he's sort of going, going straight into that red. If he could put the cue ball where the red is now, he, he'd take that. 
It actually screwed behind it. Perfect. It's going to leave a little bit of distance between... It's, it's slightly off straight the wrong side, but... For someone like Mark, I don't see that being a problem. Yellow to middle. Just had a survey. In running, 85% of people think that uh, Liam Dunster is going to win this match. Would have been a lot closer to 50-50 before the game started, but it's only 40. Long way to go. I think it was 4-1 when the uh, poll was done. I'm sure those uh, percentages would just change slightly at 4-2. But he has still got work to do, obviously. Yeah, I mean, at this level, you, you kind of... Th especially the way Mark's breaking, or it looks like he's breaking. At this level, you, you sort of think he's he's only one dry break away from Liam to get him back to four each. Up to press, both been breaking well, been making balls most of the time, we've had some decent splits, we've had a few tricky ones, what's this one going to be? dry. Last ball rolling? No, no, it's dry. It's dry and I mean the reds. Yeah, such a dominant colour set. Yeah, he's got to go reds here. I mean the, the, the two over the corner, I don't know if the first one's the first one's blocking the second one, but surely they'll just double kiss each other in all that. Yeah. So I, I can't this is massive for Mark. This is a really good chance to get back to 4-3. On serve, so to speak. Yeah, this should be a quick frame. If he gets back to 4-3. His break. Could be all square in a few minutes. But he's got to get this clearance first. He needs his break to work. Yeah, just the red closest to the left-hand side cushion. You know, he needs to get on that in such a way where he's he's wants to be as close to that as possible when he plays it. Certainly doesn't want to be leaving that to his last ball to get onto the black from. So he'd love to get on it next. And that's why he's played. Yeah, that is absolutely perfect. He couldn't have placed that better with his hand. He's so close to it, he can probably be fairly confident enough to play it with a little bit of pace and screw the white ball back a little bit. From the overhead, actually, it looks a little bit more away from the cushion than I first thought. Just called his extension. working through in his mind how he wants to go about this what ball he wants to leave to last yeah he's got to set this one in the middle well that's definitely not what he played just needs to make sure that once he plays the plant, they're not covering each other. He's fine. He's fine. Takes a left, left hand, one of the two. Back out. And he can draw straight back out to the side rail. Yeah, it just needs to miss the yellow he's closest to on the way back. Just to come back in a line with his cue, where he's queuing. Perfect. 
Perfectly straight cue from Mark Boyle. 4-3. What a match. What a match. Pinpoint position. 4-3 with the break. What a treat for a neutral. Fantastic match. Was properly in the swing of it. Battle mode. Yeah. Look at the focus. It's marked to break next. Liam always seems to just sort of stare straight ahead at the table. You won't see him looking around the room and sort of smiling, catching a smile off people and he just stays focused, looks at the table, nothing else. Gets himself in his version of the zone. So 4-3. If he carries on breaking the way he's been breaking, very, very good chance. This will be 4 all in a couple of minutes' time. Crunched him again. Three down. Another massive break. Yeah, first glance, he's. Yellows are, have got the easier first ball, but the yellow tied up with the red, pretty sure, doesn't go. So you'd like to be reds, really. You would. It just means that you're going to have to play a slightly more difficult first red. Uh, I think the one in the middle of the table. Yeah, played long. It's got to be the one, I think. It's got to be the shot. Yeah, you don't want to be trying to move that yellow, do you? No need. No, no need. Oh, he's he's well. going yellows, though. That's interesting. interesting I mean look if, if I think he was trying to leave himself the angle now to go straight into it I think he's come a little bit too far if the white was a lot closer to this left hand middle pocket he'd have had the perfect angle to to disturb his bad yellow whether he's still got it or not I'm not quite sure I don't think he has no he did he did He's played that well, hasn't he? What a shot that was. That's a great shot. It was. Really was. He's played that almost as kind of a stun run-through because he didn't have a natural angle. If he just tops it through, he's getting nowhere near. It's a great shot. Yeah, he created the angle, didn't he? Yeah. And he knew he was highly likely, was, unless he sticks to the yellow that he's closest to now, it was highly unlikely he wasn't going to be on this yellow or the one in the middle. Yeah, it was this ball that he's playing now that was his insurance, wasn't it? Yeah. Perfect. He doesn't want to block the black. Oh, he's blocked the black. Well, well, just got into that a little bit too much. Now then. So do you take this ball at the bottom? Yeah, prob you think probably. you maybe need to? Yeah, probably. I think um, if if you you was just looking at where the black goes, does it go into the left corner? I don't think it does. It, it obviously goes into the left middle. Um, so yeah, now you you kind of want to leave yourself as close to this ball over the middle pocket as possible. It's just give us a clue as to what line he wants. It definitely doesn't go into the corner pocket, so he'll be playing it into the into the middle pocket. Yeah, I'll not be trying to move it, will he? I don't think. No. So all about the pace. This shot, that is perfect. Well, that's where he was stood. Yeah. So you'll probably see him come round again. Have a look at his margin of error. If he's going to do anything, he wants to overhit it. So as you can see where he's pointing, he can play it into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. Just anything but underhit it. If you overhit it, you're going to have a shot. If you underhit it, you're going to be looking at playing a double or something. And this is about feel, isn't it? Yeah, touch. A little bit too hard. Tiny bit too hard, yeah. This is tough. It's tough, especially if he's just what a, a roll of the ball lighter. He's got a straight one into this bottom left corner. 
if he's on that bulk line on the right hand side cushion he's got an unmissable black into the left middle but this is tough this is a big moment in this match huge it's there that was a great black what a shot what a shot as it was tracking towards you're thinking is it going to catch yeah. the first knuckle but that's a great shot it is really good really good pressure player anyway Mark Boyle like really good pressure player but smooth as smooth as you like four each what a game yeah he kicked that uh, that red down that uh, ball that blocked the pocket blocked the black pocket and he, he didn't land where he wanted to land, did he? No, it's just me as well, or is it it's four each and Liam actually hasn't made a mistake. I think Mark did early doors. Um ran out of position in, in one of the frames, but I'm pretty sure we've had seven perfect frames and Liam's gone from four one to four each and all he's had is a dry break. Yeah. Top, top level standard of Paul. Yeah, such is the standard. What did they say? Tough at the top. Very tough at the top. <coughs> Effectively now, best of seven. Liam to break. And you don't, I don't think he'd be changing anything here. Mm, sticking with it. Seen it a couple of times already. He, he, he hears the bleep on his shot. Just about to hear it again. He's made a ball. Yellows look good. They do. Yellows look very good. Didn't hit that break as hard as Mark does, but he didn't need to. No, he didn't. And you wonder how deliberate that is as well. Someone like Liam who studies and dedicates himself as well as, if not better than anyone. You wonder how much how much he considers, you know, am I hitting it at 70%, 80% and so on. As we keep saying, it's timing. timing it's not yeah, all it's about pace. No. And look at the split. Such a good split. Obviously, looking at yellows. Yeah, he'd love to get off of the cushion once he takes this first one into the... You see him about to play now. He'd love to... doesn't want to leave himself... Has to get out. Has to get out. Oh, is he there? From the overhead, it looks like he's a possibility. But from the other angle... Uh, yeah, has you he tell me. Has he... Has he? No, he's, he's looking at... He's looking at going cushion first, is he? See that there? He, no, no he's he? on it. He's having to bend it. He's having to swerve this. That is crucial. That is massive. All oh, that, just because he's so pinpoint, he's trying to get so perfect on his next shot and didn't want to leave himself queuing off the cushion, he could have just left it short and got nowhere near that red and left a slightly more difficult pot into the middle. But he chose to top it through off two and he hasn't he hasn't hit it hard enough. Uh, what, what a mistake. I mean, that's his first mistake of yeah. the match. But that Rack nine. <laughs> Rack nine. First mistake in the match, but that what a costly one that could be. He does leave Mark Reds, which are clearly the the you know, not not, not the easier set of the two, but they are in the open. He just needs a couple of very good positional shots. He hasn't really got to play any cannons or nudges or they are there.
The red closest to the right middle that you see that's causing them a bit of a problem because it doesn't... It's falling. Oh, that's gone too far as well. But it's that red closest to the right middle now because it doesn't go into the middle. It's kind of the one that's causing them a little bit of an issue. But it's catching. They're running out of position because that's as really as bad as where he could have left it. Off the queue. It's still an easy enough pot. He'll probably get that seven or eight times out of ten, somebody like Mark. But he's losing the cue ball. Is he going to be cannon into the black? He's, he's played it very well. But now he's pushed the red onto the side cushion. Does the, does the red go between the two yellows? If it does, that's lucky. Yeah, I think it does. And as you say, if it does, he has had a result there. He's, because he's got the ball on the left-hand side. If he leaves an angle, he can stun across for his last red. Yeah, he's had a bit of a result there. It was a good shot. Not saying it wasn't. Yeah, and you deserve a little bit of luck when you pull a good pot out like that, I suppose. But it's to, to, I think if that, obviously it went, he's just potted it. But he, I doubt he had a full pocket. And you really want to be right behind those. But I think, you know, this is where you see some people would, like Liam would, might be sat there ruining his luck. Liam won't be. But, you know, you've missed. You've given your opponent this chance. Oh, has he gone too far? He needs he a nudge. That wrong. He's pointed to the cushion. He feels like he's got a bit of a soft bounce. Well, it's catching. We've had we've had nearly an hour's worth of perfection. For the first time in the match, both players have made a mistake. What's he looking at? Cross double. He hasn't got much else, That's has he? Cross double. Cocked out. Foul. Foul, yeah. Oh He's dear. double hit it. Oh, dear. Well, what a turnaround. Well, well. What a turnaround. It, they were tricky. They weren't easy. But the way he's been playing, Liam would have been sat there expecting Mark to finish those after Liam had made his mistake. Such a huge, huge part of the match. to do here, has he? No, absolutely nothing. It's going to be a tough one for Mark to take. Like I say, they weren't easy, but the way, the way he's been playing all day and the way he's been playing for most of the semi-final... You expected him to find a way, you know, to play that, those one or two, very precise positional shots to make the finish. But he hasn't, and it's Liam takes a 5-4 lead. Yeah, a couple of errors in that uh, frame, but it has been almost faultless. They are human. There you see... Another fantastic break. Yeah, Liam having to swerve. He's given Mark is what you'd call a a half chance at a tricky finish, and this is where it all went wrong for Mark. We're about to see the shot here, so he feels like he maybe should have got more of a spring on that. But for me, I don't know. I think he had to play that with a tracer Tra left. Yeah, tracer left. I would have said the same thing. Yeah, and, and, and I don't think he's quite got into it. He enough. almost quit on it, I think. Quit it. He just, it Little bit. Just yeah. pulled it. Yeah. I think but as we fun. said, it wasn't easy. No, it was tough. It was very tough. And um, these machines do make mistakes now and again. So, put it out of your mind. Nitty gritty of the match now. Mark service. And 
once again. Massive break. Massive break. And a productive break, more importantly. Yeah. Easy starter on yellows. Slightly more difficult starter on reds. But uh, I think reds are the colour, aren't they? Reds are definitely the ball. He's looking at them now. He's perfect as well. The, the, the red that doesn't go into the middle, we can play it off that yellow. Uh, that's next to that right middle nearest the black. So he's just going to have to play a slightly more difficult first red. His first yellow would be unmissable. The red does a little bit of distance. But he'd have took this. Make a ball off the break and have this chance. He'd have, he'd have snapped your hand off for this. So, looks like he's taking the more difficult red. Yeah, I think it's just about perfect now to just play the red half ball off the yellow. Stun the cue ball. Just doesn't want that yellow kicking anything awkward. Well, and yeah, it has kicked it. Yeah, see, that's maybe why I, I think he's still alright. I think it still goes in the middle, but if he'd have just stunned the cue ball and played it softer, he wouldn't have had the wouldn't have been that possibility of the the yellow coming back up the table and he could have played the red into the top left corner as we look at it next. On this in the middle of the table, but I think he's just about got away with it. Very good at those shots. Snooker background. Just needs to be careful. The red, the closest to this near middle pocket. Yeah. yeah I don't know if he's exactly where he wanted to be did he was he trying to sort of stun stun one for a tiny bit don't know if he can if, is he trying to thread through the gap of the black and the the red that's a that's a that's a trickier shot than it looks needs to be careful doesn't want to flick the red needs to be careful oh well well This all stemmed from second shot he played, which was that red off the yellow, but he played it at such a pace, the yellow came back into play. Unlucky. It was unlucky for the yellow to put the red in an awkward position. You know, if he plays that shot ten times, that might only happen once or twice. But it's these fine margins at this level, and, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's caused him to turn the table back over to Liam and all right they're not all hanging over the pockets but I'd I'd put I'd put my house on Liam getting these I think the more important the clearance the more likely he is to get them he just made a mistake Mark Boyle Liam knows how important it is to sort of ram that down his throat difference between six four and five all is does, I don't even need to explain how big that difference is. You got ten seconds. I think we're going to see Liam leave the two yellows at the bottom of the table till last. Yeah, I think he takes this into the corner. He has the two balls closest to the bork rail. So, yeah, just... Well, I think he wanted to push that over. Yeah. He wanted to push that over and play the one he's going to have to play now. He wanted to play that one after this one and it would be much easier for him to 
leave himself the perfect angle on the one in the middle to sort of connect to the two at the bottom. So it's gone a little bit wrong for him. Yeah, it wasn't this ball he wanted to play, was it? It was the other one. Yeah. Anything but straight. It's pretty good there. So again, he just have to play this at a bit of pace, but he'll be bringing the cue ball back over towards the bulk line. He wants to come just the left-hand side of the bulk line as we're looking at it now from the overhead. Straight's ideal. It's not straight. No, a little bit too far. So, you know, look, he's, he's with his cue, that's where he wants to leave the white. Um, that shot would have been a lot easier if he could have been a lot closer to this last yellow. So, yeah, well, we just dropped this in. He's running away from the other yellow, so he didn't want to put any pace on it. Yeah, now, if he'd have had the angle that he wanted to have on that yellow, the cue ball would have been in between where the cue ball is now and where the yellow is. Yeah. You know, it'd have been halfway and, and then it's almost unmissable, but this is tricky. It's a natural angle. That is one bonus. Yeah. Yeah, all he needs to concentrate on is the pot and just making sure he plays it hard enough. Perfect. She has. Absolutely perfect. Hasn't gone about the clearance, hasn't had the white ball on a string like he normally does, but like these great players do, can win ugly sometimes, as long as you get there in the end. So, straight black to the middle to go 6 4 ahead in a race to 8. Six four <coughs> requires two more frames to get himself into tonight's final. And you see this shot here. If he'd just played that softer, held the white where it was, could have played the red that we're going to see him play now into that left corner pocket and. I know better than anybody. It's <laughs> when you got when you've only got thirty seconds to play a shot, it is so much easier said than done to to think clearly yeah. under pressure. And I, I think if he'd have had an extra, if there was no time limit, and he'd, he'd have had an extra minute or so to play a shot, as long as he wanted to play a shot, I think actually we might have seen him just go about it a slightly different way. Yeah, I think the third to last red, he didn't get good on the the, the second to last. No. He left that awkward angle, he didn't mean to be there. Yeah, and then that left him a really def delicate position of shot to play, which was really tough. He's just flicked the red on the way through, put it safe, and here we are at 6-4. He's actually two frames in a row now, Mark Boyle's had a chance, hasn't he? Should yeah, a couple of errors creeping in. He wouldn't be human if he's not sat there thinking it should be 6-4 to him. Settler finds himself 6 4 down. Well, well, well. You don't see that often with a cut break. That is one of the things I do I do agree. When it comes to that debate, I do think you definitely get less in offs with a cut break, but he's found one there somehow. He has, and look at the yellows. I mean, they're as good as gone, aren't they? Yeah. Look at these. They're almost so easy. He's kind of took his extension to... I mean, th there's so many different ways he could go about this. And they'd all end in the same result. Yeah, I think he was looking at knocking the red safe, but... Uh, is yeah, no, yeah, 100%. And, and you kind of feel like 
Sometimes you feel like you have to do something with your free visit, and sometimes you don't. Just just get down and knock them in. You can create problems that aren't really there. Yeah, I think it was just seeing play the yellow top left corner as his last ball. Yeah, I would agree. Black into the right middle. Yeah, it's dot to dot this. These three balls. So he takes this yellow into the corner. And he has a choice here. Yeah, it might yeah. be slightly hampered queuing on the one he's closest to, but only slightly. It's fine either way. Just going to push this through and move the red, yeah, thought he would. Yeah, so he's fine. Like, he's not going to get as close to that last yellow as he'd want to, but he's absolutely fine. Should be, should be fine himself breaking off at six five. Just be bringing this ball back out. Past the ball line, just over the ball line. Yeah, perfect. Plum. Exactly where he wanted to be. And this time, no error from Mark Boyle. One behind, but he has the break. And the way he's been breaking. Every chance of levelling this game. And I think if he does go level with a couple of mistakes he made in the last couple of frames, I think he'd be doing well. Yeah, it's just, well, it'd be, that, that's exactly what he needed, wasn't it? After yeah. those two, obviously you always want to win the frame, but after you've just made mistakes, really your first mistakes in the match, in back-to-back -back frames, you really just needed like an easy, an easy clearance to get himself back into it. Put that to the back of his mind. That's exactly what Liam gave him by uh, putting the white off the break. That'll be at the back of his mind now. He's six-five down. He's got the break. This is uh, still pretty much a coin flip. Obviously, Liam's slight favourite. I love watching this break. Fascinating, isn't it? How he gets the power and when he's striking down on the cue ball, it must leave the bed of the table to some degree. That's strange. Just go near the pocket. Oh, it's fine. Oh, look at this. Look at him. Look at him. Well, the black. The black is the only problem ball on the table. Yep. Yeah, the reds are uh, the reds are fairly easy, but you know, they, they, there's, they, it's nowhere near as easy as the previous frame was no. for him. But that black, like you say, is the problem. I think he's going to be forced into going reds anyway. He hasn't really got a difficult, an easy first yellow. But I think reds are the ball. And uh, you could have argued if he could go yellows, then the yellow on the left, over the left middle, would have been his perfect ball to get on the black. But I think he's got to go reds. He's taken his extension just to figure out what he wants to do. Reds it is. He's trying to leave himself the angle now. I think he's just overdone it, has he? I think he might have it, you know. Do you reckon? Overhead, it's it's very difficult to tell from this angle, but I think... Just about got I the angle I think he's to just got it, has it. he? I mean, if not, if he hasn't, um, then, I mean, uh, he's got the angle to just snick this red into the left middle. The middle closest to the black yeah. and go into it from there. And with this, he's if he does make the cannon, he hasn't gone for it. Fair I enough. Attempt it. 
I thought he could have done that. And if he makes the cannon, he's guaranteed to be on the red in the top half of the table. But he's um, just a fraction. I mean, if he was just a fraction shorter on that one, he'd have had an easy cannon. Yeah. Fine margins. So this is no easy ball. He's made it look easy though. He I mean, has. What a piece of queuing that is. This stage of the match. It's a great shot. Now, it's, it, he can't even leave himself a double on the black because the yellow's in the way. I think on these Supremes, the doubles into the middle pocket are quite easy shots if you if if you leave yourself perfect on them. But he can't even do that because the yellow's in the way, so he's just going to have to back himself to play that one killer positional shot. Or, or does he leave himself? If he leaves himself the angle, does he back himself to break it off the cushion? But you don't like doing that if you if you've got to get on it afterwards, do you? That's the thing. Yeah, nothing else to land on. Don't want to drift. He's on it, but yes. he's. N this is tough now. That's difficult. It looks like he's dead straight to me. Yeah. He gonna, he's, he's, he's come round and he's he's almost dying up, playing the black into the bottom left corner pocket. What a shot that's going to be to take on. He'd love a little angle here, wouldn't he? Just to straighten up the potential black. And he hasn't had one. He's had to just run it through. And this will take some queuing. Well, well, well. You don't like this at 6-5 down. Apart from the World Championships, the biggest tournament of the year, money-wise. To go six each in the semis. £10,000 to the winner of this tournament. missed it well a valiant effort really really tough pot that was so Liam Dunster all in the open for him yeah I think he's just gonna he's considering playing the yellow that he's closest to into the corner pocket now. Get that out of the way. It's not the easiest pot on the table for him. Yeah, it's perfect. wonder if Mark's just played his last shot of the match. This is as easy as it can be to go 7-5, uh, Liam to break next. And um, three of the last four frames, Mark's had first chance, oh, Mark's had a chance. And unlike Mark, as, as none of them have been easy. He isn't, he hasn't messed up anything easy at all. Uh, they've all, they've all had shot or two or a problem area you know every single frame three of the last four anyway I've had that but they're the ones that they're the ones that kind of make mark he normally gets them yeah. or you know he'll normally get a couple of those two out of the three and that would be the difference between him being seven five up and seven five down but it just doesn't happen for him today This is the replay of the frame before. They couldn't have come out easier. That got him back to 6-5 and then... 
here we were. Just had that one. It, it, it that was, was a shot there. Yeah, he was so close to leaving himself the perfect angle. It's a very clever shot he played first up off two cushions with a uh, run inside. If it had just been a fraction shorter on that, this black could have been just over the middle pocket and it would looked like another easy clearance. It would. But as it stands, Liam Dunster, 7-5 up on the hill. He went in off the break last time. In the middle pocket as well with a cut break. Yeah, kind of got bundled in by a couple of other balls. But he hasn't changed. Same break. Has he made one? Nothing down. Yes, it's just oh, dropped. Oh, wow. Just dropped. Last ball rolling. That hurts. Mark sort of sees the funny side. So he's just taking his time here, called his extension. Red tied up with the yellow on the side cushion. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem whether you choose to go reds or yellows, is that is that little cluster on the left closest to the cue ball. I think reds might be the ball we're here. If you, if you can go reds. I like reds. Yeah, you, you could go straight into it as well. Uh, play uh, the bottom, the slightly more difficult, bottom of the, the red, red at the bottom of the table. Um, Back out two rails. Yeah, you want to you wanna play to, to go bottom and then left-hand side. That's it, first. that's the one like that. <laughs> like that, bit more pace. No, it's another twist. If he'd have just hit that a little bit harder, that was, that was as close as game over. I mean, look, he's knocked that into a tough position. Um, I think if you're directly behind it, does it just drop in the middle? But It might. You don't want to be playing for that sort of position, not unless you have to. Another couple of rolls, and I think it'd have been over. Yeah, he'd love to be straight on this red now. If he can get straight on that red, then he can... I don't know if he can just play it thick into the middle pocket and land on it now into the corner. If he can, I think that's the shot. Yeah. It is the only problem that he has left on the table. Yeah, he's running through. Yeah, doesn't want to be dead straight. He's not dead straight, but he would have loved a little bit more angle. You know, if he was just ever so slightly closer to the yellow, he could have just punched it out without playing it at too much pace to get away from the side cushion. So this is the key ball. He's used his extension. He's about to get the bleeps. He's got five, four, three seconds to play this shot. He's played that well. Well, he's played it well. Made the pop, but I don't know if he's... I might be being a bit too kind there. I don't, I don't know if he's definitely got not got the angle he wanted. He's got enough angle to be able to... Does he run round? To go, yeah, to... to, to Force through off the side, bottom, back round to the other side. Yeah, he wants the, he, he wants the white after this. He wants it back right dead centre of the table. But he, yeah, he was looking he at this. Through? He can get through, yeah. He was looking at it. I think he... He, well, he didn't play it along there. No, he didn't. And that that's a horrible angle because... OK, look, well, he's going to... He can play it bottom right-hand side where he's just tapped the table there. If he can catch that part of the cushion, bit of bottom right, he's going to have to stun this. He hasn't got much angle, but I think he's got enough to work with. Is he playing it off the yellow? I don't get that. I didn't like that shot. No, it's the first time I think in my entire life I'm going to criticise a shot choice from Liam. I think he has to play that into the middle at, at pace. 
bit of stun on right hand side swing it off two cushions I mean he wasn't even on it yeah. so the that's red. what I thought he was going to do or attempt I, I guarantee you if he'd have had more time that's the shot he'd have ended up playing yeah I think that's the first time I've ever seen look like he's rushed something ever ever yeah but look he's 7-5 up it's £10,000 to the winner there's a lot of money at stake there's yeah. everyone's human we've all seen uh, name anyone in any sport that hasn't made a mistake under pressure you want to keep sports Ronnie O'Sullivan Stephen Hendry Federer Tennis everyone makes mistakes under pressure everyone Mark doesn't want to be, well he's hampered no. there yeah he's fine he's got this other one over the corner but he didn't want to be on that one no he didn't And the black ball, that red, is hampered. Yeah, that's perfect. He's cued that a dream. Absolute dream. Certainly didn't want to land back where he was before. He'd have been in all sorts of trouble. But that's perfect. Punch off the left-hand side cushion, back across to the right-hand side of the table. Just the black here, Dan. Well, where's he going to take the, bla the, the yeah, black? Yeah, look, if it goes in the in the middle, then it's not bad. I don't think he can quite get on it, so he's probably going to have to leave it. If he gets to it, that's got a bit awry. Can play the one into the corner. He's got no choice, but the black obviously does go into the corner pocket. So you see, if the cue balls, if he's playing the black from where he is now, I don't think he can quite make it without clipping the red first. It's a bit of pressure on this. Cueing off the cushion. Nasty little shot. Same old story, just a fraction out. Just over run. Two or three inches shorter than that, and he's perfect. Small angle the other side. Has he, got, has, he, has he hit it with enough pace? Now we're going to see then. Is he going to play this in the corner or is he going to put the referee under pressure? <laughs> I think he's in the corner, is he? Yeah, he's looked at both. He's playing it in the corner. A referee will be happy with that. He's taking that cue ball off the side and back down to that rail. No doubt. He's missed it. He's missed it. He has missed it. He, he wasn't really even that close. A bit of time pressure there. At the last minute, he's kind of thought to himself, it's then, you can see then it's gone through his head, actually I should leave the white safe. Exactly, yeah. He, yeah. he sort of... He, it's, he had a, it's as if he had a small doubt there. Yeah. And Liam's used his extension. He's playing safe. Oh, don't hit that! Oh, well, that could have gone. That could. could have, that could have gone bad. It could have gone wrong, but it didn't. He's got the cue ball in the right place. If he catches that slightly thinner, he almost breaks the two apart and leaves a gap. The one thing for Mark here is if he does catch the red and lands bottom end of the table, he may be, well, this may be okay, if it slows up. Oh, will take that. Oh my God. Oh my word. I think he's total snookered him. Oh, wow. I was thinking if he came out of the snooker and hit the black and lands anywhere at the bottom end of this table, he probably left him in an awkward position anyway, but never in a month of Sundays did he think he'd leave him no. Full ball snookered. Do you think now Liam's thinking to himself, why didn't I just cut the red in the middle and take my chance of getting on the... Was th was there a route round if he'd have played it with a... I know he was queuing off the cushion, but if he'd have played it with a tracer side, could he swung round three cushions? Anyway, what's he got now? He's left it. He's left it. It's no gimme. It's no gimme, but he's left it. 
And this time it's a hundred percent focus on the pot. Yeah, don't be worrying about what the cube was doing. And it's in. He's hanging in there. What a frame of pull that was. Yeah, a lot of tension there. You don't see many of them from this level of player. It's great though, isn't it? Yeah, Makes a change, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, fantastic. Makes a change from break and finish, break and finish, break and finish, first visit finish. I can see a bit of drama. They're human. Makes everyone else think they've got a chance. <laughs> This is the shot now, so about coming up, coming up now, here. Surely you've got to punch that bottom right. Yeah. I it's not an easy shot no, at all. Far from it. But I, I don't think Liam would have played that again. No, nope. if he had more time, if he had more time, he wouldn't have played that shot. Seven six boil to break. They had him for a decider. So to stay in the match. And he did he hit those balls. In well. Oh really. Wow. He slaughtered those balls. I mean, yellows, five of them are hanging over the pocket already for him. But he's just got that problem one on the right hand side. It's an amazing split. It's a, it's a funky split, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. I mean, reds. Uh, Does that red go past the other red? The side cushion? Well, I was going to say, red, red, red seem alright, but where's his first red coming from? Not sure it passes. Don't think it passes, does. does it? No. No, can he? Is he playing it? He'd, He'd love to play that if it did. Play a plant first up if he goes reds. He's already used his extension. He's down to 10 seconds. No, he's going yellows. So. not an easy one to attack this yellow I, I think I think the shot here is is to leave yourself a double on that yellow the, the difficult one leave yourself a double into the middle back yourself to get it I, I, I can't see how there's a there's a sensible way to sort of go into it and realistically expect to if you've had more of an angle on this ball he's playing now he could maybe he have, could maybe have gone the head if had a free shot and trying to kick the uh, kick the yellow. Yeah. I know you guys are all great at uh, doubling the ball. It's part of the game these days. Yeah, I think you just need to need to leave yourself straight. Well, obviously you need to leave, leave yourself good and get as close to it as you can. But um, I don't think there's any value in trying to break it out. He's got an angle now to go over into it, but the reds. There as well, you've you've got to rely on cannon in that red perfect or full or thick to you just gotta leave yourself a double, back yourself to get it. What's he playing? Is he is he playing a double into the plant or playing into the two balls? Yeah, he is. And he's made it. What a shot that is. It was a shot. I thought the from from here it looked like he might have been grazing the red on the way past, but what a shot. What a shot. <laughs> I fancied him to hit the two balls, but I wasn't too sure what the outcome would be. No. So, is it a little bit tricky though? Is he? Is he? Can he? Can he pop the one over the corner without flicking the other one on the way past? I, I think he can. Just about. Or he did flick it, but he, he controlled that. Yeah, but this is awkward, isn't it? He, he just needed to needed to be much straighter on this. He can't see the one at the top of the table. Look at the wall of balls. Yeah. Just waiting to snooker him. <coughs> what do you do? Do you just try and drop it pocket speed? 
He's got five Come back out for the gap. It. Come back out for the gap. He's decided to go. He's elected to hit it more force. And I think he's behind the red here. He oh, is. Oh, more drama. More drama. It's about as loud as I've ever heard him say total. So total snooker. Can he get behind this yellow? He was just a flick off that red away from being in the final. You see it when it was just coming back across. You thought oh, it's going to graze the red. It's going to hold up. Does he go across the table? He is doing. He's got a gap. You fancy him to hit this. Has he got it? Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. <sighs> All he's okay. He's left. He's left him queuing off the cushion. I suppose <laughs> this isn't easy. Not queuing off the cushion. Not with the circumstances in the match. It's called for his extension straight away. He's just got to go full-blooded. Cut this into the middle. Yeah, one hundred percent. You've got to go for the ball into the middle. There's nothing you can do with the white. It's glued oh. to that back cushion. Just get a clean strike on it. Cannot, yeah. yeah, concentrate on the pot, nothing else. Can't afford to miss. Get the ball in, work things out afterwards. He's made it. Heart of the pocket. Look, now I can understand if he's going to play a safety. He can. He can snooker him in the bottom right-hand side of the table. Is it worth doing? They don't like to do it, do they? I don't like to do it when there's a ball so close to a pocket as well. I don't know. I, I I like to go for these. I think maybe even red top left corner. Leave yourself dead straight on the one in the middle. And then come right over to this. As we're looking at the screen, the bottom of the, bottom of the screen. He's played it. Okay, so he, he can't now get on the, uh, the two that are blocking each other. He can't now get on the one closest to the corner pocket not from the one in the middle anyway I mean he could set this ball long into the corner could he stun to the side rail definitely can yep that would afford him the opportunity of taking the ball on the side rail Let's see what he thinks oh no. again slightly out of position if he was dead straight on this one, or slightly left of straight, he could have played it into the right middle, topped it through, and got on this right-hand side cushion. But he's just running away from it now. At the beginning of the frame, we said, didn't we, these two reds were the, the two awkward ones. Yeah, he's just... Feel the tension out there. So does he take it in the corner, off the side, and try and hit back into the red? Hold on to it? Maybe, yeah. Or maybe play it yeah, at the kind of pace where if you go full ball into it, it's going to come back out. Or if you do flick it cushion first. Yeah, you sort of float it. And that'll do. He'll take it. He doesn't care how it happens, but he'll take it. <laughs> He's flicked it on the way in and on the way out. That's not how he played it, but he don't care. Bit of a reach, has he gone for his, uh, I thought he'd reach for a mini butt there, but no. Just tucking his shirt in. Tucking his shirt in, yeah. He's nowhere near it. Doesn't want to be on the side cushion. Away from the rail. Yeah, you don't. You, you want to. You want to have your hand on the table, ideally. But he's fine. So seven all. Seven each. Hell, hell. This game started with the most. I mean, it was flawless. I think seven of the first eight frames were off the break, and uh, and uh, towards the end of this match, the tension has just creeped in. It's been brilliant. It's been brilliant to watch. It's nice now and again. It is full of drama. Seven each, Dunster to break. He's had his chance. He's had his chance to win this match already, Liam. Mark's yet to have a chance.
to win the match. But in his mind, probably should have won it already. From four all, he's, he's messed up three in the next four frames. Drama. He's not happy with the rack. Absolutely imperative these balls are touching. It is at any time, but 7-7 seven, seven for a place in the final. You don't want a bad rack. They look perfect as always. Thank you. With the scores tied at seven frames all, this is the 15th and deciding frame. So we're seeing the um, line up from the same spot as he's been breaking from all match. Yeah, and it's noticeable he's not been hitting him as hard as Mark. No, and he has had a couple of dry ones. And he won't want to be anywhere near that middle pocket. Looks dry to me. Oh, wow. I'll tell you as well, that, that's so... He's dry. Reds are horrible because of where the black is. The first yellow into that left middle is a gimme. And his only bad yellow, he's got the perfect angle to leave himself a chance to break it out next shot. Yeah. And look at the rest of them, they're sat there. And all you ever want in a final frame oh, is a chance. That, he's in that too hard though. I thought he had to... He wanted to be playing this next. He wanted that to be in between the two reds together and the red on its own. He wanted he wanted the way in between that and then it was almost unmissable. Yeah, is he, he's straight on the straight on the one in the middle of uh, the, the middle of the three balls. Yeah. He needed a slight angle so he could screw up into the other yellow. Extension. It's called his extension. I mean he did look all over there, didn't he, if he got that position. Yeah, he just it is almost an argument for him sort of stunning and resting into the two reds almost. If if he couldn't if he couldn't hold it, but I think he could, he's just over it slightly. I mean even if that just even if that just is is a quarter of a roll of a ball to the right, he can play that shot, but I don't think he can play it now. Yes, yeah, I mean he's not even playing it at all anymore. So now He's looking for that angle once yeah. again. He's just got that one. The yellow he's just played was one of his balls that he could have landed on afterwards or been guaranteed to be on afterwards. Now he hasn't got that. Has he got the angle now? I think he has, hasn't he, just? The thing is here, you don't want to kick that yellow back up too far, do you? No, you don't want to kick it up too far. You don't want to. You don't want to stick to this side cushion too much. But it's hard to see if he plays it at the right pace. It's hard to see how he's not going to be on. Well, well, there's your answer. What's he got now? A double, a double for the match. Does the uh, the yellow one going off the red is too far past the middle? Too, yeah, I think it is just as well. I mean, it's not even all legs in one basket here because of of where the black is at the top of the table. But okay, so he's going to come back down table. Now he's got another chance to go into this. It's just like we mentioned this earlier. It's always they're not really that nice shots to play when you're breaking into your bad ball, but you have to land on it next. But if he plays it at the right pace. It's hard to see how he's not going to have some sort of shot on it. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Can he play it off the red? I, I don't, don't know, know if he can. You know, if it, if that red was just an inch closer to the to the to the middle pocket, it'd be it sort of be game over. But. I think 
Mark will know better than any of us. He's right behind it. Looks like he's playing it. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Wow, what's happened there? So he's he's made the yellow, but the white's gone as well. Oh, my word. And the black nearly dropped. The black nearly dropped. Uh, Liam's now... <laughs> Liam's now got his free shot to be able to get get rid of the red that's closest to the black. Maybe even flick the other red on the way back up. Yeah, he can push play that, this. Yeah, push that nearer to the middle pocket if he can. He could play this along the bottom rail. He could set the cue ball back up for the other ball on the rail. If he gets anywhere near it, drops it in. He's got the two reds close together into the middle. Yeah, if this shot goes right, then... These, this is going to be a fairly easy clearance. Yeah, that's he needs gone. to go in. No, that's gone. He's, he's got a free visit, hasn't he? So oh. it's, <laughs> it's, it's getting to all of us. <laughs> it's not. Like, it's, oh dear. This is tough. And I'm not even playing. I think we're more nervous than they are. This is. Uh, so, so I think now now's the time. Get on the one on the side cushion. Yeah, it just drops in behind it. And the, and, the, and the two reds that are together, they're not blocking each other from the middle pocket, so this is perfect. Proper drama, this. This has gone right to the wire. It's had everything. Oh, th th it's the first shot after the break, isn't it? That first shot, Mark, just had to almost dribble that yellow into the middle as slowly as he possibly could to leave himself the angle to get that bad one out and he's then spent the next four or five shots trying to figure out how to get that ball out he, he'll think about that for the rest of his life that, that shot that frame yeah. there's certain frames that stick in your head forever this is going to hurt that's going to hurt that being said Liam hasn't cleared these yet Not yet. But these are probably as easy as it can get. If it can ever be easy. When you're on the hill. To get into a major final. Even that he's under hit. He wanted to be on he wanted to be leaving the one over the corner till last. So much so that he's yeah, he's, he's tried to get perfect position. He's just fell short of that. So we might see him <laughs> play the one over the right corner pocket now. Surely, surely he can't mess up from here. The pressure's a funny thing. Good angle to play this and come across. <coughs> Ten seconds. Still not down to the shot. The bleeps have started. Three, two, one. this has been what a match surely the drama's over <laughs> nothing can go wrong here can it for a place in the final is that what a match it had absolutely everything
absolutely everything. It was perfect pull for the first hour. And then we had a little bit of drama at the end. Seeing two of the very best, not, not in this, that two of the very best players on the planet for the last five years chuck a couple in at the end. It was actually a pleasure. It's a pleasure to see him struggle sometimes. Yeah, it's an honour so to be to able to come and say on that match, to yeah, be honest with you. Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Add everything. Brilliant. So next up we're going to have... Uh, <laughs> you thought that was it. Next up we've got uh, John McAllister uh, against Mark Farnsworth, the two previous world champions, to, uh, to Liam Dunster. We all need to get our breath back, I think. What a match that was. Uh, I think we're ready for an interview um, with our winner and the finalist, Liam Dunster, with Kev Barton. Thanks, guys, and I'm here with uh, the winner of that uh, thrilling semi-final, Liam Dunster. Liam, that match had just about everything. Uh, what's it like to come through on, on the winner's side? Yeah, delighted. Um, still feel like I'm, I'm not going to miss when I get in. It's just to still somehow the positional side, that's usually the strongest part of my game. Um, positional side just doesn't seem to be there tonight. But um, yeah, I'm hoping um, my break works a little bit better because it, it wasn't that great there. I mean, it, it was working good. I was getting a good split, etc. But the ball's just one of falling in apart from the weight. Um, so yeah, hopefully my break works a bit better and my positional side's a bit better for the next game. Got off to a fast start, and um, you were sort of always ahead in the match. And then, you know, as probably you expected, Mark came back at you, seven five to seven all. And then, I mean, talk us through that last frame. Your emotions when Mark's at the table. Yeah, well, I, I've broke there, and then I've just thought, oh, well, that's that's that done. <laughs> I just thought that was game over. And then uh, I think it was his first shot. He's, he's played a bit dodgy because I think he's he's overran his first shot because he's meant to obviously pot and kick out be a second shot. He's had to put a few balls, not land good, and he's ended up having to do it off his last ball. Um, and then the kicks not went right for him. And then I think he was trying to do two and one or something. I think he was trying to put the ball in the middle like he did. He tried to go one, two, and then sort of back into the, the black and put that as well. Uh, but luckily for me, the, the whites flew in and then left me myself a fairly basic finish that I nearly made a big zero, should I say. Um, I think uh, you know. I was looking, watching the side, and I could see a few big puffs of the cheeks. You know, as you were going about that clearance. You know, you're obviously feeling the pressure. You know, the situation, Mark, everything in, in that match. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I just knew that in that finish, I wouldn't be in position once. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, every time I'm sort of obviously like, right, leave the hanger because you know you're going to run out of position, put in a ball, and I was like, well, I need to take the hanger now, sort of thing. So I got over the line. You certainly did. Well, Liam, well played. Fantastic match and uh, good luck in the final. Thanks. <coughs> well, I don't know if Liam needs to lie down after that match, Mark, <laughs> but I, th I think I think we do. Oh, well, definitely. That match had everything in it. It really did. Uh, IPA drama at its best. Um, I could feel the tension. I was only sat in the back room behind the uh, the guys that was doing the comms, etc. But I could feel the tension in there, and even I had tension in me in, in my bones and the way that I was feeling. So God knows what these players were feeling in here. They, you, you could hear a pin drop and uh, feel for Mark a little bit. You know, he's gone all that way to create an absolute epic um, one of the matches, one of the best matches I've probably seen for a long mm. while. There's been so many over the uh, course of this year and over the, the IPA years that I've been here, but wow, that's right up there indeed. Liam Dunster in the final, though. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about Liam in a second, but as I say, just a, a word about Mark. I mean, on, on his, his last shot, that was his last shot in the match, and he's probably only got to move that, his, his, I think it was the yellows, he was on Monty, he's only got to move it another inch up, and he, and he, and he can play that shot with more control. And he, 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 you know, he was under time pressure, so he, he basically just had to 
he knew that with the shot he was going to play, but he, he just had to throw his arm at it a little bit. Yeah, he did. I mean, he just caught it a little bit thinner than he wanted, uh, any thicker, and he was probably perfect to leave that. I mean, obviously he was relying on the uh, the pool gods, and fortunately they weren't with him tonight and uh, wet enough. And uh, as you said, that was his last shot, and Liam cleared up, and you could feel he, you could even see the tension there in Liam just towards that end. But there's so much at stake here, mm. here Kevin. You know, twenty down, ten thousand pounds, and. A whole load of ranking points. I said, don't say twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> it was only ten. <laughs> Fantastic semi, and well, we've got another one um, just Have as we? good oh God. <laughs> um, coming up now. John McAllister and Mark Farnsworth. Um, just tell us your thoughts uh, ahead of this match. Well, the battle of the Englishman. I mean, John McAllister, he seems like he's been about, I think he's only about 24, 5 or something like that. But he's, it seems like he's been about for years, and he has been about for years. But Mark Farnsworth feel, felt like he struggled at the start of the match against Dean Shields, but come really good towards the end. So if he continues with some of that form, I think we're in for a great match here. Not seen too much of John on this um, stream table this weekend, uh, but... John McAllister, he's been in this arena so, so many times and uh, it's going to be another great semi-final. And both former world champions, of course, <laughs> you know, so they know what it, what it takes to, to, to win the big fish. I mean, um, you know, what would you say the relative strengths are of these two players for people who you know, maybe just uh, new and not seen them before? I think Mark Farnsworth straight away is his pattern play. Um, he believes in his own ability, leaving any any particular pot, etc. John's pretty much his cue action. He's just so solid. He doesn't seem to get flustered, etc. Um, not too much difference, it, you know, it, between the two players. They're both brilliant you know, capable players who can pot from anywhere and I'm sure we're going to see plenty of that. Um, is it down to the break? Yes, because um, John, he seems to have changed his break over the course mm. of this tour, this season. Um, whether that's going to be still the case uh, for this tour, uh, possibly, yeah. Um, but it's, it's probably going to be down to a lot of the break. We didn't see Mark's break working that well in his previous match, but it seemed to come together at the end. So I know we say a lot about the break, mostly about most of the matches, but it's going to be a great match. It certainly is. And uh, our referee, John Attridge, is just getting the players ready. So it'll probably be about 20, 30 seconds before the match uh, gets underway. So just um, ahead, looking looking forward to tomorrow. What, uh, what have we got in store for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we're going to start straight off with another final, aren't we? Uh, at 1pm tomorrow, there's going to be the amateur final. I didn't sort of see who was... I know um, Dean Richardson was in the final, the other mm. semi-final. I'm not sure if it's finished yet or if it's still being played. I think it was it Liam was Charles, is it? Liam Liam Roberts. Liam Roberts. Liam yeah. Roberts. Did he get through in the end? He was playing he Matthew did. Quinn, wasn't I he? I think he did. I just didn't mm. see the final result because obviously, mm. I mean, watching that match, we, we just couldn't. I couldn't keep my, my eyes off it. I know it went on a little bit longer than normal. Not you know how normal matches go on, but it was it was one where I couldn't take my eyes off. Mm. So we've got the amateur final and then ladies final and open final all tomorrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just it doesn't stop, does it? You, you feel like it needs to stop after that epic uh, semi-final clash there. But yeah, ladies final tomorrow. That's that's even even. There's got some great players here uh, here at the Isle of Man and. Uh, the way that the standard of the ladies' game has, has risen over the, the course of these months, years, etc. Do, do not be surprised if it just rises again tomorrow. Mm. That, that's going to be an epic clash. Absolutely. Well, that's tomorrow. Well, it's the here and now. It's the second semi-final. Who will face Liam Dunster in tonight's final for the title of professional grand final winner and that £10,000 first prize? So let's get over to the Collins box and Andy Richardson. Of under lag, breaking, first prize, flag running. Oh, 
Well, good evening. And we are having a bit of a change of commentators. We've just had a, a quick team meeting, and uh, so I've decided to come in the comms box. I'll be probably be with you now, right till the rest of the night for this semi-final and the final that will follow this straight after. And I am with the local boy, the Manx man. David Adenal, he's going to be helping me throughout this match and uh, with his expert analysis of this one. How do you see this one going, David? Yeah, it's, it's obviously going to be a very, very tight match. Um. Yeah, this is going to be a very tight match is uh, virtually impossible to call you know two of the best players in the world should be an excellent match well our, um, our guys they've been having we've had a poll for each match for the, throughout of the today and 60% are going for Mark Farnsworth in this one How do you, do, you, do you agree with him a little bit yeah I think I've got to go with that um, it's, it just shows how tight it is uh, I, yeah I think uh, the recent success Mark has had I think um I think that's fair. To uh, yeah, I mean, um, you was at the uh, was yeah yeah you was at the last tour in Newcastle, were you? Yeah, I yeah. was. Yeah, you was. I mean, didn't you did you you watch that final of Mark? I know it got got a bit late into the uh, the day, but it was it was some classic the way that Mark played, rolling back the years. Yeah, I I, I, uh, I heard the stats. I was uh, on my way back to the Alaman at the time, <laughs> but um, you know, last he won uh, of his four matches, he only dropped one frame. 28-1, so it just goes to show you the form that he was in. Yeah, absolutely. And if uh, if he continues that form, John's going to have a, a very difficult difficult game. But we all know what John McAllister is capable of. So I played a bit of a, a containing shot there. Just tried to uh, tie things up a little bit. I think that could work in his favour a little, but again, probably... Would you make Mark favourite for this frame, just with the layout of the balls there at the moment? I think it's uh, it's so tough to call at the moment. You know, both colour sets have their own problems. Um, even if you're yellow, so the black doesn't go, and the same with the red. For that, maybe you could favour reds, but obviously the yellows have uh, numerical advantage. Well, a little bit about, obviously, the guy that's in the final already. Just why these guys <laughs> have a bit of, I don't know, cat and mouse, we can call it, can't we? I mean, Liam Dunster, do you think that's going to take a bit out of him now? That was an epic battle, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it could easily take a lot out of you, but I, I think uh, I think Liam's uh, hardened to that now. It's, you know, the amount of tournaments that he, he wins just, just uh, proves that. I think he'll uh, be grateful of uh, a break, maybe. But then sometimes it can work one or two ways to a reset for later on. Yeah, what about Mark Boyle? I mean, how much does that take out of you? He's just, it, it just must drain him so much, just losing by that one shot. Exactly, yeah. It's, hard to it's a hard one to take sometimes. Yeah, and, and I know it, it wasn't an easy chance, but uh, you know it was a chance and that's how he's going to see it. You know, he's going to be very disappointed with that and it, it, it's hard it's hard and then you know he's got to try and motivate himself for the open you know yeah but we know Mark Boyle is a true professional pool player isn't he and yeah. uh, and he will bounce back he knows what he's got to do to bounce back exactly so and uh, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a bit more of him over the weekend he's too good of a player to, to yeah. make it you know take it that much of an effect on him exactly yeah you know you can see won't be a shock to see him have a good one in the open. No. So this frame's a, a bit of a strange one at the moment, the way it's opening up. I mean, John, he's trying to contain this. I mean, if anything, <laughs> he's tying his own balls up. Yeah. He's helping Mark it out in this one. And the fact that the black still goes, so... Yeah. Definitely advantage, Mark. Yeah, it is now. I mean, Mark's been a little bit patient in his first frame, and uh, as a first frame goes, this is a very tentative start, possibly. I know the, the balls sometimes don't help the way that they get left to be laid out, etc., but, you know, they've obviously got a lot of respect for each other now, haven't they? Yeah, very, very much so, you know. The, 
you know, between um, John and Mark and Liam, you know, they've they've won so many titles between the majority of the titles. Oh, is, uh, everything not much in left the game, else. these two have. <laughs> everything in the game. But I think uh, it's also nice to see, you know, because both of these players are like machines when they're on, aren't they? They just yeah. pop, 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 clear, 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 don't they? So this is a, a great sort of different way of just showing what, how good they are at this type of game as well. Exactly. And I think as well sometimes... Uh, Clever shot. Like, oh, I don't think he's done oh, enough, though. He's not quite enough. No. I think sometimes it can be a bit of a settler as well, even if you lose a frame, just the fact you've had your hand on the table, you've played a few shots... Um, especially on the TV tables, it plays uh, different to the others. Yeah, well, I think uh, Mark, he'll be taking this opportunity with both hands now. I can't see him not taking these on. There's no point of any more containing shots because sooner or later, Johnny's just going to block that corner pocket. So this is the time, do you think? Yeah. Like you say, you know, it's well. Looking at that now, actually, it's tighter to get in behind that black oh God, and white. Yeah, I don't. The overheads made it look easy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay because obviously we yeah. do the, the white smaller than the object ball, so yeah. there's probably a bit more room for the white ball, etc. And you can play cushion first. Yeah. And uh, and the white is potentially going to be glued to them reds as well if if you did miss it, but I, I can't see that if you played a good positional shot. Well, it's shorter pace there. Does he? It's surely not going to clatter into him. I don't. I can't see that happening. There's no need to, is there? If if it does go, if it if it does go, I suppose there's only Mark that will know that. He'll be uh, looking look, looking directly behind it. This shot will tell us how he's he's seeing it. Yeah, it must go. It must go. Again, the cue ball's got away from him slightly. This finishes, he's getting away from him as well, because them two balls, it's near the balk line. With that red in the way, it's a bit of a blocker. Yeah, I was going to mention that, you know, it's just that red's just in where we'd ideally like um, the cue ball, potentially. Um, so it, it's uh, still a little tricky. Expecting to be fine, though, with it. Oh, he has gone for it. I think he's on the one in that, the middle as well. well yeah. Is he on the one in the middle? If he is... I'd say so. You've got to say he's in a lot better position than he was. Has the camera angle filled me? No, he's round to it. He's got the one in the centre. Still going to need a, a good positional shot to get on the, uh, the yellow. Whichever one he wants to get on to, he's going to take a good position. Makes you wonder if he wanted to come downstairs first. Because the only one, tech, one, the only problem taking this one, do, do the Reds come into play for getting in the way of the, uh, you know, the movement of the white ball? Exactly. It's just like the natural angle to go around, isn't it? So I'd be pleased he's on this one to avoid that. At least now you run into that red, you don't really mind. Yeah, and I think he's played on that bottom red. I know, obviously, he's, he's only just got on it, but he, he was on it. And that's that was the route that he decided to go, and it was the the correct uh, way of going. Oh, what a, is oh, he's it? played it well. It, do you think he's pinched an angle there just I, to make sure he got the uh, the cannon onto the red? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've done. yeah. There'll be a few people at home thinking, "Wow, well, that's only just gone in," but uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's pinched an angle of the pocket so he can hold the uh, the roll of the white ball into the cannon. Yeah, so I think he's pinched a bit and played it with low to side as well, just to make sure that he keeps low enough. Because he's never going to hit the black, and even if he did, it was only going to be a slight graze, and he'd have still been on it anyway. So it was just making sure of that contact on that red, whether it was direct with the red or off the cushion first. Well, first look at the uh, Mark Farnsworth break. Been a popular uh, topic over recent years. A lot of discussion around it. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion about it over today and yesterday, etc. So, yeah, it won't be a surprising one. Good contact. 
Has he got a ball? He's uh, dry. Hit them well, but... That's the best I've seen him hit him. Yeah. I commentated on his last game, and uh, he really wasn't striking them well, but he has struck that well and got no reward. That's, it's a cool game at times. Yeah, it's a frustrating part of it. You know, you do everything right. You know, everything textbook is we're told that we should do, and then, you know, you, you, you don't get anything. see how John McAllister's feeling. I'm not sure about this shot, David. No, he didn't want to be there. Yeah. Uh, just talk me through that one. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. Did you, do you think he tried to play that with side and run inside off the cushion and yeah. didn't get it on in the end? Because that, that's not what John normally does. He's normally he's such a straight cueist. I think I think he would playing this, the screw in the side it's just gone towards the ball cushion because of the side and then because it's hit the knuckle then it had no effect but I think it's just because he was uh, playing it with side it's just gone that sideways nice. towards the ball cushion yeah and he's missed that it, it, it also makes you wonder Dave about the uh, the, the way that the first frame went it, it, it didn't give chance for either player to settle and you, that can you know, possibly rattle you a little bit because uh, John, he's not settled into this match yet, has he? Yeah, the f first frame is always crucial to to the start of a match, uh, but especially if you've uh, had, he didn't have any great chances, but he was he was in it, um, and it does make it a bit harder to settle if you've lost it. Well, this is uh, a key shot for Mark. In the I'm expecting him to get the pop. I, mean, I think would he leave himself on the one in the middle pocket yeah. to try and leave an angle to get his uh, bad yellow just out. Just past the block. Oh, that's just dropped yeah, in. He's got a good he looked a bit there. anxious at that one, <laughs> but he seems to be perfect now. You want to say this is probably the key shot in this frame. Hit it with a better pack, better pace. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just made sure that the cue ball came off the cushion. It's interesting how he played that. You know, you could have easily have like you know run it through, come off the cushion, but moved the red out of the way. But you'd have been glued to the yellow, and I think that's why he purposely screwed into that to uh, create a bit of separation between the balls. He's got a choice of yellows. I think he's got a choice of three, has he? Yeah, that tells me he has got a choice of three. But that one that's over the pocket. Well, nearly nearly over the pocket. Good pop. But what's his position like? Well, he's got a shot, but it's, it's not nice. Yeah, he seems to be still chasing a little bit, but we just know how good Mark Farnsworth is. Uh, the black ball's a concern there for me. Yeah, OK. The, the eight ball, just because it's, it's in can a bit of a natural angle, he's having to dig into it a little here. Unless he uses a red to hold the white. It's not bad, Played is it? Played it well, but it could have done a bit more. Yeah, another four or five inches, it would have been perfect. Yeah, you, you're right, David. He's not in perfect position here. There seems to be a bit of a finish he's chasing at the moment, but we you know when Mark Farnsworth does chase a finish, he, he normally gets a big pot, this one. And he's up to the challenge again. Great shot. Yeah, he just believes that he can put any ball on the table. Great shot. And he requires another one here. There's no this ain't difficult having to screw back for the, the black in the uh, right corner. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a cue through this <laughs> absolutely clean. Something like that, David, what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, and I, th and I think that's 
at them kind of shots, I think that's where Mark Farnsworth is the best in the world. Well, there you have it, two frames to nil. There was a bit of a strange shot there from John McAllister off the, the Mark Farnsworth break there, you know, his first shot. We're not sure how he wanted to play that, etc. I think it was just a screwing, uh, screwing back in the sides, you know, that... It, you know, when you screw a ball back, it can sometimes go sideways, and you know, I think that's all that happened. And then the combination of hitting the knuckle. And is that down just to not hitting it cleanly? I think it maybe he was just trying to like nick some of the angle as well at the same time, and it just went the other way. Like, oh, well, John needs to get it to the back of his mind. He's going to be up breaking next. And they're saying in the uh, studio with Kevin Barton about, you know, John's changed his break over the course of oh, this right, year. Yeah, yeah he seems to be uh, just electing a, another break. Would you would you say that that's, a, that's the case? I have to be honest, I've not seen his break, so this is, we'll get a chance to have a look at it now. So he's tried the cut break, got one down. Them cut breaks are nice when they work, but I I've, I've, I've just feel when they don't that it's just messy. Um, you know, you, you quite rarely have a chance to go for it. Well, there's a lot of players well doing there. it at the moment, though, isn't there? And uh, they're, they're getting the rewards from it. Yeah. But it, doesn't, it definitely doesn't suit everybody's uh, style, etc. I've, I've tried it, but I, I just still prefer the front, front ball. But it's certainly a preference thing. Yeah, Paul. John McAllister, close these. It won't concern him. So he's got to be a little bit careful here. Obviously, them yellows that's surrounding them two reds, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I think this should be this shot that needs to get right for that. He should be okay here. Another yeah. black's. Uh, should be plenty of angle so he can drop it in and come above it. He wants to keep that one by the bottom left for the position on the eight ball. There's the cue ball going. That's oh. perfect. He's okay. If anything, a little bit too far. Yeah, I was surprised you got that. It seems to have got a bigger yeah. bounce than he, he, he thought it might have done. So, he's probably going to have to try and pinch an angle, come on and off the bottom cushion with a tracer running side, is he? Or is he try looking at drawing it back, playing two, maybe three cushions? That, I mean, that does he need to do that? Does he need to do that? Just leave himself a shot, surely. Yeah, he's queued that nice. Yeah, good shot. That. He's done as as much as he could there with you know with the, the way that the balls had fell then. Yeah. And a good shot, shot there. Yeah, he just believes that he can be potting any ball, no matter where it is on the table. Both these players are. More than capable of doing that. That's a good frame there for John. He's, he'll be pleased to get his first frame there. This, uh, this cup break here of John's. No doubt that'll set one as well. You know, a few good shots in there. Frame on the board. It's just what you need to set you into a match.
So frame four. Mark Farnsworth, I never look at the Mark Farnsworth break dry on the last one, but I thought he struck him as well as he, he ever has. Head ball for him. There's a cue ball. Just that cue ball was heading towards that top corner till it got pushed to the top cushion. But okay, he's got a ball. He hit them pretty well again. Yeah, he d yeah, yeah he did. I not mean, not as good as the other one, but he hit them well and creating himself a chance. Yeah, a little bit of luck that way the uh, ball's candid candidate into the top cushion, but he'll take it. Yeah, I suppose Red's here. Yeah, cause, uh, you know, there is no opening on the, uh, the yellows. That the yellow needs to slow down, though. Ooh, that's a little bit close to his work. Yeah, that's made it a bit tricky. No doubt he'll navigate himself around that, but I'd say it's definitely made that a lot harder with the angle that he needs to on that to pot it and for his pattern. Well, as you say, he'll be looking it out just to make it, make sure leaves himself the. The right routine. You don't have to move it out. You can uh, leave it in a, such a position where you can just drop it in. Good news is as well for uh, Marcus, the Reds, um, just below the, the middle of the table there. Uh, that's almost like a perfect positional shot for that red by the yellow, so that should help him. Oh, he's on this ball on the cushion now if you like to take yeah. it, but he don't, probably doesn't need to, to be honest. He's, is it that red in the middle? No, he's, he's got choices here. Yeah, it's, I think that's um, it's the perfect place for him to get onto that red. So I could, is he, he going to be taking the uh, the black into the left centre? I mean, I'm not expecting him to do, obviously swing it around, possibly, but don't need to make the cue ball do any extra work than it already has. That's what he's doing. Just make sure we can drop this in to get this two-frame lead back. And there you see it. Breaking clearance, Mark Farnsworth, 3-1 ahead now. He's going to ask a question of John. Like you said, David, better break, but a little bit of a loose white. But then the way that he uh, went about his clearance, uh, it didn't seem too much out of position, etc. Just a, the, the only thing that he probably uh, just over hit was that yellow. When he played the big pocket, just went a bit close to his work. Well, he's got over the line. So, John McAllister. He needs to really keep with Mark here. John McAllister break, training three frames to one. Time running. Connection. Has he got a ball? Is that going to drop? No, it's not. Well, it's dry. He's hit them so well. He has for a cut break. Yep. He, uh, he really has. First glance here, David. <laughs> I mean, I suppose yellows are the obvious ones only yeah. because of that yellow over the pocket, which is blocking maybe one or two reds. I think it has to be yellows, you know, just uh, as you mentioned, all the problems with the reds. This is where Mark Farnsworth looks like he's playing a big pocket again, does he? Well, when I say big pocket, yellow off the red. Yeah, he might do. I mean, it looks like that, yeah, that yellow's got a lovely gap to hit that red. He's 
just onto his problem ball straight away. He needs that to travel. Oh, it's travelled well. So the couple uh, positional shots to play here. You now you've got to get on the the one down the rail to play the plant, and then um, also the uh, you have to go up at some point for the ball, uh, yellow and ball. Yeah, do you feel that that yellow on the cushion? You play that as a plant. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't like it to be honest, because obviously when it hits that yellow, it's going to drift yeah. towards the bottom cushion. So it'll have to be a bit delicate. I think that's exactly that. Yeah, you'd need plenty of angle on it to avoid exactly that. I mean, he'll just be working that out now, just making sure he gets this pattern right. But that clock, it's ticking down. Could even play the one in the corner and screw through the two reds to get onto that, maybe. Oh, he was under a bit of shot clock pressure there. Starting to get a little tricky, tricky now. Yeah, because you you know what's going to happen here, don't you? He's yeah. probably going to pop both of these at the same time. Yeah. And that's what's happened. <coughs> he, he he knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And that's why he's paid put an extra bit of pace in that. Yeah. I could just have done without that flick on the red because he'd have been straight on this yellow and then uh, been able to screw back for the the other yellow down the rail, but. So I think he should be able to get there a bit left hand side. Yeah, well he's gonna be um Oh he's played he's the played positional well. shot superbly. He's gonna be a bit hampered queuing. Yeah. But doesn't have to do a lot with his cue ball, does he? But there's some pressure on this, let me tell you. A lot at stake. Oh, is he gonna drop it? Has dropped. He's put his hand up in apology. He didn't expect that one to drop, and it has. I mean, he played it at that good pace, and yeah. it, it gives the pocket all of the, all of a chance of it dropping. Oh, this black makes no mistake at all. Mark Farnsworth. Again, I said earlier, I find I'm so good at them shots down the rail. You know, just. Did. I mean, he thought he'd missed that yellow, didn't he? And then, yeah. uh, you know, at, at a time we probably thought that as well. But how is he? Has John McAllister been dry break there? But it's another, another great clearance at a crucial time from Mark Farnsworth. If he does it every time, doesn't he? And it, if he doesn't glance that red when he goes up table, it, he's in prime position anyway. So. So Mark Farnsworth then to break. And his next frame. So leading four frames to one. And this, if this break goes right. And he, and he clears he's up 5-1. Do you see anybody coming back against Mark Farnsworth at 5-1 down? The nature of the standard and the nature of the game, uh, very, uh, very much so. I mean, it's it's, it's definitely possible. Was close to that yeah. corner. Oh, <sighs> last ball rolling. Incredible, isn't it, this game? But, I mean, it's landed... Not great, has it? Yes, he's got an easy pot on red. But then, I mean, he has got a chance of getting that red out, but he's probably got one chance at it. Yeah, it's it's, it's not great. And I mean, it might even be a safety shot, but that's not often you see uh, Mark play one of those, so I doubt it. <laughs> no, so he'll just be working this out. I can't see Mark playing a containing shot here. He'll want to be uh, accelerating on. I really do think so. <coughs> Might be wrong. I I, I think the um, the yellow and then clusters of three just um, just stun that and play that out and leave the white welded to the red. He's playing a containing shot. 
Yeah, that's exactly what he's done. Decide to play it soft to make sure that the uh, he is close to them balls. Yeah, I mean, 4 1 ahead, you can't blame him for that, can we? No, you've, you, you know, you're 4 1 up, you don't, you don't want to be letting your opponent back in the match. Just that shot there from Mark has made it very difficult for John to play a, a, a really good safety. Yeah, it's definitely give John a little bit to think about. What, what is he trying to conjure up here? It's going to it. Answers on a postcard for that one. I'm really not <laughs> sure what John's. I mean, I think John's tried to come off the two cushions and pop the one over the pocket. Um, well, it's a brave shot, especially at four-one down. And he's probably just really trying to make things happen. I mean, Mark Farnsworth electing the uh, the yellow balls here, but I suppose the only problem we see is possibly the black hasn't got many options of a pocket. Yeah, I think I think that eight ball goes past the red, but it's very tight. And if it is very tight, then you have to guarantee good position on it. Yeah, it goes, definitely goes left centre, yeah. but um, you know, it's how he gets it, navigate his way down here. I think right corner is definitely the pocket. It looks like it goes. Okay. Well, what size we're going to find out in five shots time, aren't we? I mean, you can't see Mark. Faltering here with these yellow balls. He's playing a lot because the shots with a lot of authority. Just showing how how much of his confidence is rolling on. I think that's the one most impressive thing about Mark is you see that all the time from him. The way he hits the balls with authority and you know, the way he pots balls at pace that you don't see a lot of players do. Than I thought, actually, but he should be fine. Yeah, he, he, he can just drop this in. I mean, obviously, the cue ball is going to come back up table, but that won't be a problem. Just need to control it. Is it the uh, far pocket? I'm sorry, the far jaw of the pocket, which has helped his cause a little bit. So, this black, you think it goes into this bottom right corner, yeah. bottom left on your screen now. Could they even go for the middle as you said before because the angle on it, but I still think it's straight enough to screw back and Oh, well, he's taking his time over it, a bit of careful consideration. I think it's one of them. I think you need to be down on the shot to see it to call this one, I think. He's yeah. played that well. He has played that well. He's got the pace. Absolutely spot on. Mark Farnsworth is on a mission, 5-1 ahead. Another breaking clearance with that last roll of the ball. We didn't think he was going to get a ball, did we? And uh, yeah. it just rolled in. And the rest is history. It is. Sorry, it weren't a breaking clearance. He played a, set, a good safety shot, didn't he? And then we saw that, yeah. that um, well, the, like the great escape from... What John was trying, I'm not sure what he what was going through his mind at the time, but if it had come off, he'd have got the reward. Can you see John maybe switching to the football break? I don't think so, no. I, I, I can't see it. For, for me, it's, it's he's been breaking well, but 
he's not been getting anything. You know, there must be the temptation to potentially switch over. Yeah, he might swap sides, but as he is, look, well. you've you've called it, David. I don't know. Got to try and make something happen, haven't you? Before it's too late. I, mean, I just don't understand why he doesn't keep that break. Yeah. He's got a phenomenal break. Phenomenal. And he's got his reward straight away. He's, he's got a ball off it. That for me was thinking, you know, you've got to change things up if it's not if it's not quite working out. That bit of frustration as well, the way that he's put his cue through then. It might be. Oh, these yellows are absolutely glorious. And John is trying to make something happen here. You've just got to hang in there sometimes when you, your break hasn't been working for you, haven't you? Yeah. But, uh, just hope you get a chance. Just keep calm, be, be ready and, you know, for... If the match changes, you know, you get make sure you're ready to take these chances. Which is something you expect from these top players. Makes me wonder if he, he's going to swing this round the cushions, try and get on the one on the far cushion. Probably a little bit shorter pace. We're going to be a little bit critical, but it looks fine. Yeah, that, I thought you'd do it the other way. Pop, play the other one, then swing round for that, but I don't think it makes any difference. No, every player has their own routines. And John, he's got he's another player, he's got his own routines, and... Uh, this has been a pretty simple finish for him. So this black to get within a three. Stopped a bit of the rot here. And he has done five frames to two. Just got to sit in your chair, John, ain't you? And just wait for your, your chance coming. It's out of his hands a little bit. He's getting some advice there. From his corner, Jeff there. Goes with him all over. In all Q Sport disciplines. Yeah, it's out of his hands now, but he's, you know, he's got to take the chances that come his way and put the pressure on. Make Mark think, uh, put Mark under pressure, and this is the only way you can make these top players make mistakes. Yeah, there's Jeff, look. Oh, he's sat in his corner. Well, I never look at the Farnsworth break. It's been okay so far. Bit of power again. It's got a ball again. And they've split well. Yeah. It's all about the opening pot. That's the hardest part of this clearance, isn't it? Yeah. I think, can he cut back that red or is it too far down? I mean, the overhead looks like it's pretty easy, but I know when we go to the other camera angle, it'll look very difficult. So, Extension. with a cue ball, we'll be travelling. Can he cut this red into the left centre? Again, cue ball could be canning into balls. Anything can happen. I think if it cans into that um, yellow just uh, right of the... Uh, of the eight ball spot then I think uh, it'll, it'll be in perfect position well, that's the one he's going for cutting it back there you go oh, he's with the cue ball though need to hit that thick but I think he's alright is he though is he is he okay does, oh that red does go doesn't it 
Yeah, hit that will go. Yeah, that red does go. I didn't know if you could get past the one that's on the, uh, or the closest one to the bottom cushion. Or the closest one to the cue ball. You can get through to it. It's probably going to be another straightforward finish from Mark Farms with break. surprised at that. I thought it would have uh, just stunned it in and come towards the uh, bit closer to the red rather than go forward and come back over. Yeah, he's going to have to do a bit of work with the cue ball now. He's probably going to have to come twice across. Um, and, and there's not really a lot of gap for the white ball. This I could only think on. it was uh, straighter than we thought. Okay. Oh, he, did. he can get... Is there a gap? Oh, wow. Brilliant positional shot that, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Another one on Mark Farns with strengths. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we talk about a lot of the strengths that Mark's got. And he obviously played it because you've seen the pace that he played. There's no other shot on. Yeah. I mean, if you've placed in the ball, David, with the, with your hand, you'd probably put it about there, wouldn't you? Yeah. You really would. Great shot. And I think all he'll do. Possibly, I don't think he can get close to the black here. I, I don't just know what angle he's got. The white there, yeah. And he'll just believe that, you know, believes in his own ability. And this is looking like 6 2. Mark Farnsworth is stepping up the level. Six frames to two, four frames ahead now. Just when we thought John could have got back into it, he's not got a chance in that frame. Just sat and admired Mark, just clear him up. Way that uh, he's doing that. I mean, that was probably his weakest shot there when he come off there, but it didn't make any difference at all. So John looks very calm there. Mark's just looking on. He, he wants. To, he'll want to get this match as over as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'll be hoping just, he'll just be waiting for his opportunity and uh, hoping he gets at least two chances to. To win the match. Well, John has got to do first things first. He's going to go head break again, isn't he? Yeah, He's got has this, to. the success. I mean, the power he generates here. It's a phenomenal skill. Well, I'm not sure why he's not used this break from the very start, David. I really don't. Because he's absolutely crunching them. And look at the way they've split again. It's yeah. not bad. Obviously, the little bit of the cluster between the, the, the red, the yellow, and the black could change things a little bit. But Somebody of John's calibre, it shouldn't be any problem. I don't know if that red by the um, close to the black goes to the left centre. That might give him a few more options later on in the clearance. Oh, he's a little bit short of pace there. I mean, do you think he was taking that on in the opposite corner? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. So he's going to have to reroute now. Now that. The red that's below the black, does that pass into that left centre? I think it does. I, I think that would open up a couple more options. And I, I suppose then the question's about the black. Does it pass that yellow to the top right? Nobody's missed the red. It's irrelevant now. Mark's back to the table. Another great chance here for Mark. Yeah, and he, he's got yellow balls down there that can get the yellow out. And I think possibly John is feeling a little bit of pressure here. 
It's not like he's had many clear-cut chances, easy chances to get himself going either. Which is the way this game goes sometimes. Yeah, it seems that way. Nice little flick there. Just uh, gets him a little bit closer to this yellow. Nice little shot that there. Uh, Feel here, he's, he's, he's going to run through and leave a bit of an angle on the yellow, so he can just play into the uh, yellow and the black and still have a and still have a shot. And uh, he's got the perfect angle here. I think maybe like this bit straighter because I think it's going to hit the black a little too thick for his liking. But he's still there. He still should have a shot after this. Cannon into it. Has it come out? I think he can make that plant, but it's it's not easy. It can go wrong, can't it? That's a huge gap in between them two. I think that's why the lights have been straight on that other yellow, so he could hit the black on the other side. The thing is, if it's, if, this, if it's not a straight plant, you could lose the cue ball a little here. He's missed it. He has missed it. John is back to the table with a chance that he didn't expect to be getting. It were not easy, that plant. It wasn't, no. I think the, the worry of losing the yellow or the cue ball there. I mean, you got to say, uh, when he did cannon in, he was a little bit unlucky, but them, them times, you know, they can go wrong, can't they? Yeah, well, I think it was a previous uh, shot, though. You know, he needs to be straight on that yellow before he went in to disturb them, because he'd been able to hit the, the black on the right side then, on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. John electing to come downstairs first. Expect him to be. Uh, I mean, he, he needs to take these in the right order, really. Don't want to be leaving that one on the top cushion till the very end, but he might not have a choice. If he doesn't leave himself the right angles, he's leaving that till last. I don't think he can get on it on this shot. What do you think, David? Nothing wrong with that one. Yeah, it's done the cross off the side cushion. And that's perfect. If anything, I would have liked a little bit more of an angle, but I just don't see a problem here. Would you just draw this back, just leave yourself a shot of the black in the middle? I mean, if he's got an angle, then great. You can just stun past in between the yellow and the black. He didn't have too much angle. Selected just to drop this into the middle pocket. This to get within three. But it will be the Mark Farnsworth break next. There, you see it. Six frames to three. So all you can do is just sit and wait, try and take your chances yep. that you were given. I mean, Mark will be a bit disappointing not to get to seven just yet. It's a phenomenal break against John again, but that shot there, that's what caused the area of uh, Mark getting in, but that plant there just didn't drop. Longer we can keep Mark on six and t continue taking frames, and uh, it'll put the pressure on. So Mark Farns with to break. Break. Farns break in six 
French for three. Calm running. Can't say this is probably a big frame. Big, big frame for Mark. I Deeks. think so as well. Oh, he's got a ball, he's got two, he's got three. Balls are giving themselves up. And look at these yellows. I mean, I'm only saying yellows because, I mean, they're the ones that aren't really that close to a cushion. A bit of a cluster of two reds there. First glance, would you say yellow? Yeah, definitely yellows. The only problem I can see is the, the two yellows at the bottom of the table. Uh, yeah, I've got to play the bottom one, then the one above it. But I can't see that posing a problem. Yeah, but there is going to be some pressure mounting soon. Every player feels pressure. I mean, you can take reds, they're not bad. It, it, it's just the fact that you, you're going to have to disturb them, but it has to be yellows just for that pure reason. Oh, yellow as it is. I think it would love to have been on this one in the, uh, the yellow and then put it into the same pocket. I mean the one, the one that's below the bolt line. It, it could cause a problem that if he left that till last. So yeah. taking it now, drifting down. Out of the way. Oh, he's played that well actually. Coming in behind that. Brilliant shot. Leaving it till last as well. The one in the uh, bulk area. I think that's okay with the position he's got on this. Yeah, we're expecting him here to get onto the hill. Clever shot going in behind that, you know, rather than trying to play the one below it and then come back for that one. It's eliminated a lot of problems by just letting the ball drift behind that that ball there. So, key shot. He's some good positional play here. He's overreaching a touch. Needs to be queuing this well. Oh, I tell you, something. that's another one of them shots, David. Yeah. That you, you know, you've already paid Mark a lot of credit for. That wasn't easy, was it? No, it wasn't. No, and he had to make sure it went past the middle as well, and he had to hit it really positive, with um, great positivity and phenomenal. This is a man top of his game. This black then to get within one making the final against the number one player it'll be number one seed against the number two seed so just one more frame for Mark yeah John just got to keep going that's all John can do going to be John to break though I mean that shot there it's incredible brilliant shot never one that just makes this game look so so easy Mark Farns with his he looks a bit more relaxed now he'll just be wanting to get this match over with now just have 10 minutes to himself and get ready for the final etc I'm running. But the John McAllister break, it started working, but it's yeah. been working a little bit too late. Another crunching break from John. The, the oh. cue ball, he's lost it. He got punched towards the uh, the top pocket and kicked in off. It was a bit unlucky, but the cue ball did go in that direction, and there is always a chance that you can get kicks in off. Yeah, and maybe. This is the last shot we've seen of John McAllister in this professional event. You just can't see Mark faltering from here, can we? No. Extension. I mean, I think he's made his mind up what he's going to do here. He's not going to do too too much here. He's going to develop something. I mean. <sighs> 
Gonna develop the black by the looks of it. I gather. Just not be careful, it's not too far of the near the corner, just to tie nothing up. But has it gone close to yellow? Yeah, not uh, it's okay. It's okay. It might have to change um colour set here potentially. Well uh, I think he always had a choice of either colour set anyway. Yeah. Um, just at the way that the balls are positioned, because even yellows are, are fine, aren't they? I mean, yeah, reds, at first glance, worked out okay, but his yellows aren't that bad. He just needs to be a bit careful this next shot here. I think he's going to have to... So, Mark Farnsworth. <laughs> I mean, do, do you see any problems here, David? Yeah, uh, but I, th I think it's important the second to last yellow that he's, he's straight on it or only just off straight. Yeah, this yeah. is all, all about leaving the right angles, isn't I it? I think it's, uh, it's key this shot. I think, um, you know, he needs to be straight on. Um, on this second to last yellow, either to run through and uh, nudge the red or even nudge the, the yellow, but ideally he'd it'd, it'd want to be straight. It was all down to that first shot he had when he had two visits. It's just a bit short, but it could be a good angle this. I mean, he's going to cannon into it, and you'd expect it just to cannon the black a little bit and straighten it up. Uh, can this go wrong, though? Are we going to see a bit more IPA drama? Could even screw off the face of the yellow. And play the yellow into the same pocket. Or is he going to go the other way? Oh, he's, played oh, he's run it through off the face of the yellow. What a shot. Burnt shot. I mean, he's not he's not perfect here again. And this is been a I feel as if I went a bit because I think I went four five one and then he just got over the line and took it out, took a good finish out there at the end when I nearly messed him up there. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, the key to uh, a good to success in this game is having a great break, and your break was really on song in that in that match. Yeah, to be honest, I, I don't as much, you know, but I, if you get a ball, you, you hand mm. on the table, you've got it, you've got a chance, haven't you? So uh, fortunately, I managed to to take some of my chances today and got a got a comfortable win at the end against somebody like John. You know, you've got a you've got to take your chances, you know, because you know he's uh, even if you like four five one up, you know, he's more than capable to turn that round in a, in a crack, you know. So you've got to keep your concentration and hopefully the chances keep coming. Okay, at quarter past ten tonight, you have got a, a date on that on that table with the world champ Liam Dunster, and I know you you post on social media that you you want that number one spot back. Um, obviously, you know if you can win this, that will be another step towards that. Um, what are your thoughts ahead of, of the ahead of the final against Liam? Yeah, I think uh, looking forward to you know Liam's and you know, all the rest of you know, but he's uh, he's probably set the bar uh, the last of that month a little bit, you know, but. I'm not. I'm not ready to go out to grass yet, so we'll see. We'll keep trying. <laughs> right. Well, we'll give performance there from uh, Mark Farnsworth. Pretty much disposed of John McAllister. Um, pretty not played. And he's lifted his level up again. He really is. He, he might start slowly in this competition, if you can call that slowly, eight nil, etc. And uh, he seems to be getting used to. It. You know, he said himself felt a lot more comfortable with the surroundings and where the table was playing. So, you know, he's he's at his very best. Liam, he's at his very best. What he is in store for us later on tonight well no doubt there's going to be some drama there's no doubt about that there's definitely going to be some tension out there they've both got a lot to prove to each other about you know who is the number one player I mean obviously Liam is and he, no doubt he'll possibly still be number one even after this tour and going into next year really for the world championships 
But I tell you something, it's going to be an absolute incredible final. Um, who wins it, if you're going to ask me that? I tell you something, this is 50-50, it's a flick of a coin. I mean, it is the dream final. We did sort of start speculating on this final uh, around the last 16, and, it, and it's come to fruition. I mean, for pool fans out there, we're going to be tuning in at quarter past ten. What a match. I mean, it, the two best players in the world. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about it, wasn't we, on Friday, about what a dream final it would be if the number one seed, number two seed. And it, it, it just shows you, you know, the cream of the crop. They really rise to the occasion when all the, the big money's up for grabs, all the, the big ranking points and all the big titles. And that's exactly what has happened in here. Um, what do you think on current form that Mark Farnsworth is a slight favourite going into the final? Yeah, I think uh, definitely. Uh, Liam's had a very quiet tour, uh, no doubt about that, on the back of the World Championships. But we have seen glimpses of the, the, the Liam Dunster that we, mm. we've seen for two, three years. So he, he is creeping back into his game. He's been in a lot of finals um, throughout his career, Liam Dunster. This is no different to what he's used to. He will be up for this. He will probably produce another great <laughs> spectacular performance like he normally does. Mm. But he's up against Mark Farns with the number two seed. He's won a, a quite a few tours, this, quite a few tour tournaments, etc. This this year, and uh, he looks in scintillating form and. Uh, <sighs> Well, I'm not sure how many more words I can say about Mark. Mm. You, you know, his his form at the moment is is well, you're just admiring it at the moment. And that gap in the rankings, uh, I'm not sure of the the exact numbers, but I think before this final split, it's it's down to about 50 points. It was over 100 points. If Mark can win this, he might close that gap to you know around about 30 points. Yeah, and that makes it more and more interesting for the, the up-and-coming Masters, etc., and uh, how the rankings will end up to be the World Champions. I mean, we're expecting Liam to be the number one team mm. for the next World Champions, and, and he, he would deserve to be, um, especially after winning, being the, the current World Champion. Uh, but anything can happen now, And uh, but Mark Farnsworth, let me tell you, he'll be up for this final, as will Liam Dunster. Yeah, and just looking ahead, just away from the tour, um, we have got the uh, the Masters coming up at McGoldrick's uh, Pool and Snooker Club up in Glasgow, and uh, other players are all uh, looking forward to that one. Yeah, they are. I mean, we, we've not played it for, God, I think it's two years. This will probably be three years by the time we've played it. Uh, it's 2019 we last played it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, just down to, obviously, everything that's going off in the world. Um, but I think everybody's looking forward to um, some of the entries that we've got. And, and, I th and I think some of the entries that we've got, you know, a lot of them are the Scottish contingent, etc. They're all looking forward to it. We're obviously going to be playing in the best conditions. Uh, the sports bar in Glasgow, the Goldricks, is probably one of the best in the Scotland area, etc. And uh, everyone's looking forward to it. Well, arguably one of the best clubs in the UK. Um, yeah. It's won several awards. So, um, yeah, I know all the players are really looking forward to that. And um, then looking a little bit further ahead, to the 2023 tour, yet another year of tours. Let's and get this uh, one out with first, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as you can see, the dates there. So we flip between Newcastle and Coventry, and then back back here at the Isle of Man for the festival, um, middle of November. We've extended the event, and um, I think uh, that's gone down really well with the players because they love coming to the Isle of Man. Yeah, and that was always the, the IPA's dream and the IPA's aim, just about getting a festival in the Isle of Man and making it such a, a great tournament and something that every player strives to be in. And, uh, and finally, the, you know, the dream's come true. And uh, next year, 2023, what a huge year that's going to be for us. And uh, it just shows that we're, we're stepping, stepping, you know, even to higher limits uh, as we normally do. And we're just leading the way. Uh, absolutely. And uh, we know the entries are uh, coming in pretty thick and fast, to be honest, for the, uh, for the Toro uh, and the World Championship. So it promises to be another bumper year after this year where we've had record numbers in the tours. It's been in incredible, the numbers. Yeah, I mean, the support from God, the, all the amateur players. Let's not forget the ladies players as well. I mean, we've had so many entrants uh, throughout the ladies, throughout the amateurs, and that seems to be continuing. I mean, the, the way that the shop's been going, uh, loads of ladies have already entered for next year. And uh, see, it's nice to see a lot of new names coming through. Um, I'm not sure how many we've got in total, but they, it, they are coming through thick and fast. And uh, when you've got a calendar like that, with two, with two of the greatest hotels in the UK, and uh, it just shows that uh, we're leading the way again.
Yeah, and if people um, want to enter the tour or you just enter one a one-off event to uh, to sample what it's like to play in the IPA, what what uh, what do they need to do? Um, get some practice in. <laughs> um, <laughs> practice with uh, as good as players you have got in your area. Come and give it a go. Hey, we're we're more than approachable. We have such a great time here at the IPA. Talk to somebody that's at the IPA or talk to one of the committee. Um, we'll tell you all the ins and outs. There's plenty of stuff on the website that explains everything, you know. And we're a nice, friendly bunch here at the IPA, and uh, that's going to continue for 2023. Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully beyond, because you know we are quite a friendly bunch down here. Um, so um, I see Liam has just made his way into the uh, into the arena, and um, he's a player that um, he plays with a glove, and we've seen one or two players now start to um, adopt, adapt their style to, to playing with a glove. Mark, Mark Boyle as well. Uh, what um, what's the uh, theory behind uh, a, a glove? Yeah, I mean, yeah, quite a few of the Scottish boys they play with a glove. Uh, Morgan McInnes and, like you say, Mark Boyle, Liam Dunster, uh, even Charlie Bedley. He, he played with a glove this year as well. Um, I, th I, th I think it just makes players feel a bit more comfortable. There's nothing against having a glove on it. I mean, I think Liam Dunster started it off a little bit. I mean, he obviously come from the the Morgan McInnes um, way of, <laughs> you know, he, well, he's obviously made it happen in Scotland, uh, but it's not doing them bad, is it? I mean, when you've got Mark Ball and Liam Dunster wearing it, it seems to be doing something right. Um, but yeah. And uh, brake cues, interesting topic. You know, every player's got a different opinion about a brake cue. You know, some have it, some don't. Um, I guess it's just whatever suits the individual player. Yeah, I mean, the brake cue, what come out, well, I mean, whether it's come from the, the nine ball discipline, possibly. Um, I mean, it started, what, three, four years ago. It's hard to really put a, a time on it of when it started. But players have, uh, you know, always had a brake cue. I think it, it, it protects your, your, your normal cue that you used to play with. Uh, it just protects the way that you, you strike the ball, especially with some of these monsters we've got. I mean, we just, we just saw the way that... John McAllister strikes the ball. I mean, he must damage your cue for fun, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you, know, you look at the Ben Davis, the Craig Marsh breaks, etc. They're, they're just huge breakers, so that might be the reason why they need two cues. Yeah, absolutely interesting. Uh, well, we've been having a bit of fun with the uh, with the professional players over the last few tours, and we've been uh, we've been doing a little bit of fun behind the scenes, bit of recording with our uh, with our team and uh, yeah. and Chris Welsh, who uh, who's come on board this year, has been doing some fantastic stuff, and uh, we've been uh, doing a little series called Meet the Pros, and uh, we've got a little uh, little clip of that that's uh, that's going to be coming up your way just in the next few seconds. My like 10 minutes of fame. You're not filming yet, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is the strongest area of your game? Of oh, my game? Probably not playing, to be honest. Uh, strongest area, um, long potted. If your game goes tactical, I think I'm quite strong. Uh, I'd like to think attacking. I'd say probably potting with like a snooker background. Uh, white ball's not as good as most pool players, but potting's sort of my strong point. What is your pet hate? Pet hate, safety. Slow players, I think. Eating a packet of crisps while you're playing, the opponent meaning more. <laughs> Who's the most creative player? John McAllister, I think. I'd like to think Drew Hughes. Andy Crosdale? Probably someone like Mark Boyle or um, Ross Fernie, probably. One of them two. Yeah. I love these on the spot questions. They're tremendous, aren't they? Yeah. Nah, <laughs> delete, delete that. <laughs> delete that. <laughs> <laughs> Worst dress professional. Wow. I was quite impressed with Ben George today, who I played um, where I lost 8 7, unfortunately, but I was quite impressed with the way that he uh, was dressed. His trouser wise, his top was awful. <laughs> What's your party trick? Yeah, I can drink a pint pretty quick. A party trick? Just drink as much as I can normally. Who would you least like to be locked in a room with for 24 hours? Miles Deleuze, the mad dog. <laughs> Good friend of mine, but <laughs> 24 hours, <laughs> too much. Do you have a pre-game ritual? Yes. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very uh, superstitious about which top I wear for which day. It's pretty much a routine and I leave everything last minute. Who do you hate playing? <laughs> Clint, because I always seem to get him in the drawers at the moment. What is an NFT? Eh? <laughs> What's an NFT? <laughs> I don't know, man. Is it a non-fundable 
token. Yeah, I think you're close. Uh, is it Bitcoin type thing? Non. I can't remember. Ah, sporting hero growing up. So many. Paul Hunter. Okay, why? Passed away. He uh, just loved watching him play. Um, I, he was a brilliant player watching. In the billiard world, obviously Jimmy White. Pete Sampras, Brian Robson, sort of people from that, that era. What was your worst ever game? I've just played a pretty bad one, so I'm not one far off. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the biggest party animal? Apart from me. Uh, probably me. Who's the luckiest player? <laughs> probably me. <laughs> <laughs>
do you have any advice for aspiring lady players? Practice, practice, and more practice, and believe in yourself. Jump in at the deep end. You know, have have the confidence to learn from others. Stay off the booze. <laughs> Just learn the basic. Learn to pot first, and then the rest will come. Throw yourself into it. Don't overthink it too much. Like you're going to learn and develop so much by playing in this sort of this sort of event. Just enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, come to the events and just enjoy it. Just embrace it. Yeah, don't play it. It's a rubbish game. <laughs> <laughs>Great fun there, so check out our Facebook page for plenty more videos like that. It's uh, definitely better than the men, really. <laughs> definitely yeah. better. So I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, it's time for the serious business. It's time for the final. It's the two best players in the world. It is Liam Dunster against Mark Farnsworth in a race to eight frames for the title of the grand final professional champion of 2022. Let's get over to the commentary box and Andy Richardson. Thanks, Kevin. Well, this is the final we've all been waiting for. Liam Dunster, Mark Farnsworth. This is going to be a cracker. And it's Liam to open the proceedings. And as he has done throughout this event, cup breaking. Race to eight once again for the title and the £10,000 first prize. And I'm joined in the commentary box now by Mark. Looking forward to this one, Mark. Oh, God, this is the one that we've been... No offence to any of the other players, really. Uh, this is the one we've been looking for since Friday. You know, the number one seed against the number two seed. Wow, we're in for a cracker here. We sh well, surely we are. We we've seen some scintillating action throughout the two days and uh, there's no reason for this one to uh, live up to its name. So, Liam called for his extension. Yeah, I have a, I've just missed uh, who won the lag. I have a Liam won the lag. This is off the Liam Dunster break, is it? It is, that's correct. So... Yeah, so Liam's here now. I mean, you've got to say, this is not a, a bad chance. I mean, can, does that go? Oh, he's played a, a terrific plant, but the cue ball, he's lost it a little bit. What does he got? What does he play next? Does that red go? Terrific plant, though. It was some plant, that. Yeah, lost the cue ball, but I believe this red does go, hampered. So I can see enough of the cue ball to not have to bridge over that yellow. Yeah, and that red did go. It didn't look like it did from what we was looking at. He's now, he seems to be back in a, a little bit of position. He's not prime position, but he's back. I mean, that, that, that looks like a wall of yellows there, isn't it, to, to yes, get back yeah. up to the... And he's still got a red in the bottom half of the table. He's got a biggish gap to go through. Well, Andy... We just heard that in our ears, didn't we? There's been another poll about who is going to win this match. And it's 51% to Mark Farnsworth. I mean, I would have said 50-50 anyway. So, uh, 
one percent of you more there out there think that mark farnsworth is going to win this final and i tell you something there's not going to be a lot in this one is that there really isn't at the moment mark farnsworth has just got to admire liam dunster and he's going about this finish exactly the way that he wants to i mean i think that red passes into the the opposite middle i don't think he's got all the pocket but i think it just passes he needs it to it's not got many other pockets apart from the bottom right I mean, you could have took that one now if you wanted to but it must go just dropping it in not doing anything with the cue ball keeping it as simple as anything really He's just making ultra short of this clearance. Using every second of his 30 seconds. That's what Liam does. Yeah, top part of the pocket. So this black. I mean, when he went out of position after that plan, I thought maybe uh, Mark was going to get to the table. But Liam, he's got other ideas. And that is a brilliant start there from Liam Dunster, the number one seed. And that was truly appreciated from the crowd as well. And that was a good good start to the match. It was a good start. That plan was a difficult plan. Yeah. Some shot. Yeah, we lost the cue ball, but still went into the middle. And from there on, he was in prime position. As he always does, keeps it as simple as possible. First blood. Yeah, no surprise there, really. This is what we expect Liam Dunster to do. And, uh, can Mark Farnsworth return with a clearance of his own you'd feel like he he needs to get his break working as quickly as possible he didn't do too bad in the last match struck him okay yeah hit them well is there a ball there is a ball down just crept into the corner of that middle pocket I mean he's potted a ball but has he got an opening pot yet? I suppose that yellow does clip in there. Yeah, yellow clips to the middle. If he does take yellows, the black and the yellow stuck on effectively what is the the head, but head spot. There's a couple of reds tied up on one rail. Does he get it out of the shot? Yeah, he could go for it here. Yeah. Just on and off the bottom cushion, cannon done, into the black. Missed it by a whisker. Oh, has that gone through there? It's, well, it's okay. <laughs> he's, got, he's got position on a yellow. But he, he's probably going to have to lose a couple more yellows in this top half of the table before he'll have a chance at, you know, dislodging that black and yellow out again. Yeah, he would have loved to have dislodged it there, wouldn't he? Yeah, definitely. He would have made things... Uh, a little bit more clearer about how we go about this finish. But Mark, he'll be uh, looking at a way. He's going to have another opportunity here. So on and off the... Uh, I, I, this is the best way of getting the uh, black and yellow. He's on and off the bottom cushion and hitting the black full ball because then he'll be guaranteed a position. He's played it a bit better. Played it perfect. Couldn't play any better than that. Play it too hard. Just needed a, s a slight contact. Yeah, he did. And he's just got enough there. And he has opened up these yellows very nicely indeed. If anything, a little bit shorter pace. But I think he can... Just pinch a little bit and cannon into the red to hold it for the yellow. Either in the top half of the table or the bottom half of the table. He'll probably have a choice. 
Mark will know exactly what he's doing straight away. He's gone up table. Skidded probably a little bit more off that red. But he did push the red away, so he has cleared the path somewhat. Look after he's just going to come to this right-hand side of the cushion and just make sure he leaves himself a shot. That's exactly what he's done. So clear putting angle, but it's all about the angle he leaves on his black. That red just makes it a little bit awkward on the bottom rail. Yeah, it does. But he's played that pretty well. I mean, if we're too critical, if anything, he's got too much into it. But Mark won't be bothered about that. This should not prove any problem for the number two seed. And it is no problem. It's one apiece. We're playing faultless pool at the moment in the first two frames. Is this what this match is going to be about, Andy Richardson? So and fro. It's a game of serves. Both breaking really, really well. And if these balls stay open after the break, this is going to be another very close match. That was a key shot there, Andy, when it really cannoned well, into the black. Just opened it up. Still had a little bit of work to do, but the, the way he's cued that. Yeah, the last yellow. You know, I, I was talking to David Adenor about it in the commentary. You know, yeah, he's probably one of the best in the world of that little stun shot on and off the cushion. He just plays it so well. Executes it like a dream. And somebody else that executes things like a dream is this cut break. What Liam Dunster does. Seems to work for him and he doesn't get nowhere near as much power as Mark Boyle. But it works for Liam. It really does. He's got a bit of power on it. Has he got a ball? There's nothing threatening in the pocket. And look at the way they've split open. Wow, it's dry. He is dry. And he hit them well. As you say, not as hard as Mark Boyle breaks. But I think it's a deliberate thing. I think he, he times the ball. He, I think he's developed a pace that he thinks gives him the best reward. But in this instance, they split well, but nothing dropped. No, it hasn't. And Mark, he was out of his seat pretty quickly. Assessing the situation. I mean, if anything's a problem, is that yellow in the top half of the table? But does it go to the top left? I mean, he's leaving himself an angle now to go down table, possibly. So we're going to find out if it does. I, th I think it does, Andy. Can't see a problem. No, I think it has to go. <laughs> and that tells you it. It does go. Again, probably hasn't got all the pocket, but... Mark won't care about that. So he's just going to stun back up. Okay. He needs to hold. <laughs> I thought he got a bit too much into that. And uh, I think Mark did at one point. But it slowed up in time. He's on this one into the centre pocket. And really, it should be dot to dot here. I don't see any problems. I don't think Mark's going to create any problems either. He's going to keep this as simple as he can. He needs to draw this back probably about six inches. He's done a little bit less than that, but yeah, there's no reason to, to draw it too far back. So, it's black. 
We have the third frame in a row. Cleared off one a visit. And at the moment, the 51% of you that voted in the poll for Mark Farnsworth to win this match are looking right at the moment. So, dry. Elected to take the yellows. We weren't sure if this went at the time. But no problem for Mark. And clinical. Clinical finish. Yeah, and Mark is playing faultless pool at the moment. And it's going to be him to break next. We've seen one dry break already. And we're going to see another. Or are we just going to see Mark mop them up again? Seems very relaxed out there. Both players as well. When I was in the studio, I was looking over at both of them. They weren't giving <laughs> anything away. Good connection again. There's nothing down though, Andy. Yeah, a little bit messy that, isn't it? The balls didn't split too well there. I thought he struck him well enough. He got, he did. Uh, he got a good plenty bit of movement, time. but that little cluster of balls in front of him. Yeah, I don't think he's left these as easy as what he left at left Markham in the previous frame. Has he has he got an opening ball? Opening ball one to pot? I don't know. It's hard to tell tell from any angles here. I think the red goes into the middle. Oh God! It's, uh, that's that's super tough. That's quite a big shot as well. Huge shot. It means if he missed it, might be probably coming back to a very open table. But what does he do? Ten seconds left. Can he see the yellow? Oh, he's playing the red. I think he's going for the red that we were looking at. Or is he just playing the safe to sit behind? Yeah, containing shot. So, didn't want the reds, didn't fancy taking the risk. And what a clever shot that is. It's a clever shot. So, he's, he's actually giving Mark no opportunity of resting behind any cluster of balls. And he's opened up all the problem balls in one shot, Liam Dunster has. Mark, Mark Farnsworth is under pressure here now. I'm not sure where he can hide the cue ball. And now Mark Farnsworth, he's using extension. So both players have used extension early on. Where do you hide this one, Andy? I'm not sure. It's tricky. He's, he's he hit a rail, obviously. He's got a bit of a plan. Looks like he's trying to come back to the other pocket. Needs to keep running. Doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad at all. I think he's plucked the one to the right centre, the bottom centre on your screen now. And, you and also he's took the one, the option of the, the cut back into the into the opposite centre. So I mean, he has got a red. I've just seen it, just right of the black spot. If he wants to take that into the bottom right, but how difficult is that? So taking much, this off the yellow. Yeah, I think he is. He has taken it off the yellow, but there is still problems. I think it's straight. I mean, does that red that's in that cluster of the two yellows? I think it passes into the top, well, top right hand corner on your screen now. Maybe there is no problems now. But we're going to be hearing them beeps throughout this clearance, no doubt. Important times here for Liam Dunster. Electing to clear this end of the table. Key ball here, Mark. Looks like it's the red nearest the black, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I don't know. 
Oh, I'm still not sure now if it goes into that top pocket. Oh, we're definitely going to find out either in the next shot or the next few shots, whichever one it is. He's having a look at it now. I think it goes because he, he's, he's quickly got down and back back up again. Where's this cue ball gone again? Just drifted. I'm not sure about that Just one. Dropped a little low there. Yeah, it's a loose shot there from Liam. He, he didn't really need to do too much with that. Just like he, uh, he's, he's taking a little bit of pace out of it, deaccelerated maybe, and never got the stun on it who wanted. So now he's going to have a decision to make, and he has to make it quick. The clock is ticking down. He's gone for the pot. He's got the pot as well. Great shot. Delicate. Very delicate indeed. And cannoned. Well, if this red was a problem, he's cannoned it out. He's not perfect again. He was asking a lot there of the yeah, cue ball. Was that, wasn't it? I mean, it's, it's amazing how old this game can be at times. The things that are in the way. I mean, even if he, <laughs> he does find a pocket with this red, I mean, there's so many yellows that are in the way of everything. He's trying to cut this back. This is mighty thin. White ball's going to be travelling. He has cut it back. Great shot. What a pot that was. But, but. He's not on this black. What can he do with this one, Andy? I mean, we've not <laughs> we've not really predicted any of his shots really. in the last few. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, I think first things first, just make contact. Just get the black ball moving, he's, he's, but he's, he's trying to Yeah, he's got to go and swing something. he gives himself a chance of the middle. But he's not made contact with the black. One, one free shot, one visit. Here for Mark Farnsworth, he can all of a sudden, what was looking like it was going to be level at two frames each, he's going to be extending his lead by two frames. Some poor positional shots there from Liam. Yeah, he was forced to kick at the uh, the eight there. He had to try and make it in the middle. Just making contact was no good to him. Yeah, what you find with this game, Andy, and you'll know, you know, by the very best, is that when 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 a shot gets away from you, you're forever chasing the finish, aren't you? It's so hard to get back into position at this uh, small table game. All these yellows after this one are all in the top half of the table. It's looking like a dream start, is this for Mark? <coughs> yeah, we're opening up a two frame lead. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but. When Mark does get in front, he's such a great leader of the game. He really is. So on and off the bottom cushion. And now this simple black into the left centre for a 3-1 lead. But it will be Liam Dunster to break next. And there you see it. Bit of a scrappy frame. A little, little bit of one, but... Well, Farns will definitely be happier out the two players at the moment. He's very relaxed there in his corner. I mean, that was a good break, but never got any reward. No, he hit one well, didn't he? 
We've seen quite a bit of that today, haven't we, people? The breaking well, hitting the ball well. Getting the splits. Putting a lovely little delicate shot there, but again, the positional play just didn't come good for him. And that was a great cut, wasn't it? Oh, God. Great cut. Didn't look possible. Oh, him Dunster had a dry break last time. He was desperate for a ball to go in here. I don't think he can afford a dry break on this one. So the cut break once again from Liam Dunster. Desperate for a ball, Liam is. No doubt all the Liam fans watching at home. He's got a bit more power on that. But has he got a ball? He has the last of all in one. I mean, but the, the fell a little bit awkward, maybe. I mean, they're a little bit untidy. They're going to need a little bit of effort. It's not a straightforward clearance. But Liam... He, you know, because he does his cut break so often, he, he's used to clearances like this. He'll be uh, just studying this table and just working out exactly what is the best colour set and what the best thing is to do. I mean, he's going to have a choice of either colour set here, but which one do you think, Andy? Well, is a yellow and a red close to the cushion? I suppose the red is just to the side of the uh, middle pocket. Yeah, he's taking reds. This is all about the ball that's on the side rail, close to the yellow. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he can get it out with this shot. Um, I don't think he's got quite the angle he wanted, but look, as the one that you mentioned, Andy, that one over the pocket near the middle po the middle bag, that's the one he could possibly open this frame. I don't think he can get it out with this shot. It's all about this one here. It just it just makes you you know the, the gap <laughs> from the cushion to that yellow. How much is it a gap to? Just push that yellow away from that red and open it up. Don't think there's a lot. He's got to read this quite perfect, to be honest. Not too much pace, just that's the yes. one. Just nudges it out. Yeah, brilliant shot. You can hear the applause there in the crowd. Very well appreciated. Last ball is looking at being the ball near the middle pocket, I would think. I said very early on about this clearance. These are the clearances that don't look on at the start, but it just makes them look so easy. They really don't. They really do, sorry. He's just working it out. Now he can uh, navigate himself up here. It's probably, if anything, overdone that. He's going to be overreaching here. I mean, he, he's got a natural angle to come off two cushions. But yeah, I think he, he wanted that angle, didn't he? Yeah. He knows is. that by playing two cushions, he's playing out into space. He's on a good line. He's quite a slender and athletic guy, so you don't expect this to be a problem, but this is stretching him to the max. That, ten sh that second shot clock beep's gone off again. Plays at a great pace. Where's that cue ball? Where's oh, hand of apology up there? And <laughs> I was saying he played at a good pace. And he just kept travelling. You'd be pleased to see that. And uh, 
And they've reduced it to only one frame ahead. This black to make it 3 2. And then you see it 3 2 it is to Liam Dunster. Sorry, to Mark Farnsworth. I'm getting excited now. But, but it will be Mark Farnsworth to break next. So 3 2. Not a lot in this so far, and uh, I think it's a fair scoreline on reflection. Yeah, I would agree with you again. That was the shot, wasn't it? Oh, he just played it delicately, yeah. And I like this shot, he left the two rail. Two rail position. Just held up, thought he was going to snook himself for a minute. He did that little flick, and you, you need them little flicks from time to time. You, it's so hard to get perfect position every shot. I mean, there'd be a few questions uh, that need to be asked if uh, you did get every shot in prime position every time. So, Mark Farnsworth it was dry on the last break, was it? He, he struck him quite, he's striking him quite well, so surely he's going to get a ball this time. You know, you know, he's dry. He is dry, and he must be thinking, what else can I do to pot here? And Liam Dunster, he's getting a chance he's been waiting for. Was two frames up behind, and now he can level this match up if he can just go about his work and clear these up. I mean, which colour set would you go for here, Andy? What are you thinking? You're looking at yellows? Yeah, and the only reason for that is because of the yellow over this bottom right hand pocket that on your screen at the moment. But the yellow towards in the top left hand corner, that, I think that needs some work on it. Either canning it out, I'm not sure it goes past that red into that corner pocket. I don't know. I don't think so. Looking at that camera angle there, it's a tough one to say. Yeah, as it is. What a clever, sure, shot, a clever shot. Clever shot, as you say. Clever, clever shot from Liam Dunster. Coming out with shots like that, and he just, there's no surprise. He's been the number one player, and uh, it could be for two years. I mean, yeah, the gap is closing, but wow. He comes up with some shot making shots at times. He really does. He's just made this finish just so, so simple. Just one clever shot, just opens it all up. Just show he's thinking very, very clearly indeed. You know, even though he was 3 1 down, back against the wall, just never gets flustered. off the two angles again he seems to be playing them two angles uh, well them two cushion shots very very well choosing them to perfection Pretty perfect here. We just play the yellow on the cushion on and off. Just leave himself an angle for the yellow. Come off one cushion, possibly through the two reds. I think it's okay. I mean, he's probably overdone it a touch, but. I mean, either way, he could possibly draw this back if he is yeah, too straight. If, too, yeah, if he's too straight, he could screw back to the rail, back out again. 
I mean, the, the natural angle was just uh, on and off the right cushion through the two reds, etc. But I don't think it'd be any problem. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, still got that an natural angle again. This is slow down a touch. Probably went on a little bit further than he wanted. But if anything, this is the, the correct angle he needed. So, I gather he's just going to draw this back. I mean, if it's a cue ball anywhere where he is now, I think he'd be more and more happy with it. It's a little bit short of pace on that one. It looked a bit tentative. Hampered queuing now. This black isn't easy. Yeah, could have done with another foot there, couldn't he? Cue ball's going to be uh, travelling as well. Shouldn't be a problem, but is there, is there anything off in his mind as well? Or I think he's going to have to stun this in. I don't think he can play this plain ball. So I think possibly the white could be going close to the corner pocket. So Elevated the cue, makes his shot more difficult. He has played it plain ball, and he's played it perf to perfection. Another great clearance there from Liam Dunster. You know, I was... Uh, Obviously looking for problems for him, and uh, it didn't even look like he was in any bother. Three frames each, Andy. This match is shaping up into being a classic. That was a clever shot, wasn't it? The first shot he played there opened up the problem pocket. Decided early on that he'd be leaving the yellow at the bottom of the table as his last ball. Stunned out. And there, he just didn't quite come back as far as he wanted to. Left himself a more difficult black. <coughs> but it was the heart of the pocket. And he's about level. He's done all he could. 3-1 down in this match he was. 3-3. Three, three. He'll be feeling a bit better. And it's his break. He needs a ball. Can he continue this momentum? Two frames in a row. on 15 seconds now <laughs> I don't think he was, he's not prepared to break until he hears the beeps no he isn't he didn't, looks like he takes every shot he's never he just manages the time the shot clock just so well okay I mean look at the I mean that's a cup break look how many balls are in the top half of the table yeah I mean I know we're quite critical he doesn't put as much power in it like Mark Boyle does but there's some power in that, isn't there? Yeah, I, I, I believe that he doesn't put as much power in, partly because he, he feels that he hits them hard enough. Yeah. He, he knows what he's doing with them. Yeah, you might be right there. First glance here, rather, Andy. I mean, the reds aren't reds. bad, are they? No, they're great, aren't they? Red. Red to middle. And Mark Farnsworth has been sat in his seat a long time. If Liam does go on to clear these up, and <laughs> you can't see any problem. Yeah, those dry breaks are killing him. Certainly are. We haven't seen a momentum change. Farnsworth won two frames on the bounce, and if Liam clears these up, that means he's won three frames on the bounce. Uh, the momentum change is happening. So he's playing this into the middle. The red that he's next to, obviously, in the corner. And what he's trying now, he wants to try and get on to the middle of these three reds, I would think. The shot after next. Yeah, I think that's the most sensible approach. Uh, yeah, the one on the here, top cushion there that you see on your screen now, it, it, it'll just, just roll one of them two balls that's near the bolt line in one of the corners and just leave himself the, the right angle on that. I think you've called the shot, Andy. He's leaving himself. I mean, he, he might have a choice of that one on the uh, cushion now. Got a choice of balls anyway. It's not a bad option to have a choice of two. Makes you wonder if he's going to play the one near the cushion. 
come on and off the cushion and leave himself the long one into the bottom right hand corner. I think he'd like to be straight on this middle ball, but yeah, he's playing the one near the cushion. Drifted a little bit more than he wanted. I think he's okay with his cue. His cue, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I don't think he's too much. Oh, that looks really tight there for a bit of a. Could be a bit of hampered cue in that one. This makes this pot a little bit more tricky. Oh, this is not easy. Not with that beeping down, it's not. He's just made it like it's hanging over the pocket. Brilliant shot from Liam Dunster. Yes, the crowd showing their appreciation there. Big shot, that. <laughs> Huge shot. shot. Huge shot. But that's three frames on the bounce now for Liam Dunster. 4-3 ahead. Halfway to the winning point. Mark Farns ref, how is he going to reply to this? How does he get going? Get, he needs to get his break going for one. It needs to happen in this next one. You feel this is an important time for him now. You certainly do. But to be fair, his break has been good, hasn't it? He's hit them well. He just hasn't had any results. No, he hasn't. Well, we are going to be finding out. He marks just, he's just got to hang in there, I think. And he knows he's striking them well. There's no reason why he should change anything. So, surely this time. needs a ball down more than ever it's not great it doesn't look looking good well and he's dry again but look at the state of this table how well did he hit those balls <laughs> he hit them very well again but the table's very untidy very very untidy indeed what do you do here Andy well, you've got two yellows and a red on the side cushion. They're all blocking each other. So if you fancied yellows, you've got problems. If you fancy red, you've got problems. Yeah, I think if you're going to take yellows, you probably play the red onto the yellow plant now. Um, but that means he is all all or nothing now. So it is very attacking. And, you know, is, is this the time to push the boat out? That will be going through Liam's mind now. I mean, he has got an easier pot on a yellow into the bottom corner, etc. But I think he takes this on. Yeah, the plant's the shot. Oh, he's tried to get them out. Where's the cue ball, though? I never saw that one coming, Andy. No, you've got to count that. Uh, a little bit of bad luck there. Just trying to bump one of those bad balls out, if not both of them. Uh, absolutely. I mean... Mark is then back to the table a little bit sooner than he thought he would have been. I mean, I didn't see that in off there. That was an incredible roll of bad luck. This is an important time for Mark. He needs to stop the rot here. Remember, Liam's took the, the last three frame, frames. If he's struggling with the break, he's got to take these games out. Got to take every chance. Nice developing shot, that. I mean, he's got a choice of both colour sets here. They've all got pockets, haven't they? They really have. Yellows, you? Yeah, I think so. Mm. 
just the pattern play here. It's which ball does he use to get to the black? Which last yellow does he use? Yeah, I mean, do, do you think he's going to leave one in the top half of the table to possibly play on? I mean, he's, he's, he's surely made up his mind already. I mean, he's not on anything in the bottom. I don't think that the yellow passes. The one that's just above the yellow over the pocket in the bottom right -hand corner. I don't think that passes that one. I mean, I might be wrong. But I, I think he leaves one in the top half of the table to get on the black. Well, well that yellow must pass then. I mean, if the yellow passes, then he, he can take the one in the top half of the table and take that next. But he's got options. It does pass. You feel like he's probably going to have a bit of a distance between the cue ball and the black ball. It could possibly happen. He needs to get close to this yellow. He really does. Screwing out to just pass centre. It's overcooked this a bit. Slightly overcooked it. There's the shots he's normally spot on with. I mean, but he, I mean, the cue ball, he's had to do a few extra uh, miles along the table, has it? And uh, now he's going to be doing a few more. This cue ball's going to be travelling. Cutting it into the middle. He has cut it into the middle, but he's cut it in perfectly. And look at his cue ball now. What a fantastic shot there. Yeah, he took the more difficult pot because he knew that running those rails as he did gave him a be better position on the black. Everybody thought that Mark Farnsworth was dead and buried after Liam Dunst has taken the, the previous three f frames. Is uh, Well, it's four frames each. Best of seven, Andy. Just uh, it's 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 a it's a very good standard. With lots at, at stake in that. Best of seven for the title. There, he just tried to bump one of those awkward balls out, if not both of them. Very unfortunate to go in the middle, especially at that angle. Yeah. I mean, that little flick of the yellow is, is bizarre. But that pot there from Mark Fonz with the position as well, phenomenal. I mean, we are seeing the reasons why these are number one and two here on the professional ranks. William just checking the pack. The customary cup break. Yeah, it just never changes his mind about this. Just keeps it going. Is that wrong in that? It does work for him though, it really does. Ball. Keeps getting a ball off the break. Oh, where the cue ball's gone though, has he got an easy opener? Oh, has he, can he cut that yellow back into the left centre? The red onto the yellow plant looks very, very difficult. Oh, I'm not sure. If he can cut the yellow into the middle, he can run into those two balls, can he? Big shot, though. It is a big shot. Huge. Be a huge moment in this match if the, he can pull this off. Yeah, if the cue ball was uh, anywhere else, not on that bottom rail, further up the table, you feel that he'd have an easy start. So, does it go into the middle? If so, he'd be breaking these two bad balls out. And he has done. Oh, that's a bonus. I say a bonus. Oh, it, it's felt horrible. He the again. red in. But where the cue ball has landed...
Is that going to go? Is it going to drop? Oh, it's not going to drop. Played the cross double. Yeah, just hit the uh, the jaw quite heavily, and it just never dropped. So Mark, given his chance, and these two reds are close together. That's an incredible miss there from Mark Farnsworth. I didn't see that one coming. I really didn't see that one coming at all. Yeah, remember this is still an open table. Because yeah, he potted one of each and never potted after, it stays as an open table, doesn't it? Anybody confused out there? Like we are, probably. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, now this looks pr pretty easy. Just got to be a bit careful of the position of play on the black. You wonder if you leave this one low and play the plant. I know it makes the plant a little bit more difficult. You know, instead of leaving it straight, and he has elected to leave it straight, so he feels like he can just drop it in. I mean, that you can see that yellow is going to be hitting that cushion. He's, he needs to be a bit careful with this. If he gets too much pace on this, so with this yellow ball too far on the left hand side, it will miss. Nudge the yellow in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He felt like he can just pinch enough of that pocket, and he he had to hit the left hand side out just so he could hold this yellow. It was so important to do that. So looks like he's got a little bit of a gap to just where he's placing his cue to pop the black into the top right hand corner. I mean, is this where the the nerves start to tell? I mean, you expect him to be okay with this, just needs to stun this out. Yeah, that's fine. Played it very positively. Been a scrappy frame, this one. Yeah, been some uncharacteristic miss from both players, really. And, um, but <laughs> we've been mentioning it all weekend, Andy. There's a lot at stake here. Clock was ticking down again, but easily puts the black into the top right hand pocket. And it's been, well, as you said, a very scrappy frame. But uh, Liam Dunster, he, he should have probably cleared them up at the, the first opportunity he had. Yeah, it was a good break, wasn't it? But the cue ball staying up top of the table. Tried a bit of a double there, didn't drop. And he just missed, didn't it? And then this miss there from Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, very surprising miss from Mark, that. Yeah, because he is probably one of the best single ball potters in the world. He really is. Well, you know, even the best of the best, they do miss balls. Now you see that close-up of that black ball going into the top right corner. That black is dividing these two players at the moment. Five frames to fall. Let's have a look back at this Mark Farnsworth break. He needs a ball. Desperate for one. Put a bit more into that one. That red's got tracking towards the middle pocket and he's potted one. He put a little bit more effort into that. Finally, a ball down on the break. And 
I mean, first glance, yellows don't look too bad here. Them two yellows that are together, they're passing to the middle. I suppose the first shot, if he is a, a tad straight on that one on the cushion, it's just about how he gets onto his next ball. If he took reds, I mean, does that red that he's closest to pass into the top left hand corner? But the two reds that are in between them two yellows are horrible, so for me, it's probably yellows. Trying to get the cue ball out. I, I mean, he has, but is he looking at? Is he think he has a plant? I don't think it is. I think he was trying to come out for the ball near the middle, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was. Just never. He's got looking at it. He keeps looking. I mean, why has he played for the plant? His body language, it, for me, I think he tried to play for the ball in the middle. But well, what's he playing here? Playing the plant. Executed superbly. Well, is he going to have to play another plant? Plant after plant, I think. I don't think he's got any other choice here, has he? Can you see anything? Yeah, another plant. Just try and run onto the red. Played that well. Played it well. Yeah, he's on this one into the middle now, which we th we thought he'd, you know, after his first shot. But then again, look where where, where it's positioned. Maybe he wasn't trying to get on today. He was leaving himself the plant. So yeah, who are we to question what falls with anyway, Andy? I don't think he's it. That I just thought he'd try to drop it in to leave himself. Obviously, the one into the top left hand corner is he? Is he on it now? I'd, I'm not sure. I mean, if he's not on the one in top left hand corner, all he's got is this thin clip on the cushion. I think that's all he's got. That clock though ticking down. Well, if he does take this, he's coming back. He's going to hit the red. So he would, he would think, yep, yeah, he'd be on the ball in the middle. So that works for him. Yeah, well, he's, I think he's on the ball in the top off the table as well. I mean, it looks tight for both balls. It's got to be careful here. Yeah, so we, th we think he can hit the one in the top half of the table. And he is going for that one. That's the one he's got to do. Big shot, is this? He's got to cue this so cleanly. Ah, it's not his best. But it's another chance. Huge moments now. It's yellow into the bottom left hand corner. He's, I think he's missed this. It's gone. Oh. I thought he'd missed that. For all the money in the world, I thought he'd missed that. Wow. He's got away with one there. Right. I thought he'd missed that one, and I'm sure well, a good percentage of players did then. Good I think percentage. Mark thought he'd missed that. Yeah. I think he's relieved there. I mean, he, he took it you know, a bit casually, I suppose, didn't he? He just thought it was a, a natural one for him to pot and hit the near knuckle and uh, somehow dropped in. Well, <laughs> it's 5-5. Five, five. Best of five as well. 5-5. Five, five. That shot was a bit peculiar, the one that he tried to stun off. Yeah, I think early in that frame he was trying to play on the ball in the middle. Oh. I think he knew the plant was there. Um, and I think he just was forced to use it once he'd not got good position. But that final ball to get onto the black. Some shot that. Considering the pressure they're both under. So still nothing in it. Liam Dunstep will be breaking in the 11th frame. I'm sure we're not going to see Liam Dunstep change the thing. We're going to see that cut break. It's been okay for him in this final. I mean, he'd probably uh, take it, wouldn't you? You would. So, effectively, best of five for the title and £10,000. Yeah, simple as that. 
Are we going to see a last frame decider? A few more frames left yet to see that. But the way that these boys have been playing, the level they've been playing at, I wouldn't be surprised. Power in that one. Yeah, he hit those harder, didn't it's he, Mark? Got, oh, that red's going to drop. It has dropped. He struck those balls harder than he has been doing. Yeah, he has. I mean, obviously, he potted a red and that yellow near that black, well, that means pff, you've got to take reds, do you? I mean, but that red, that's in between them two yellows. That's going to need some developing. But again, it shouldn't be a problem. He's got balls around that area to do that. Yeah, he's got a couple near the middle, hasn't he? Couple of nasty yellows there. there one is. just below the middle, just off the cushion. The one that you said behind the black. Well, he's going to have to uh, think about of when he's going to do that. I mean, I mean, he was under a bit of shot clock pressure there. I don't think he's used his extension yet. Um, he's obviously. Decide. I mean, Liam normally uses the extension to shot after the break, etc. Now he's using it. I think quite wisely, though, when you look at a, a sort of a, a scrappy table like that, you want to hold that uh, extension, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, it's so important now he gets the right angles and he feels that this is... Is this the opportunity that he's going to do it? The only problem is when he does cannon into them balls... That that yellow is going to go, go close to that black, and what what can happen then? Is it will be out of his hands. So he's taking this ball into the corner, stuns across. I feel like he's got to take the one on the bottom cushion next. Yeah, and if you I look, don't be leaving that there too no, long. Take that now. Leave a red into the middle, and he can have an angle there just to run on, and move the bad red. Can he hold it though? That's the question. I mean, he does look high on it, doesn't he? This is the final of a major, major tour final. I mean, huge shot, huge shot. Well, I think it, oh, yeah, it's, he has yeah, held it. it. Yeah, he has. He's done really well there. But has he got an angle? Can he get this red out? <laughs> Can he get it out with either of them reds? What's he looking at here? I mean, does that red go? Is that what he's looking at? Does it go into the bottom corner, the uh, top left hand That's corner? That's what he was looking at. Well, who's he going to try and get it out? He's not trying to get it out, he's trying to come on off top cushion. It's a great effort. What has, what's on now? I think it definitely goes, I'm sure it does, into the bottom left hand corner. But has he got an angle to get to the top half of the table? Are we going to see a bit of a twist? Can he stun into the yellow that's next to the red? If he can, that's exactly what he needs to be doing. He's, he's hit the yellow. I think he's on the red. But he is going away from the black. And how much... <laughs> Is he going to be going away from it? And how much of them yellows are in the way? I mean, the further he goes away from it, the less the angle becomes for the pot in the black. He needs to be very careful with his shot. And that clock ticking down again. He's got to make a decision very, very quickly. He's fine. He's fine. Played it so controlled. Obviously didn't have as much angle on as we thought. Now this black to take the lead again. And he has a 6-5 break and clearance. Yeah, that was a quality, quality finish, wasn't it? Considering the circumstances. Yeah. Balls of steel, probably. <laughs> I think that's the best way of explaining it. Seem to be just producing the goods at the right times, these top boys, and they're continuing to do so. I mean, just when we thought he was possibly going wrong, he, 
That was a good shot there, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, he tried this shot here. Look, I mean, he's got some excellent action off the top cushion there. Nice little cannon, that. And controlled stun shot. Made it very, very easy. 6-5. Well, it made it look easy. It certainly did. There's just so much pressure now on every shot. Because we are getting very, very close to see who is going to be picking up that trophy. And that v first prize of £10,000. Big break from Mark Farnsworth needed. Crunching. Where's the cue ball? Where's that red going to go in? Where's that red come from? It's like somebody's chucked that on the table. It just flung across and gone into the middle. Wow, well, we're talking about red balls. He's not going to have a chance of being on reds anyway. But would you want to be? Not in this situation. Yeah, that, that was, was a right result, wasn't it? That last ball going in. I'm not sure. Where did he get the pace from? I don't know. It flew in, didn't it? It flew in, and look at these yellows. I mean, we thought that he lost the cue ball. He got kicked around in the jaw and got away with that one. And uh, just when we thought he was dry, this red ball coming from, I don't know, it must felt like coming from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> No. Again, it's history. Mark is just going about his work. These boys are oh, producing the high quality. <laughs> oh, the bestest of times. Keep doing it all the time, don't they? So his last ball here. Oh, you would think is the ball. Let's let that cue ball get a little bit away from him. I think he's got a slight angle here. He's okay, I think, here. You feel like he's got to get on the one just below this yellow next. And then the one over the middle pocket that will give him the natural angle to get on the ball in the bottom half of the table. Well, he's decided to run through to take it into the middle. I don't think he's perfect on this. He'd like to be straight on this, but he can, it's still not enough the cushion. So we're not seeing a problem at the moment. But he's going to have to elevate the cue a little bit. So it does improve the, the difficulty of this shot. Or increase the difficulty. He's missed it. Oh, I thought he was going to hit the near knuckle. Of course, he's not missed it. He's near enough went in the heart of the pocket. It was tracking towards that near knuckle. Oh, he's fine. Just brings the ball back. There's got to be pressure out there now. There has to be. But they just don't seem to be showing it at the moment. And now this black into the left centre to level this match up once again. I mean, it has been a while since Mark Farnsworth led in this match. So is that going to happen? I mean, the way that he struck that ball in it <laughs> with authority. It's six all. Guess what? We're into a best of three. Best of three. They don't even look flustered, these two. They really don't. It's a good break. But look at this red. Look, it kicks in there. Yeah, it just caught the side jaw just as it drops in there. I mean, it just seemed to gather pace and slammed itself into the middle pack. Unbelievable scene. Six frames each. Best of three. They're piling on the pressure on each other, aren't they? They really are. But he seems in good spirits there, Mark does. Been a fantastic final, this has Andy. It has. They don't deserve to be a loser so far. Who is going to be winning this? Has the poll? Fifty-one percent of you got it right. I'm sure you you're all doubting yourselves at the moment because oh God, Liam Dunster to break again. Six frames each. Surely there's some tense nerves out there. They must be feeling it in the crowd. We're feeling it here in the commentary box. Could this go all the way again? Could we get to seven apiece? Hill Hill. That would be three matches on the bounce I've commentated on. Eight, seven. I don't know if my nerves can take it. Well, I wouldn't be shouting that out in the commentary box. I think yeah, we uh, sacked at an instant, but again... Liam's got a ball, he wants that, oh my, this is horrible, 
the black over the pocket when it's blocking reds and yellows. <sighs> what can he produce here? Well, I think he'd be taking reds. I, I know what I'd be that. doing. I'd take reds and Get I'd the be red out. double the red back, bank the red back to the same pocket. Oh, this is the three very difficult, well, more than difficult, three dead yellows there. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. And if this red goes, these reds are wide open. And it is a dish fest out there if he does get this. I think this double's on, this reverse double. Yeah. It's a natural angle with the cue ball. Needs to be a bit careful. It I'd might fancy this. Might track towards the corner a little bit, but just needs to be a bit careful with it. Well, I think Liam, he'll just make sure. Keeps the cue ball on the table. That's the important thing. It's tracking close. Yeah, it's, it's in. It's oh, not in. It's hung. But he'll well. be he'll be happy with that, would he? I mean, Mark's got an opening shot at a yellow. It's going to be tracking towards them cluster of balls, but that black is hanging over that pocket. Does he dare? Does he dare do it? You won't be in it very hard, would you? in a world of pain here isn't he I think so but you know what if anybody can clear from here it would be Mark Farnsworth I mean we, we can't see a clearance yet can we we really can't big shot though this one he's got to get this cannon spot on I'm not sure that was spot on but what else does he do now them three yellows are probably even harder. Does he tack on a double on a yellow? But even so, it's not going to benefit him if he gets it. Is he going to try and cover the black up here? Delicate shot. Delicate indeed. Are we looking at a re-rack here? That's possible, but possibly not. I mean, the only time you get re really racks in black ball is, is when there's a, ye a red and a yellow over there. So, Liam, he won't be too flustered just yet. Very interesting frame now. And one that could pos possibly take a little bit of time. Unless Liam is very attacking with his first shot. I mean, I don't think he's going to beat. I think he just needs to develop a couple of balls, etc. But that just then gives Mark an opportunity to, to do something else. He's gone for the pot. So, what does Mark Farnsworth do now? I mean, it's a difficult situation for Mark. I don't think he's going to do anything attacking. I mean, does he just leave Liam to his own devices and try and get the black out? I think that's a, a bit of a risky way of doing it. But I don't think Mark's got any chance of winning the frame from this visit. Interesting times. I mean, both players, they'll, they'll not be too too fussed the way this is going so is it will relax them a little bit more you know because then the tension it's definitely re must have right been rising a little bit just tried to cover the red there i mean mark he can't dictate anything at the moment can he no he can't is it is how Liam's thinking now? I mean, he's a great tactician, Liam Dunster is. I mean, I mean, if that cue ball doesn't go past that cushion into the black, then is it a re rack? I mean, does Liam just clear these up and and go for that possibility to re rack? I'm not. I'm really not sure. see 
in play a skill shot though I think that's the only opportunity Liam's got I really do he's got to go for the skill shot so the attacking last red and goes cannon into the uh, the two yellows and hopefully one of them pots pots the actual black these are huge moments though aren't they I mean I like the way that he's playing he's going to play this plan so that means he he'll probably have this red ball off the cushion a little bit which might make it a little bit easier but He's going to be reaching a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, he needs to uh, just drop this red onto this other red. If that's his intention. Clock is ticking down. Yeah. Just dropping just it onto drop it. it. On. Oh, wow. Can he stun this across? I mean, even if he hits that yellow, you, sometimes you can't see that black dropping in. Is there a chance of it missing, is there? I don't know. It's not forced to knock the black in, but you would think he'd move the yellows from the front face of the black. Any contact. That's all he's going to hope for. That's... Oh. <sighs> well. Oh. He's put in the red, but he can't see the black. Re-rack it is. Well, Mark will be absolutely over the moon with that outcome. Yeah, I think it. I think it. Yeah, he will be definitely uh, over the moon from that. So, and I think after that frame, I think both players have just nipped out and. Uh, Wow, incredible. Um, we don't see too many of them frames, Andy, on the tour. and uh, I, I can't remember the last one, to be honest. I really can't. It doesn't happen that often, a re-rack. Um, especially not on the TV table. Uh, I can't remember the last time it's happened. Um, but, yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> I mean, both players will probably be happy with the outcome there. Um, so, yeah. So re rack it is. And uh well just why. <laughs> so just why the two players have nipped out. I'll quickly go through the, what the ladies is it going through at the moment. They're into the quarter final stages. That's now gonna be played tomorrow. So Kerry Griffiths gonna be playing Harriet Haynes. Vicky Loma, it's good to see her back playing. She's going to be playing Daniel Randall. Rachel Tucker, she's going to be playing Lindsay Clark, who's the, the local lady here from the Isle of Man. And then Amy Beauchamp against Ted Birchall, two world champions, two former world champions, should I say. So there are some very interesting matchups there from the ladies. That's going to be starting tomorrow. And that will be coming to a conclusion tomorrow as well. Like I said, in the studio with Kevin earlier, the amateur final that's going to be contested between Dean Richardson and Liam Roberts that's going to be our first live stream match at one o'clock tomorrow so make sure you tune in for that the amateur finals are definitely one to watch and uh, two players there they'll be pleased to get, get to the final and they're going to be a, a chance of showcasing their skills here on this TV table where everyone will be able to watch them Oh, the crowd is getting in here. I mean, they all know what's going off. Six frames apiece, Andy. And uh, what can you make out from this? Well, that last frame, a strange one, as you say. Very rare you see that. Certainly on a TV table. I don't think I've ever seen it. No, we haven't. You don't normally get it at the Blackboard rules. I mean, Liam, you know, to be fair to him here, you know, he did go all, all out for it, and that, that was probably the uh, the right thing to do. When he played the plant there, I think the red, it, it sort of sat really into the pocket, didn't it? If it had been a bit further out, he could have done a little bit more with the cue ball, I feel. Yeah, he does. Yeah. 
So just why the couple of players are having a little bit of a debate. Don't forget the open has started. I think we're down to the last one two eight at the moment. A lot of one two eights being played. Um, obviously not these two players at the table at the moment. So well six frames each, yeah. Because it's a re rack, I'm pretty sure it's a, a nine ball re rack as well. So they now lag. Um, to see who breaks off. Normally, in this situation, you don't want to be breaking. I mean, look at this lag here. Oh, there's, there's not a lot in that. I think it's Liam Dunster's, though. It's yellow. I, I think it's yellow. I think it is. It is yellow. I think it is, anyway. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure. So, you'll see him rack them up normally, and then you'll it, it will remove... The balls to get the nine ball re rack. Again, not one way that you've seen. These. I think this was, I can't remember how long ago this was brought in. But yeah, I have seen this. I think it was in a, I don't know, a Masters event or Champions Cup. Event. I can't remember. I think it might have been Champions Cup. Uh, probably the last time I've seen it. It was a couple of years ago. Darren Maidman, very. Uh, Great referee, bit of experience, you know, lots of experience and that, he'll know exactly what to do. So yeah, he'll take away the balls. And there is your nine ball rear rack. Black part of the black ball rules. I, think, I can't remember when it was brought out, but that's how it's uh, played. And this re rack, to be honest, Andy, in this situation, you don't want to be raking. No. You don't normally pot a ball. So, very interesting times. And very, I mean, why would we have this in the grand final <laughs> and come into the latter stages of it as well? Incredible scenes. I've seen it, I think. You, d you don't normally get pot a ball from it. But look where he's put the cue ball. How has he landed there? Oh. <laughs> There's some pressure on this clearance now, isn't there? What does Liam Dunster do here? <laughs> I think he's does he tap the yellow that's near the black spot? I feel you've got to, you've got to t you've got to be aggressive, haven't you? You have to be. There's no not enough balls on the on the table not to be aggressive. I mean, they're, they're definitely the uh, the yellows are the better colour set of the two. I mean, I'm not sure which pocket the black goes into. I think it possibly goes into the top left on your screen at the moment. Can't be a hundred percent. But first things first, Liam Dunstan, you've got a pot of ball. This is a huge moment in the outcome of this match. Huge, huge moment. There's some pressure on that. That was a tough, tough <sighs> pot. It was to where really, it you know, Mark left the cue ball. You've got to say possibly a little bit of the rub of the green. But Mark now these yellows. You'd expect him to be clearing these up, but where does I think the black possibly goes top right as well. I mean we saw a bit of a camera angle there. But these players, they've got to roll themselves together here. He's got that one. He's not perfect here. Well, I didn't want to hit that. I think he's hit that on the thick side. Probably wanted to hit that a little bit thinner. I tell you, I think the nerves are starting. There's some tension out there. And the crowd, you know, after this, the way that this frame's turning out with the re-rack, the nine-ball re-rack. And he's opened up those two reds, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly that. This is a huge, huge moment now. We've already had one. This is the second one of this frame. And there's only nine balls to be potted. <laughs> oh, the heart of the pocket. Fantastic shot there from Mark Farnsworth. They just keep pulling out the shots here, Andy, don't they? He really was in trouble there, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was. 
Uh, just got to hold himself together. He's going to play this. Did he play this for a trace of one inside? Uh, he's just played it on and off the cushion. Believes in it. Obviously, uh, believes in his potting ability. And we've seen plenty of that in this match from both players. Incredible standard. Incredible. So, this yellow. I think it goes top right, this black. That camera angle there tells me it does. So, did he play this off two cushions? Or did he just play it off the one? Can he hold it enough? That's the question. Can he hold? It's going to drop. Is he on the black? Is he on the black? He definitely goes in the bottom right corner. But has he got... A, can he see enough of the black? His body language suggests he has... Yeah, the buddy's got awkward cue in here. Very awkward. Another big shot in this frame. It's there. Oh. It's there. Wow. Two huge shots in that clearance. There really was. Seven six now to Mark Farnsworth. You know, with a break off, you, f you feel like he's a, a tad fortunate, but when there's only uh, eight balls on the table, it, it can easily happen, I suppose. So, but it's Mark Farnsworth. And that was a miss there from Liam Dunster that created this chance from Mark. But look where he left this one. That's in pretty much the heart of the pocket. But that weren't the end of it, was it, Andy? No, it wasn't. Played that at a good pace, just dropped in, and then that black. Wow. Saw a bit of emotion there. And Mark, he's, he's changing his break a bit here. This wow. is surprising. Is he trying to cut break here? Well, this, must be, is a, must be. this is a huge surprise. 7 6 up. Him to break. Electing the cut break. Cue ball's on the move. Has he got a ball? He hasn't got a ball. He's dry. Liam Dunster's back to the table. That has surprised me. I don't get it. I mean, he's been well. I can't say he didn't hit no, it well, but no, it surprised but me as well. Because he has been hitting the cue ball so sweetly, really. You know, off the, the head ball, he elected to change it. Well, any of you will know why he's elected to change that break. But first glance at these, look a little bit untidy. I mean, if he takes reds, I mean, obviously he's got an easy opener on reds, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that red, that's left to the black spot. Just, you know, knuckled him then, cluster of three yellows, that's a, a problem ball. I mean, the one above the middle pocket, you, did, you know, you did, that's another one you need to get right behind just to drop it in. Gone straight into his problem area straight away, but what's his position like? It's a problem. Yeah, he didn't want to be there, did he? No. I feel like now he's going to have to play a containing shot, but where does he hide the white? The, 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 the pool gods aren't with Liam Dunster at the moment. What does he do next? He's used his extension. He's going to have to make a decision quite quickly. Is he going for the cut? I think he's got to. He has gone for the cut, and what a delicate cut that was. That black was on the move, but look where the red ball's gone. This is not getting any easier for Liam Dunster. Does he just cover the pocket in the top left-hand corner? I mean, at these rules, you don't do stuff like that. But Liam Dunster, this is the moment that he's... He, he always thinks clearly on he He always seems to select the correct shot. And there was a few bits going against him at the moment. I think he's covering the pocket. I do. Or is he playing off the rail onto the yellow? I think he did. He tried. He did try, and he didn't get anywhere near off the bit, off the yellow there. But it's not a bad outcome. But what can Mark Farnsworth do? Can he develop anything? Can he put um, him Dunster in any sort of trouble? The yellows are horrible. If 
you want to be creative, and this is not the time to be creative. No, I, I suppose don't. you could uh, back double, the long back double. <laughs> yeah, Fly this up. is not the time for it. No, I don't think so. I think we'll lose that shot for another day. Yeah. I mean, it, is, it, is there a containing shot in that top half of the table? Yeah, he wants to be behind oh, the black. I'll tell you it? something. Yeah. I'll tell you something. What a shot that is. These players are really producing a very high quality. You know, even when the... It's not all about the potting, is it? It's about putting your opponent under pressure. And Mark Farnsworth is doing exactly that. And now he's keeping Liam Dunster's chair warm. He's sat in his chair. <laughs> Must be a total snooker. No, it's not. He's got that out. He's played that well. Very well, indeed. Great shot, but can Mark get a yellow towards that corner pocket and hide the cue ball? I mean, if he can, you don't see any other winner here. Does that yellow glance past that red and that yellow? Can he rest that cue ball? He's got the pocket. I don't think he's uh, hidden the cue ball exactly how he wanted. So, or has he? I mean, the overhead shot doesn't... Total snooker, total snooker cord. Yeah, from the overhead it looked like he could get through. Yeah, but that's referee Darren Maidman. It's called total snooker. So Liam is in all sorts of trouble now. It's a repeat of the last game. That cluster of balls in that corner. Yeah, it is. I think this is a must hit for Liam Dunster. Great oh. hit. Where's the cue ball? Oh. Very close to that black. I mean, that's twice that black's tracked over towards that corner. Both times by Liam Dunster. So it's not a clear route for Mark Farnsworth yet. But you can you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to be trying to put Liam Dunster in a heap load of trouble. And he's doing exactly that again. I mean, it's not a total snooker this time, but what does Liam do here? I mean, he's going to have to clear his red out. Remember, after contact, he's he's got to hit a cushion, so he's going to have to hit some a little bit of power. Unless you can hit this very, very thin and make a, a ball hit a cushion. It's tricky. He'll be opening the yellows, that's a problem. As he opened the yellows. As he opened the yellows up. Does that yellow trick pass that red? I don't think it does. I think he's played a good shot. But you can bet now. Mark's just going to open up this corner. But the only problem doing that, it might leave... Liam a chance of uh, just tying it up again. Or can or can he pot this cleanly? I don't think so. Yeah, just developing it. Let him lean dumps to doing the thinking. Some tense moments as we creep towards midnight. What a fantastic day's action. What a fantastic final's this been. Both players, though, they've used their extension now, so they're going to get 30 seconds to think about it, which could be the last frame of this final. So he's going to play ball onto ball. He wants to take the pocket here if he can. And he's, I think he's done that just enough. That's fine. <coughs> What's Mark going to do here? I think he's going to be trying to hide the cue ball, possibly behind that red. I mean, doing that, it could be a little bit dangerous if he does. I mean, or does he go all out attack? Does he go out? Well, he could do, couldn't he? This is a decision he's got to make now. I mean, you'd like this to swing round, leave that yellow ball over the pocket as a little bit of insurance. You feel this could be the closing moments now of this match. Doesn't deserve to be a loser of this match. It's been absolutely fascinating. So 
So he's landed nicely on the yellow, close to the top rail. And it's all about the three balls in a cluster. This is the key shot coming up. A little bit short a pace, a little bit short. Now, does that? I mean, the, obviously the yellow goes into the right centre, but it's going to be cannon into balls. Where are they going to go? I don't think he can play a yellow onto yellow plant. I don't think that's a shot. That was a little bit tentative there from Mark. Yeah, just the tension, it's pressure. Great pop, but where's this yellow ball going? It's gone wrong. I think it's gone wrong. I mean, he's, he's still in control of this frame with that yellow ball up there, but we all know these black ball rules. Anything can happen with a skill shot. And that, yeah, that red ball that's over that, well, near the middle part of the table, that could really help Liam Dunster out. Are we going to see a hill hill? Outcome now. Shot got pressure. He's played the double. He's missed the double. Liam Dunster's back to the table. What opportunity has he got? For me, he takes the three balls down the bottom end of the table. Drift up for the one in the middle and try and cannon it out. But he's got to hold himself together here. Especially the way that things have gone against him as well. well that clock, I'm sure we're going to hear it ticking down every shot, whichever player is playing. If this does go hill hill, Liam Dunster will be breaking in a deciding frame. Amazing what the dramas that we get here at the IPA. Incredible what this game produces. Great shot, needs an angle now. I think he's okay, he's perfect to be honest. But is there going to be a little bit more tension in the arm at the, the current state of where we are in this frame? What's at stake? Oh, everybody at home. Here in the Isle of Man, must be on the edge of the seats. I know what I am, I'm sliding up and down my seat. Tense moments. Especially with that clock beeping. Just added more pressure, he's gone for the pocket now. What Great shot. shot. Great shot from Liam Dunster. Has he been rewarded though? Does that red pass that yellow? Oh, oh we're going to see it. a little bit more drama. Because even if Mark Farnsworth does get back to the table, I'm not sure that yellow passes the black. But is he going to get a chance to even look at that? Does he? I mean, if it doesn't go, he's got to clip it into the centre. He's gone for the corner, and he's absolutely nailed it. Brilliant shot from Leon Dunster. And surely now we are on for a hill, hill final. I'm not sure I can take much more of this, Andy Richardson. What about you? Well, it's there. What a final this has been. He looked dead and buried. <laughs> Seven apiece. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Single frame to determine the winner. Are we going to see any more twists? We haven't seen too many in this final, but they seem to be happening now. And now, that, you know, that's, I mean, this frame here, I mean, that shot there went out of position. And then we saw some real great containing shots from Mark. This is the opportunity we thought that, that shot was the there. shot there, yeah. He just saw possibly the winning line. I mean, he produced a great shot there, but didn't get any reward. And then Liam Dunn said this shot here, great shot, brilliant shot. Got it absolutely spot on. These two players. 
We're down to a best of one. I think if this final had another 10 or 11 frames, people would be gripped to the seats. But we're down to one one frame. Darren Maidman. Is he going to be setting these up for one final time? Trying to make it sure it's imperative to get every ball touching. Sometimes impossible with all this new equipment that we always have. Now you've heard it. Final frame. The cut break from Liam Dunster. How's this one going to turn out this time round? All you want is a f just a chance in a final frame. You do. You can hear a pin drop in there. Good connection. He's got a ball. First glance, Andy. Is he on a red? Is he on a red? That's what he's looking at. Does it pass to middle? Oh, it looks tight. I mean, it, there is a yellow into the top left-hand corner, but yellows definitely aren't the colour set. Yes, the reds, they're there. Cool. He's calling the extension. Oh, there's so much at stake here. Seven frames each. Even I'm huffing and puffing. Desperately needs a red. What does he do here? He just knows one mistake and it could be over. But one good pot, and he could be winning it. It must go, Andy. Is he playing a plan? Or does it go? Oh, it did go. It did go. Big, big shot. to do here yeah he has I mean he's obviously got to roll this through and he will have a, a shot at the ball in the top right hand corner but yeah there is still work to do Andy I can only imagine the pressure that he must be under brilliant shot he's got a perfect angle now does he try and do just get onto that ball in the uh, top cushion would that be the right shot? He's, he's going to be working it all out now. Or does he just stun it out? Keep it as simple as possible. We know Liam, he does keep things very simple. And uh, he normally executes it every time. That clock ticking down again. Is Mark Farnsworth going to get a shot in this final frame? That shot there suggests possibly not. But he's just nudged that yellow closer to the black makes this black a little bit more tricky are we going to see a little bit more drama or is he is, is Liam going to pull out a huge shot and possibly try and cannon into the yellow I don't, I don't know I mean wow yeah just got on and off the cushion That black, I'm sure, only goes in the top left-hand pocket, top right one, the, what the camera angle you're looking at, at the moment. I think if he just gets the, uh, the the white ball in the middle of the table, a little bit more, you know, the outside middle, below the bolt line, I think he'll have a chance at that black. I don't 
think it's going to be an easy black deal. No. Not an easy black to win a major, major final. Some pressure on this one. As you can see where he's putting his cue there. That's where he wants it. I mean, does he need to play this twice across? I mean, that makes it a bit more risky. I think he tries and holds it, Andy. What do you think? I think he tries to hold it. I think he leaves a fine cut. He won't risk going too far over. Oh! And I cannot believe that he's missed the ball. Wow! I cannot believe he's missed that ball. That's got to be down just to nerves. It has to be. There's nothing else to explain that. This seven frames each. We're seeing a twist. Well, we've had it all. <sighs> we really all have. Match. I mean, Extension cool. Mark needs to compose himself here. There's no way he thought he was coming back to the table there. No, this is a, an unexpected opportunity. He's getting here. But is he's going to go all out attack? I mean, I don't think see how he can. Does he just leave Liam with something else to think about? Just get this cue ball. Yeah, he's tried to cut out the up and down. Clever, clever shot from Mark Farnsworth. I think Liam's in all sorts of trouble here. I don't know. Is there a one, two, three cushion escape? He may have to jack up. Side, bottom, side and up. <sighs> Would you want this with one friend? <laughs> oh, we've seen it all. The to that one. Both players use their extension now. I think it's imperative he hits this. If not, it could be the end of the Very match. Close. It's close. Very close indeed. Oh, Great effort from Liam Dunster. We have seen it all in this final. Surely now, Mark Farms can see this match out. I'm not sure how he is going to be seeing this match out. What an epic final we've seen here. Superb. clears that red ball off you feel the only you know, the only chance of Liam Dunstan coming back to the table them two yards together they're either going to need developing or landing on somehow Mark's got to hold himself together he knows this is a terrific opportunity to see out this match Developing the two balls now, I think. He has developed them and developed them pretty good. He'll be quite happy with that. I mean, he'd love to be on it straight here like we all would, but hold himself together now. Yeah, he just fell onto the rail, didn't he? Which just makes it that little bit more awkward. It does. We've seen all the twists and turns already. Are we going to see one more? Doesn't really want to be straight. I think he's got a good angle, oh, yeah. or has he? I think he. he, he I think he rolls there. it through on and off this side cushion to get himself an angle. What is he? What's he doing here? Can he stun up? He, can, out, he, he can stun up. He's punched it out. Great shot. And now, surely no mistake here from the number two player, Mark Farnsworth. What a brilliant final this has been, Andy. Gripping. He must be feeling good now. So, it's this last yellow, straightforward black for the title and £10,000. There's the yellow.
And there it is. Mark Farnsworth clinched the title. Absolutely superb performance. What a match. Hill, Hill. He looks drained. You can see the emotion. I mean a great deal to him, I'm sure. 10-9. I'm sure he thought at one point there he was out of it. And look at that trophy. So Kevin Barton getting ready to make a presentation. And I'll hand you over to Kevin Barton, who's about to present the trophy and the cheque. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Andy, and welcome down to the studio for the presentation ceremony for the 2022 Professional Grand Prix, Professional Grand Final Trophy. What a final we have witnessed between two of the greatest players this sport has been blessed with. So first of all, a round of applause for both players for an absolutely incredible <laughs> final. It really was an IPA classic. So first of all, let's introduce our runner-up, Liam Dunster. Liam, it's going to be tough after that final, but uh, tell us your thoughts. Just, just got, <coughs> just got it. I missed that easy ball. To be honest, I just took my off the pot. Uh, just totally focused on position. Um, yeah, missed it. What can you say? But a great final against a great rival uh, in Mark. You two have got uh, you know every time you play each other, it's just a, a fantastic match. Yeah, it's it's close almost every time. Yeah, uh, just just one of the matches. Um, just a coin toss and end. And literally millimetres from uh, from taking the title. Mm. Well, Liam, thanks a lot. You played your part in a, an amazing match, an amazing tournament. Just thanks thanks very much. Well played. Liam Dunster. <laughs> but our winner, the 2022 IPA Grand Final champion, Mark Farnsworth. <laughs> Mark, you've won a lot of titles in your career. Tell us uh, what it feels like to be the Grand Final champion after that final. I, I don't know how I managed to win. I think um, Liam was probably the better player throughout. I've carried a little bit of luck here and there. Obviously, the, the pockets have helped us out a couple of times as well. I've, there's been some really, really good stuff as well, but I think um, I've, I've been probably fortunate at the end. You know, I've, I've missed a really great chance at 7-6. I didn't want to come too far up, and I've totally quit on it. And I shouldn't have even took that ball, to be fair, after the, the event. But um, I didn't expect, you, you never expect Liam to miss a finish like that, you know, he's, he's so he's so composed under pressure and he's, he's, he's methodical and all the rest, he, he never normally makes any mistakes and obviously when I hung in the jaws, uh, I looked round the tail, I've had, I've had to play a snooker but um, just pleased to get a chance, I wasn't expecting that he's out of there but absolutely delighted. And uh, as you were mopping up the balls at the end there, how were you feeling with the nerves, uh, yeah, nerves jangling a little bit? It's one of them, it's like, yeah, like you say, you've been in that position a million times but like you, you obviously you win a title and then you want to win the next one, you know, so it's... Uh, they're all important, but then, like when you when you've been through the mill a little bit, it's it's a pleasure to play Liam, especially in the final. You know, he's he's he, like I said in the interview before, he's probably set the bar uh, above everybody else the last couple of years. You know, so to play him in a final and to get the better of him, you know, it's, it, it it does mean a lot. Uh, and it's a great rival rivalry that's you know developed over the years between you and Liam, and you just continually bring the best out of each other. Yeah, I think because I, um, I probably had it, well not you, there's, there's a lot of good players, but I think five or six years, um, probably I, was, I think I was topped by a bit of a distance really, then Liam came on the scene and I probably went off the boil a little bit, you know, but uh, he's, he's, he's been so consistent for the last probably two or three years, well probably longer, but he's, pr he's pretty much dominated the game last two or three years, so you, you can't, you, you can't knock him. Uh, finally, great to uh, win the title in front of a great audience and thousands of viewers watching at home. Yeah, my me, uh, me old man's been in for heart surgery this week, so he's, he's, he's fighting fit again, so that's one, that one's for him anyway. Well, that's great to hear. Well, Mark Farnsworth, it gives us great pleasure to announce you as a 2022 IPA Grand Final Champion. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Matt Pickliff, we definitely need a lie down after that. Uh, just sum up what we've just witnessed tonight. Well, we've, we've seen two of the best players in the world currently and uh, I'm sure these two players will probably be swapping the one and two spot throughout of next season, which is going to be an incredible season to be watching. And uh, what a great final, one of the greatest finals I've ever witnessed. And uh, both players have played a terrific part in that. Yeah, it really was an IPA classic. It just literally had everything. It had the nine ball re-rack. Um, I mean... It, it, what, what can we say about it? It was just absolutely incredible viewing. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw a nine-beat ball re rack. I think I had to mention it, it was in the Champions Cup, uh, but we've never seen one in the final, that's for sure. Um, and uh, it had incredible drama at the end, and uh, it just shows how much it means to both of these players. You know, Liam's absolutely gutted there. He'll be back soon, he really will, but you know, credit to Mark, and he just held himself together. And uh, like you already said, it was... A, well, millimetres away from picking up the title himself. Yeah, certainly as on the edge of our seats. Oh, we hope you've enjoyed uh, the action here that we've brought you over the last two days. We need to go for a lie down, but uh, we get to do it all again tomorrow. So join us again from one o'clock tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>